fire is an emblem of the spirit is one of the emblems of revival is one of the emblems that show that the spirit is in a place fire does not only refine fire is for judgment there are times you need to stay like a priest upon the watch my brother and my sister if you pray from your heart some things will shift you will wake up in the morning and know i shifted this through prayer there are attacks that only prayer can challenge pray for me pray for me is wonderful but you must become the priest of your destiny can someone just blast in tongues for just one or two minutes Salabakata. Senakanda skama hasabash. Rakata pakato sopokoto sheketelekata. Emprata seneketo shanikata. Sasete shana haskabaratos. Reketeketekete skabarakatos. Unto him that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Lord, I'm in a season of my life. I cannot afford to be lazy. I'm in a season of my life. I cannot allow my prayer life go down. It's too risky. Not for this season. Not for this season. This is the wrongest time to be prayerless. This is the wrongest time to be prayerless. Oh, take away slumber from my eyes. Take away slumber, oh God. Skabaratos kama. There are scores to settle in the realm of the spirit. There are things to shift in the realm of the spirit. There are things to align in the realm of the spirit. I need to legislate spiritual realities. While men slept, while men slept, the enemy came and saw tears. Pray. Pray. Outside, pray. Through the king who sits upon the white home. Through the king who sits upon the white home. Shela bakata rekotosia ni marama ni marama ni marama to the king who sits on the throne ni marama. To the king who sits on the throne. Eshela balala. Ele, 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 ele. Ela barata katosh, brada katela katosh. Ekata brakatos kala kata brasana kata. Haruse sene katosh ala toske mahasa. Woe to them who are at ease in Zion. Woe to them who are at ease in Zion. To the king who sits upon the white horse. By the spirit that raised Christ from the dead, we crush the works of darkness now. Pay attention, I'm praying for you. I decree and declare that if this is as a result of territorial covenants, activities of ancestry that authorize darkness to launch attacks over lives, over churches, 
over ministries over individuals mysterious diseases that you had no part in i pray by the god of heaven tonight let there be liberty for you let there be liberty for you let there be liberty for you i challenge suicidal spirits over this territory of zaria the spirits that cause young people to kill themselves and waste their lives in the name that is above all names we command that spirit is banished from this territory the spirit of discouragement the spirit of exhaustion in the name of jesus we declare be gone now and forever many of us believe life is intellectual so we think that the moment you are educated as as, as far as we know education to be the enlightenment secular enlightenment we believe we are ready for living other people think life is just biological so the older you grow you think your growth is qualifying you for living are we together other people think life is sociological so the more you know people you believe you have what it takes to live but i'm telling you this life is spiritual find out how many people's destinies have gone in shambles because of their not having this spiritual intelligence that life is spiritual everything brothers and sisters about life is spiritual you go back to the book of the beginnings genesis and everything is spiritual everything spiritual in the beginning the bible says god created now that is that is i tell you we can dwell weeks just talking about genesis 1 verse 1 in the beginning what beginning god created the heavens and the earth so where was he because he created the heavens he created the earth meaning he was not in any of those places where was he the bible calls him dwelling in a place of unapproachable light governs the affairs of men from that standpoint god created not invented the earth was not invented the heavens were not invented they were created created with the intelligence of a superior being so it's foolish to walk upon the earth wondering if there is a synergy to the happenings of things life is spiritual the earth upon which you walk is spiritual you as an entity is spiritual unfortunately only witches and wizards know this are we together now only the people who destroy the destinies of men in villages know this the average believer is generally aware of the spirituality of life but has not come into an understanding that one of the keys to spiritual intelligence is to come to terms with the fact that life and everything about it is spiritual life and what everything about it no matter how trivial no matter how scientific spiritual hallelujah spiritual when you understand the spirituality of life then all of a sudden you will start seeing a line connecting dots as to the happenings of people's lives listen a man does not just get up and become poor like that a family does not just get up and not make progress just like that a man does not just beat his wife just like that a wife does not just beat her husband just like that the the source of that strength requires investigation are we together now a small child does not become so audacious that he looks at his father and says i can kill you no 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 no. The, the source of that audacity has to be investigated 
life is spiritual. A church does not just grow. Members don't just carry their Bibles from different points and start saying, let's go to the same place without knowing themselves. There's no wire connecting them. You don't just open a shop and everybody from everywhere decides that they want to come to you. No, sir. No, sir. Life is spiritual. You see men moving all around and you do not know what moves them. Spirituality of life. Someone decides to help you, but you show up and something about your life you are not aware of makes the person to drive you away. Someone promises to marry you, even goes to see your parents, and all of a sudden, introduction has been done, he just comes up and says, I had a strange dream I can't understand. That's not the first time of having a dream. But because of that dream, you lose out on an opportunity. Brothers and sisters, if you understand that life is spiritual, you already, without even understanding the nitty gritties, you are already ahead of many people in life. I will never treat my life from a scientific perspective. No. I will never treat ministry from a scientific perspective. In the realm of the spirit, one plus one is not two. You have to define what one is. You have to define what two is. You have to define what other factors are in the equation. We run our lives scientifically. We run our lives intellectually, sociologically, and we become victims. The book of Job is full of mysteries that open up the reality of the spirituality of life. When you look at the book of Psalms, David opened us to the spirituality of life. When you read Psalm 91, he starts by saying, He that dwells in the secret place. Question, where is that location today? Because David said, a man can dwell there. Have you found it? Where is it? Like an address. David is giving us an address where people can find safety. And he never said a police station. He that dwells somewhere, there is a place a man can stand that you become immune. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High. Then the second shocking thing is shall abide not under the light, under the shadow. What is that? Abide under a shadow? That means your shadow has a spiritual implication. This thing you look at. Li listen, listen, listen. I'm not talking of all this moving around you and let you fall down. That's, I'm talking of something deeper. You know physics just tells us when light is casted on an object, it creates a shadow. That's as far as you know. But the Bible says men can dwell under a man's shadow. <laughs> Do you love Jesus? We love the Bible, right? So, I mean, you are not, the way you are looking at me is as if I'm teaching heresy. It's, it's right in the Bible. Shall abide under. He gives the shadow of God a three-dimensional explanation. You can come under it. Then he says, I will say of the Lord, he is this and that and that and that. Please give it to us, Psalm 91. Let's look at it. Yes, that's the song. Your influence is all over me. Verse 2. And I will say of the Lord, he is my what? Refuge and my fortress, my God. In him I will not trust. So let's see why verse 1 and 2 is there. Verse 3. It says, surely he shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. Look at all these descriptions. They are descriptions of strange things. You don't see them with your optical eyes, but their effects are as physical as anything. Verse 4. He shall cover thee with what? Stop. Hold on. Describe a man for me with a three-dimensional shadow and has feathers somewhere in his body. Which part of him has feathers? Because he was not just speaking a parable. He says, he shall cover thee with his feathers. <laughs> then and under his wings shall thou trust his truth shall be thy shield that means in the realm of the spirit truth is not an information truth is a physical reality it's a shield you can hold it like i'm holding a tie 
truth is, is, is an object relatable. Are you getting something now? You will be so blessed if you pay attention to what I'm telling you. Five. This is not even this. I just want us to look at it. Just play around it. It says because of all these provisions, this is the only condition where thou shalt not be afraid because there is something called terror by night. Everybody say terror by night. No matter how peaceful an environment is, the Bible says once it is night, there is a mystery of darkness and terror. Listen, the Bible says we wrestle not against against flesh and blood but against principalities powers listen then it says rulers of darkness they don't they cannot rule in light the moment he's not talking of spiritual darkness the moment there is physical darkness is a sign they are authorized to come out like animals that can only come out in the night so the bible calls it terror by night yet it's night time people like that's why people die in the night. They that drink, drink in the night. When you see a man drinking by seven in the morning, he's, he's a stupid man. Already something is wrong with his life, but that's a, an acute complication. No. Many things happen to people in the night. The destinies of men are exchanged by night. There are men that sit down and discuss. They play the destinies of men like a chess. Terror by night. Not just... Um, terrorism as we know are you aware that there is such provision spiritual intelligence number one life spiritual mm. thou shalt not be afraid of the arrows that fly by day have you ever seen them have you ever seen an arrow living somewhere but he said there are arrows that fly by day only God knows how many people it hits today because it flies every day. You get up and leave your house and something happens. Please pay attention to what I'm telling you. Life is spiritual. Job chapter 1, a meeting was being held in the heavenlies. Satan now comes and a conversation is engaged. Have you considered my servant Job? While they are discussing that Job is on earth, minding his business. And all of a sudden, things begin to nose dive in Job's life. It's amazing how many people try to ignore the spirituality of life and expect to rise in life. It's impossible. It's impossible. And more so, this is Africa. You know, we just pretend as... I'm not talking of witchcraft. The portals of Africa are open to spirituality. It doesn't matter through which force. I'm just saying the portals of Africa as a continent is richly open. Have you not heard of men walking back home and a hand slap them? Have, have you heard of those kind of things? A real three-dimensional hand, but they didn't see it. You don't have to see it to feel it. Are we together? And the person goes back and all of a sudden, one of us showed me a picture of his dad yesterday. Half of the leg had been eaten. You can literally see the bones like that, half of it. Do you know what happened? He was sleeping. A mystery happened. He woke up and all of a sudden, that leg physically. There are many things you call sicknesses. You don't even know where it came from. I'm sick. You go to the hospital. They tell you there is nothing wrong with you. They check everything. You know the doctor even says, stop coming here. You are, you are wasting our time. But you know you are not feeling fine. Are we together? Mysteries that cannot be explained. Life is spiritual. I learned this very early in life. The spirituality of life. The spirituality of ministry. The spirituality of living. When you know this, your pursuit for God does not become... You know, every time you see somebody unusually zealous, they just say, Kai, this guy, I'm sure you are going to be a pastor. Or this lady, I'm sure God is already grooming you. He has isolated you and is grooming you to be a pastor's wife. No. 
the key to survival is to become spiritually minded please hear what i'm saying some of our parents right now ignore this and they are paying for it dearly there are mysteries in people's families they do not ex they do not understand life is everything spiritual when jesus came his birth was spiritual everything about it now look at this for god's sake a woman is minding her business probably imagining what dress will i wear for my wedding all of a sudden a stranger just appears hail mary he didn't even say what is your name ma hail mary in other words we have been watching you your name is mary we know you don't have to tell anyone your name in the realm of the spirit no sir no sir if god ever asks you what is your name is for a reason i mean it doesn't make sense for him to ask you what is your name he wants to change it then that's when he will ask you. yeah in scripture saul paul and all of that but that they are asking you because they want you to supply an information no 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 are we together do you know let me teach you something you can never see a spirit being and be the same whether a demon whether an angel you may never know what happens to you brothers and sisters listen if this is a shrine and you just run by mistake and say oh the wrong place as you never will live the same no it's impossible 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 you thought you ran too fast to be seen the realm of the spirit is not like that please understand what i'm saying if you know this that you are coming for koinonia you may be sitting outside you will never feel bad again because you realize that wow this thing is that it's just because we are because of the physical comfort of maybe being inside and all of that but it makes no difference that's why you can be saying god is touching somebody and someone in the second overflow is flying there you that you are close you are now looking at ah, god you mean you jumped me listen the holy spirit does not move with time and distance mm -mm. these two factors don't exist no 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 like you say i have to touch you before touching you that's physics in the realm of the spirit you don't do that are we together are you understanding this so you can never see a spirit being anybody that tells you he has been having encounters with spirits i think you should respect that person whether in a negative way or positive way that i've had some appreciable and except if, if the person is lying if the person is telling the truth no you are meeting a dangerous person for good or for bad most of the world leaders interact with spirits please look at me let me preach to you forget the fact that you see everybody wearing suits and going for forums they are being advised counseled rebuked directed by strange spirits there are documentaries upon documentaries on my system that proves to you that no man let me teach you something brothers and sisters you want to be famous a day will come a spirit must show up in your life to say all right now that you have gotten to this level we have to negotiate for it to go further i give you a guarantee 100 percent if jesus does not appear to you an angel sent from god does not appear to you a demon who are somebody is same it's like a realm you keep rising nobody disturbs you but you get to a point they say okay everybody that rises from here right now the realm of the spirit cannot be strange to such a person that's why you enter a business meeting somebody looks at you you look at him two of you know yourselves everybody knows what he has touched or otherwise there is a level you cannot be neutral believe what i'm telling you when you see people doing some things they are doing they have seen something when a woman looks at you and says i will kill you mark my words you better take it seriously either pray or stand on the confidence of what you now know but to say ah, this is what you just you would really die because you see let me tell you there are too many laws that can remove your spirit from your body many many laws many laws N not just death there are many spiritual laws that can separate a man's body from his spirit any of them can be manipulated to kill you You see that sickness and accident are physical expressions of the commonest laws 
that are used to separate people's bodies from their spirits. Like you skin a cow. Have you gone to the abattoir? You see them, they have a skill. They skin a cow. There is a mystery that can remove your spirit from your body. And many people move carelessly. And then it happens. It may happen through a car. It may happen through different things. But it is still a manifestation of this. You cannot sit on certain positions being neutral. It's impossible. I remember one of our friends years ago. He got a job. And I remember him saying they were paying them. Them that were struggling. They were paying them 50000 And they were paying the prophets one2 now, if they don't call it salary, they call it honorarium, but it's still a release of something from the giver to the person who needs it. They pay you 50000 for laborious study of five, six years under the most stringent conditions possible. And somebody just throws and comes in and they give the person 1.2. You know why? Because that person has an advantage. He can do something. Hi! Life is spiritual. Life is spiritual. Life is spiritual. I don't have to see you to talk to you. Life is spiritual. Life is spiritual. People's lives are being manipulated without their will. Life is spiritual. Many of us were born in pure Christian families. We never had any touch with idolatry. So you don't understand the spirituality of life. But for a few people who veered off here and there, did one or two things, life is spiritual. Grandparents just come out and sit on the ground. And after a few minutes, they stand up. They say, it's all right. It will be well with you. Go. And you are saying, what did they see? Life is spiritual. In the Bible, before they fought wars, they will go and ask the kings and prophets, please, will we win? And then they will say, there's trouble. And then they will say, how can we change it? Now, this is the part of spirituality that shocks me. The ability to change things. Change things by the spirit. Like a cleaner. I look and I find out that this is supposed to happen. Then you clean it as if there's nothing there. Haba. Oh, you were supposed to die tomorrow. Then somebody just cleans it. What advantage do you have? Do you understand that your life is spiritual? When you sit down in that class, do you know that it's not just one person sitting down? Life is spiritual. Now, the, it's not to just make us irresponsible and just see demons in everything. When I talk of the spirituality of life, I'm not just talking about demons. I'm talking about the presence of spirits to guarantee anything happening. You, the concept of being an atheist is another class of deception. Life is very spiritual. You see a lot of people come to dig a well. After they dig a well, the water comes out. They will tell you, go and look for chicken. Has that happened to you? Go and look for chicken. They slaughter the chicken and make incantations in the well and the water will never stop coming. Think about that. Do you know the water on earth is older than everybody on earth now? I hope you know that. The water on earth is older than everybody on earth. You are not drinking a person. You are not drinking a substance. You are drinking history. This was only bottled. Only God knows who laid hands on this water. Could it be part of Noah's flood? Could it be? You just know you are just swallowing it and then your body just reacts. You take something and all of a sudden your body reacts. I'm comfortable. Koinonia, listen, listen, listen. Let me teach you these things. If you do not understand it, don't be great. Just get a one-room apartment, get married, have two or three children, be a kingdom financier, and wait for the day you'll be with the Lord. But that you want to rise in this world we live in. No. We're traveling to Benin Republic. I think I told, when we got somewhere, a man, one Lenge guy, very Lenge guy just looking, like all these smokers. He looked at me and he called my name, Joshua. You've seen them now. You see them in markets. They look at you and in five minutes they start giving word of knowledge. You've not seen those kind of people. They look at you and say, Madam, uh -uh, 
why is uh, why is, is is Joshua stubborn like this now? He said, "Don't disturb me." But because they mentioned Joshua, he said, "Who?" Say again. Life is spiritual. Lo, I come in the volume of the book as it is written. It is written. I just appeared, but something has been written. A script. A script about your life. Written. When you understand the spirituality of life, then you also know that you have an advantage by the Spirit to manipulate things to be consistent with the Word of God in your life. This is, the rebel. this is where I'm taking you to. When I understand that life is spiritual, I don't mourn at physical results because I know that there is a loop through the Spirit where things can be corrected. Are you seeing that now? At that point, I stop worrying. Because I know there is an advantage. The advantage is my access. My access to spirituality. I can be assisted by a spirit being. In this case, the Holy Spirit. Listen. One of my best scriptures in the Bible is, Then the secret was revealed unto Daniel. A beast of a man just came and said, If you don't tell me my dream and the solution, I will kill you. And he said, King, don't be hasty. Don't worry. Let's just go and sleep. While other people were sleeping, he knew that something happens to men at night. The night is also a time for revelation. Listen. You try praying in the night and try praying in the day. If you pray seriously, come and tell me the difference. Come and tell me the difference. This, is, this, this, one, I, this one is like my office. I can tell you everything you want to know about it. The night time, I have sought out the mysteries of the night in a very strange way. The Magi came out and they saw a star. And they started smiling. They said a king is born. Not a child. A king is born. And they started going. When they met Herod, they said, um, we came from the east. Based on our study, we have books here prophesying. And a physical star. Because in Genesis chapter 1, he said he made the stars to signify times and seasons. Times, seasons. Hallelujah. So, they looked at it. And then, it led them to the place. And when they got there, they saw a baby. But because they knew that it was not a baby, they started worshipping him. If, I, if you are worshipping a Jimmy's child, won't somebody know that? They say they want to kill your child, a Jimmy. But now, two, three, or well, the Bible doesn't say three men. But we know Magi came from the east. And they are worshipping someone because they are seeing more than that. And all of a sudden an angel appears and says, run away with this child. They want to kill him. Run quickly. Do you know why? Because Jesus could die. Hmm. Did you hear what I said? The angel will not waste his time and say, run away with that child if he could not die. He could die. If, he, if they disobeyed that angel, they would have killed him. The only thing is the body would not decay. But he would die. Yeah, he would die. Are we together? When Jesus fasted 40 days and 40 nights, Satan was waiting. Very strange. Immediately he finished, he just showed up. Now watch this. If the devil is near you, won't you drive him? But hear him, he's walking with Jesus. Satan, walking with Jesus. Please, come. You are not the devil in Jesus' name. Say amen. But watch this. I'm minding my business. And somebody appears and I look and say, Satan, you again. Think about that. This is what happened in your Bible. And he said, ah, Jesus, you are hungry. Turn this stone into bread. And then he said, it is written. And he didn't disappear. He didn't go. He continued with another temptation. He said, Jesus, follow me. Let me show you something. And Jesus followed him. Your Bible. They went up the mountain. He said, look at all the glories of the earth. Hold on. Where is that mountain where a man can stand and see the glories of the world at once? Is it Mount Everest? It's a mystery. 
These guys just came out of the physical realm into the realm of the spirit and said, Stand, I show you all the kings I have empowered. This is it. Like a window, like you just step out into a door and show Jesus all the glories. He said, if you bow to me, I will give you. If you bow to me, that is the mystery of the wealth of sinners. If you bow to me, I will give you. Satan does not need money. He needs your bowing. If you bow to me, I will give you. So when you say you want to be blessed and not bow, ah, uh ah, -uh, he says no. You can't eat your cake and have it. Your allegiance, and then I give you every other thing. And you say, no, I will have it. Are you seeing? So you just get up and say, why are Christians not getting jobs? Now you understand. He took him and showed him the system. Bow to me. So you want a job, but you don't want to bow to him. You must find out what provision has been made. Because Jesus conquered him. Then he now took him up a cliff. And he said, jump down. He said, he shall put his angels charge over you. Look at Satan quoting scriptures. The guy you call Satan. By the way, let's not, it's not that we're talking about Satan, but do you really know who he is? Look up, please. Are you getting blessed? Am I boring you tonight? Who exactly is Satan? A guy with a horn? As Nigerian film has depicted? No. That's just to help you understand. Who exactly is Satan? Because according to scripture, we see that Satan is a person. He can be at a... Satan is not omniscient. Not all-knowing. The ignorance of Satan is clear from Genesis to Revelation. There are many things he did not know. Are we together? Number two, Satan is not omnipresent. Many times he's at a spot. He can't be everywhere. He's focusing on the issues that are most important. Question three. Is Satan down, up, or where? Where does he live? Now, today. Because when we say down, down Satan, up, up Jesus, none of them is living up or down. That's not the address of any of them. It's not the address of any of them. You go up, I guarantee you, you are not going to see anything there. You see that? Because I hope you know that this, our realm, is suspended in space. Space that even scientists don't know. There is no reference to measure where we are at now. And it was concealed by the wisdom of God. You can't, you can't tell whether we are in the middle. What, where exactly are we? You call this solid. You are standing here now, but you are floating and moving around. Think about it. Yet the Bible says it has foundations. The earth, your earth. Jesus himself, or well, God speaking now, told Job that the earth has foundations. Who is Satan? Why does he make you afraid? Please look at me. Let, let somebody be delivered now. Who is that guy that threatens the whole world? Where is he now? If you call him, will he come? Are we together now? Do you know there was a time in the civilization of God's kingdom where Satan was not there? He was not even created. I hope you know. Satan has a creation date. He was not born, so he was created. Are we together now? Let me shock you. Number two. I hope you know Satan is not the most dangerous of spirits. Evil spirits now. No. Of course. The Bible never teaches that. That Satan is the most dangerous of the spirits? No. There are spirits currently now that were bound in everlasting chains. Now, as I speak, they could not be released because even the elect, if they are released, they may not stand them. Now, as I speak, there are spirits bound. But Satan is going to and fro. He's not part of them. I want you to understand this. You see, you disarm darkness when you have light. You disarm darkness when you have light. 
all through scripture we see that demons can be told what to do and they can be told where to go and under certain conditions they must obey are we together now so how does satan carry out the advancement of all of these things how does he do that You see somebody who minds his business and you begin to pray for him. He's manifesting the power of God is upon him and he's vomiting something physical. Vomiting razor, vomiting this and that. Now that's an ugly scene, frankly speaking. But I mean, it's a shock. I've counseled so many people. I remember one gentleman who said they, their father took all of them for protection. After making incisions on them, God is my witness. They gave all of them two two razor blade, physical sharp razor blade. The man said, "Just close your eyes and eat it." The guy said, "Are you joking? This is razor." And they said they threw it in their mouth and they were shocked. They didn't wound them. They didn't do anything. It disappeared. Nobody swallowed their own. Now, when a razor disappears in your mouth, you have to find out where it went to. Say after me, life is spiritual. Life is spiritual. There are people who end their salaries. Their physical money disappears. I'm not saying sickness took it. You kept 20 naira, you come and find 15 naira. Yet you are alone in the room. There are individuals that have strange visitations by men, women. Strange beings in the night. A spirit comes and then comes to sleep with you. Or do certain things and you get up with all kinds of things you have a dream that there was an incision you wake up physically with a mark with blood was that was that just a, was that a story a spirit having an affair with you in a dream because spirits are neither male nor female you understand so there is no reason why you should be having that. Let me explain to you the mysteries behind people's lives that they don't know. Pay attention to what I'm saying. We live in a world that you must have spiritual intelligence. There are four things I'm talking about. Maybe I'll just take this one today. Because I can dwell here and explain to you the mystery behind the happenings of people. Just like that. Life is spiritual. All of a sudden, in three weeks, promise, men start coming to your life to favor you. Where were they? What happened before that they didn't come? Somebody spoke to you. He didn't give you money. He just spoke to you. You didn't see anything leaving him. It's not even that his saliva touched you. He just said something to you and you left. Believing you carried something. And you come out and people start treating you in a certain way. Say after me, life is spiritual. You had the testimony of that dear lady about the favor. How many of you have been crying and your helpers are next door, but they cannot speak to you. But all of a sudden, something happens and you begin to see people arise for you. Life is spiritual. Every one of you seated here, as many as you are, look at people standing outside. And I say this with all humility. Human beings are not idiots. Nobody comes to stand outside in the cold and just watch him because he's trying to... What is so special about the man of God? Everyone say life is spiritual. It's not just poster. It's not just balloons. There are mysteries. Do you know sometimes I watch people... When I come for Cornelia and I see people sit down, I know that the spirit realm brought them. Even them, they are surprised. What am I doing here? Yet you are still coming. Spiritual. Are we together? When a lady gets married and all of a sudden her womb closes. Watch this. What is Satan looking for? Why is her womb closing? She goes to the hospital. The doctor says, you are fine. We've checked you, you are okay. Oga, we checked you, you are okay. But then the child does not come. At all. Two years, three years, five years. The child does not come. And then all of a sudden, they begin to have problems. Husband and wife. And then everything scatters. Are we together? And then watch this. That same woman will live in defiance and go and have an affair with another man and get pregnant instantly. Instanter. That means it was never 
above anything wrong with her. There are people who have seen people have prayed for people with HIV. It's not that they live a careless life. No, no. I remember a testimony, I don't know if it was shared that was shared. Someone went to bed in the night. All of a sudden, a stranger appeared, held syringe, and told the person, this thing inside it is HIV. Injected the person, he woke up physically with HIV. Is there any amount of antiretroviral drug that will heal that person? If the sickness came from the realm of the spirit, medicine can only manage it. The real cure, the real cure will come from the realm of the spirit. Are we together? Families in disarray because they do not understand that life is spiritual. There are people who will be driving, driving, going to their place of work. At top speed, the car will just lock. Lock in one position. I've spoken with many people who had accidents. You ask them what happened. They tell you, I tried to turn the steering. I'm not a careless driver. I did my best. I was watching myself dying. You know, I've seen the spirit of death. I know it. It knows me. I've seen the spirit of death. So I know what I'm telling you. It comes to hospitals in the night. Patients in wards. And all of a sudden, hovers round. And all of a sudden, people just leave. And in the morning, you come and find out so-so person is dead. There are times it will come over territories. Like a city, like Zaria, like this. It will just come. It's invoked by powers. They do incantations and invoke it. It can loom around a territory for three weeks. And there are ghastly motor accidents, headache, killing men. A pastor just standing on stage preaching and he will collapse and die. And then after a while, when the invocation has fulfilled its reason for coming, it quietly leaves. You see it happen. Break forth, thou fountain of the deep, and we cast you are mighty on your own. You reign, you ancient Zion King, Adosh, Adosh, you are mighty on your own. Abraham, Abraham is returning from war, and all of a sudden, a strange man appears. The Bible says, no father, no mother, what kind of a man is that? Melchizedek just shows up and says, Abraham. You don't know me, but I am a king. A king of where? I've never heard about you. You are a king. Listen. Listen. The earth is not the only place that has kings. Melchizedek said, I am a king. Of where? Salem. An ancient city of peace. Then he looks at Abraham and said, I'm on assignment. Abraham gives him a tithe of all and he says, Abraham, I want to activate something in your life. Blessed be Abraham, possessor of the most high, possessor of the heavens and the earth. Listen, you never see Melchizedek in the Bible again. The next time Melchizedek shows up is in Jesus. Hold on. The Bible now calls him a priest after the order of Melchizedek. Read your Bible and see the strangers that met with men that we never saw again. Never saw again. Never saw again. There are men who started churches. When the church started growing, one time all of a sudden, spirits just appeared to them. I'm the power that controls this territory. We can negotiate all this. Bishop Oedeko said, and said how that it, the Kaduna church was not growing. Still anointed. Still with power. The Kaduna church was not growing. And all of a sudden, he said one time they were fasting and praying. Say life is spiritual. And all of a sudden, he came out and the Holy Ghost asked him to come out. He said look. And he looked and he saw a dark veil. 
dark veil covering the people. He said, this is the veil that misinterprets what I am doing. Misinterprets it. And he commanded it and it leaked. He, he just left like that and all of a sudden members started coming what is the relationship between members and this have you not heard of people who want name kings and they bury their children correct they bury people alive and you just get up and come to fight them you die for nothing i was in mina last week and one of us the media person met me and then you know talking about the security situation around and he said something he said a particular village when there was war about to happen in a particular village that the people there said no problem that the people just carried their charms and came and lined it in front of the village mysterious substances started killing the armies one of them something ate his hand you don't know what it is those people they have it when the going gets tough they bring it out Are you aware that life is spiritual? Are you aware that your life is spiritual? When you know this, it should not make you afraid. It should give you the key to changing anything. When you know that life is spiritual, you will value prayer. Because you will know that when you pray, among many other things, you are changing things. You are shifting things in the realm of the spirit. My life today... It's a product of this singular revelation. Life is spiritual. You never see me sit down and I'm just discussing physical things with people. I may keep quiet and nod, but I am reading between the lines. And when I get it, I say, oh, that's it. We know what the problem is. Listen, Koinonia, let me tell you the relevance of this understanding. You never will try to fight physical people again. If your roommate is fighting you all the time, know that life is spiritual. Fighting your roommate is when you finish praying, you find out that they are behaving haywire. Don't you know that there is a spirit that was watching while you are praying? And now you are coming. All of a sudden, they will pour water on your bed. Because anger is a gateway in the realm of the spirit. So the devil will try to rob you from joy. Joy. With joy shall you draw. That's why you finish praying and your father insults you. That's why as you are living from Koinonia, you receive hostilities from people. When you know that life is spiritual, you will stop being angry. And you will stop wasting your time. Let me tell you how many of us have aborted prophecy. You don't know that life is spiritual. The moment a miracle is about to come, that's when you hear stories that five people said about you. Satan is moving through men. Moving through men. The moment there is a breakthrough, did you hear this about Pastor Jakes? And then you are bitter, and then you are angry, and the demons say, praise God. This is exactly what we are looking for. And all of a sudden, the prophecy is aborted, like a woman pregnant. But there are those who understand this. And the moment they are looking at you, you say, no, no, I know it's not you. You are just a victim of the realm of the spirit. So I ignore them, and I keep dancing my way to joy. Listen, when Jesus was going to enter a city... Do you know how he said we should enter? He sat down on a horse and said, people, praise and sing. If Jesus entered that city silently, something dangerous would have happened. He listened. Do you know joy and laughter are weapons in the spirit? Look at me. Look at me. Let me share something with you. Sam, if you are talking to all of us now and we start laughing and scorning you, what happens to you? Talk to me. Do you know, if I am angry, I promise, my joy is to see him angry. When he's angry, then what I have done to make him angry is working. But when you see somebody that you are praying that something bad happens to him, always happy and joyful, it will disarm you. The Bible says, why do the hidden rage? And the people imagine a vain thing. Listen, the kings of the earth, they set themselves, right, against God as his anointed. Then it says, he that sits on the throne, hold on. It didn't say he will fight first. The first thing that happens. Laughter is an expression of joy. Hold on, hold on. That's why when people are under the anointing, sometimes you see them laughing hysterically. Now, you are not spiritual, so you just think, which kind of men of God are these? That's serious breakthrough happening to them in the realm of the spirit. 
There are people under the anointing, you see them start dancing. I'm not talking of, they can't even control themselves. Dancing. And you may not understand. When they were going to take the ark back, there was a formula. It was always with singing and dancing. I was, I was sharing with you, Jimmy. I will just share it to help you. I, I think it was um, um, yesterday we were talking. I got up in the morning about to pray. And the Lord said, no, you are not going to pray. You are going to dance before me. Two hours stretch, non-stop. That's all I did. All I did. I was so tired. I, I said, wait, wait, which style now am I going to? I mean, what is all this? But I knew I'm smart enough to know life is spiritual. Listen, listen. That two hours may be equivalent to 15 years breakthrough. Two hours. You reign, you ancient science king. Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty. Joshua chapter 1, 2, 3 They survey Jericho And all of a sudden He says walk around Don't talk, just walk around What is the stupidity Of walking around Life is spiritual You call it madness A man is walking around once And then he says on the seventh day Hold on Listen, the Bible says The fence of Jericho Five chariots could stand on it so even if you turn it it will still become another fence are we together there are people who are too big for breakthrough they are too they are they are they are, they are too carnal and scientific for the stupidity that spirituality requires life is spiritual they move around the seven times the moment they got there he said now Tejila, don't fight shout shout and the bible says when they shouted listen, listen hold on hold on hear me sometimes sometimes you hear people say give god a shout or sometimes you see about to minister and i tell you you are going to shout the name jesus you may think they are just formulas stupidly you see this is they, once your mind if you allow people who are depraved and don't know God, they will rubbish your breakthrough. They will say, what are you doing? What, what are you saying? Same thing with praying in tongues. You are praying in tongues and someone sees you and says, you too, you are in this thing. You are doing this thing too. Ah! You too, you are, you are joining them at your age. You went to school. Listen, listen. I tell you, I have mastered how to destroy Jericho in my life. I know the principles. Life is spiritual. When I found this key, I stopped wasting my time. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you how to come out of any trouble in your life. Should I tell you? Listen. After you finish praying, listen. I want you to laugh and dance. Dance is a strange mystery of deliverance. Strange mystery. Believe what I'm telling you. Dance is a strange mystery of deliverance. Dr. Kenneth Copeland asked Bishop Oyedeko and said, you claim we taught you faith, but how come you are able to pack over 50,000 people for services? And Oyedeko said, I dance every one of those people to church. See, listen, there is a time to pray. But there is a time to engage other things. Are you getting what I'm saying? The Bible calls it the sacrifice of praise. It didn't say the music of praise. It's a sacrifice. It will cost you, but it will tear your heavens open. Listen, you have not seen breakthrough till you know how to rejoice before God. There's nothing I know that paralyzes Satan like an expression of praise and joy. Is one of the seven mysteries God revealed to me. Seven mysteries. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Let me show you how men have commanded victory in their lives. When you don't know the key and you don't know that life is spiritual, you will waste your time 
cheap victories, you will never get it. I remember a woman who shared a testimony. Um, she was barren and then she started bleeding. She, she took him and then she started bleeding. And she went to a man of God who happened to be a doctor. True story. And the man said, ah, Madam, right now, honestly, this, this thing, of course, you know what that means. It is over. Just trust God for grace. And the woman said, no. I know what my Bible says. The man said, well, you know I'm a pastor, but I'm also a medical practitioner. When he finished everything, the woman said she did, do you know what they say? Dancing vigil. Not, not you put vigil and put songs. And you are, she said she danced her way and that child returned from wherever he was. <laughs> Listen. If you don't believe what I'm telling you, honestly, you can go home. Cornonia has finished for you this night so that you don't waste your time. You are too big to engage these mysteries. Some things will never happen in your life. Never happen. Hallelujah. There are mysteries. When the devil wants to get your life, he will use men. Listen, every time you start seeing strange attacks, it's a sign that something is about to drop. Be careful. Be sensitive. Bitterness will start coming. Are we together now? Betrayal will come. All kinds of things. There are demon spirits desperate trying to use men to look for access to sabotage. And that's why you joy, 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 rejoicing, dancing. All these things distract you till the miracle comes. Find a man who has refused to get angry. I show you a winner. I show you a winner. A winner. Some of you, all these, I'm like that. You will never rise beyond certain levels. In our family, we are like that. If I'm angry, should I not say it? Apostle, I'm a human being. You will sit there as a human being and die like men. Yeah. Mysteries. This life is spiritual. You are looking for rent. And the rent has refused to come. Do you know there are times in your life, there is nothing about you that can bring that miracle. You are not expecting money from anybody. There is no hope of anything coming. Those are the times you engage this. You don't go around just saying, Sir, the other day I spoke to you, I'm still here. Or is it that you are not seeing me? No. Let God talk to them. You talk to God. You engage the mysteries. And while you are dancing like a mad person, do you know there are people between now and Friday, you will see the strange testimonies that will come in your life if you understand that life is spiritual. This is the foolishness some of us have adopted. Oh, we have been stupid enough to do it. And God has proven himself in a very dangerous way. When we were going for crusade, remember when our car stopped. Let me give you a real testimony. The car refused to move. They kicked it. It did not move. Remember, we prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed. They kicked it. All of a sudden, we were tired. Everybody was discouraged. Steve Strings just took the guitar and started playing. That was how we started singing. There are witnesses. We kicked that car. It started till we got to the crusade ground. When you understand that life is spiritual, you will know that it's not about your roommate. This, this is the only way to love people. So there's somebody now that you are bitter against, but you are turning your attention to the wrong person and you are giving access to spirits. The devil expects you to see promise. Promise, come, pass this way. And you just pass like that, pulling your mouth. And the devil says, this is exactly what I, I mean. I like these kind of people. They are like robots. Anything we want, they do. But the moment you are passing and he's pulling his face, and how are you? Ah, that's it. You disarm. It's a little act. But you disarm principalities and powers. Because life is spiritual. Life is spiritual. Your breakthrough is spiritual. Your husband is spiritual. Your wife, spiritual. Your baby, everything. Your exams, spiritual. Listen. 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 I'm not saying you should not read. Listen. But um, listen, let me tell you the truth. Hear me. Hear me. Listen. 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 Let me tell you something. No matter who you are, a day will come you will sit down and look at that paper and you will know only God can help me. There is a key. 
Let me tell you what students do after exams. And let, that's why many people fail. They come out and then they go to somebody. There's usually somebody saying, what did you write here? Don't, don't do that thing. When you come out, walk away. Don't, I put five. You say you put 11. They say, how did it become 11? You didn't even put six. You have failed. The answer is five. Now, let me tell you what that, I'm not saying you should criticize people. Are you getting my point? When that happens to your spirit, all of a sudden you go back and say, my God, this is it. It's over for me. My whole life has finished. You are helping the demons prophesy to yourself. You are helping to speak. Whereas somebody else will know that honestly. It's not that I'm saying you should be lazy. But brothers and sisters, of what use is the spirit if there's no advantage? In the spirit world. There is an advantage. We are not idiots. Believe me. You dance an angel to your faculty. You dance an angel to your department. You dance an angel to open your file. Come on now. Dance your way to the admission list. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Please believe what I'm saying. This is only one over four. I came tonight to open your eyes. Stop interpreting the happenings in your life. They, they threw you out of the job. Don't sit there and say, Kai, but these people, even my uncle, my uncle, you, you saw me. It's not about your uncle. There's something you can do about it. Stop calling home to listen to bad news. After you listen, close it and say, Lord, I still see what you are doing. I still see what you are doing. Are we together? You hear a word and they say, by the grace of God, your husband is coming. All of a sudden, things begin to happen around you. Somebody just comes and says, you said, why are you putting this marriage scene on your head? And all of a sudden, you feel ashamed, you feel embarrassed. When a prophecy is coming, you can't even lift your hands to receive it because you are saying, they are seeing me. They think I'm desperate for marriage. They rob you of your joy. They rob you of your peace. You never get your miracle. Once you sit down, then the devil uses anger. You now sit down, you are talking about other people's relationship and marriage. Tearing people down and sowing a seed that will have a boomerang effect on you. Because life is spiritual. Hear what Proverbs says. It says, be careful as you speak for the birds will carry your words. Have you seen those birds before? The birds will carry your words. My life is spiritual. My life is spiritual. I cannot stop anybody from carrying charm. But I can stop it from touching me. I know what to do. I know what to do. I can't stop the spirit of death from standing on the road, oh Kai. But there is something, there is something that even if it's the devil that drives, he will drive me safely. These are not, these are not empty talks. This is what dominion is all about. I'm training you. I'm giving you spiritual intelligence. From now, when you walk out of this place, for some of you right now, there is a text message, a heavy insult waiting for you to read. Now, hold on. You now know that you don't just turn and call people devils, but you just enter and your roommates, who right now as you are here, they are talking about you, and the Lord tells you, should I tell you how to win? Buy five for life. Go and drop it and say, people, this is for you. And you are saying, ah, uh ah, -uh, God, to be that much of an idiot? No, somebody that did this, is this lady that stopped me from marrying? She said something bad to one good military man who would have married me, and God says, Buy malt, a carton of malt, and go and greet her. Or God will say, wash their plates. I know they dirtied your bed. She just change it, sing praises, and wash your plates. Listen, when you disarm powers, you will see God rise in a fearful way. Are we together? Bitterness, anger, envy are more wicked than than anything you can think about. They destroy you. They are like a cancer that sabotages you. Many of our parents, you know why they may never prosper? They are angry at everybody. There are people now, if they see me coming, I see people frown. Oh, is he the guy? That's him. How are they getting money? Look at these this, this young boys. And so the angel, the grace for the blessing 
is authorized to live your life because anything you don't honor cannot be your inheritance now let me speak over your life God sent me to not only teach and to preach but to use the power of the prophetic for the rising of people there are many people who do not know the power of the prophetic that is the assignment of the anointing to empower men I'm going to speak over your life and you'll be surprised to see the things that start happening they are not empty words they are words that are backed up with the anointing of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ koinonia all who are connecting connected and are following in the name of Jesus I decree and declare from this night I declare begin to step into a strange order of abundance I release you into a strange and superior order of wealth a strange order of financial blessings in the name of Jesus Christ I don't care what it has been like from the family you came from the economic situation you might be facing now whether in debt whether suffering all kinds of financially related issues in the name of Jesus arise and shine in the name of Jesus arise and shine arise and shine financially in the mighty name of Jesus I declare over every ministry going through financial pain and tension every family going I'm sensing a strong anointing I'm praying upon you every ministry every organization every business I decree and declare beginning from now may these spiritual forces start working for you By reason of these forces activated, I declare over your job, may it begin to produce maximally. I declare over your business endeavor, may it begin to produce maximally. I declare over your investments, may they produce maximally. And I declare over the men that have been sent by God to stand with you, and stand by you I declare enjoy their ministry from tonight you hear me by reason of this teaching tonight every spirit of poverty and lack and failure every cause of stagnation I declare they lose their hold over your destiny now they lose their hold over your destiny now. Hear me. I pray for every pastor and every church connecting in the name of Jesus. Even in this supposed global recession, you will not beg. You will not lack. You will not be in want. In the name of Jesus Christ. Help them please. Every ministry here that loves God and yet you are going through all kinds of financial tension that projects do not seem projects have been halted whether structural projects transformative projects halted because of the absence of financial resources I declare as these forces come into play step into a new season of supplies And for every family here that has suffered poverty and lack and financial, you know, failure in the name of Jesus, because you came here tonight, may my God begin with you and wipe the tears of your family members. I said, may my God begin with you and wipe the tears of your family members. Let me pray one last time. I just feel led in my spirit to pray for widows, widowers, orphans, all those who their physical support system seem to have gone away from them. Maybe the breadwinner of the family has passed on or maybe there's some kind of issue in the family and right now it looks like those that are around are incapacitated. In the name of Jesus, 
I declare that as these forces begin to work themselves, let poverty be driven far from your life, far from your family. In the name of Jesus Christ. And everyone who has mismanaged financial resources to your detriment, you've lost money, you've had all kinds of things, you've been downsized, because you still have access to these forces, I decree and declare, the same way the hair of Samson grew back, I speak to your finances, it must grow back. I speak to your finances, it must grow back. Wave your hands and give Jesus praise. Wave your hands and give him praise. Hallelujah. It is only by the word that we rise and we grow. Please pay attention. It is only by the word that we rise and we grow. In this kingdom, if you do not have access to the word of God, there is no possibility for growth. There is no other way earmarked for the believer's growth. Hallelujah. And you see, a church or a ministry, please look up, a church or a a ministry cannot grow effectively until certain ingredients are captured this is not my message but since I've started let me as well just just pick it up from there you have to understand that a ministry or a church does not just grow because the man of God is a good person or because he's a sincere person no mark chapter 1 please give us mark chapter 1 let's start from verse 21 mark chapter one long reading but let's see how we can cut it mark chapter one the bible says speaking about jesus now and they went into capernaum and straightway on the sabbath day he entered into the synagogue what did he do he taught he taught so you see teaching the teaching ministry of jesus next verse and they were astonished at his doctrine for he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes let's keep reading the bible says and there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit notice all the things that are happening here now so we see that he taught in the process of teaching something about the teaching exposed a spirit that was not clean are you getting there now until the teaching of the word came the spirit mingled with everybody pastor shagun is good to see you god bless you hallelujah and there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit and he cried out saying let us alone what have we to do with thee thou jesus of nazareth art thou come to destroy us i know who thou art the holy one of god next verse and jesus rebuked him saying hold your peace and come out of him so this is how to rebuke spirits you don't rebuke spirits by counseling by advices you rebuke spirits by commanding their exodus out of their victim are we together the bible says and when the unclean spirit had torn him and cried with a loud voice he came out of him and they were amazed so two things now we see we see teaching and we see deliverance from the power and the dominion of evil spirits they question among themselves saying what thing is this what new doctrine is this for with authority commanded he even the unclean spirits and they do obey him be patient i'm showing you something now immediately how long immediately his fame spread abroad that means there is a way god announces what he's doing in a church and a ministry you see the combination of the teaching ministry and the miraculous but in order of priority it was the teaching ministry not just to come around casting demons there was perspective to that miracle the teaching ministry then an unclean spirit immediately the bible says his fame went abroad throughout the region round about galilee but you would think it will stop here continue and forthwith when they were come out of the synagogue they entered into the house of simon and andrew with james and john and simon's wife's mother lay sick of fever and anon they tell him of her 
and he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up and immediately have the fever left her and she ministered to him do you know what this is it's one thing to minister the power of god and for visitors and strangers to receive the power of god through your life but it's another thing for those close to you to also experience that grace this was peter's um mother-in-law i think now imagine the the power of that personal testimony so this is not just some fake thing that is done outside somewhere even when he came home his own disciples became benefactors of that grace also and at evening watch this now when the sun did set they brought unto him all that were diseased and them that were possessed with devils and the city hallelujah this is it here and the city not the village not the community the whole city was gathered together at the door what did he do with them and he healed many that were sick of diverse diseases so we see the teaching of the word captured in his ministry we see deliverance from unclean spirits we see healing of diverse kinds of sickness are we are we together he casted out many devils and suffered not the devils to speak because they knew him read on please and in the morning rising up a great while before day he went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed are you seeing the ingredients now the teaching ministry there and then deliverance the healing ministry now we see priesthood captured there the prayer ministry you would think after such exploits there's no need to pray again you would be so carried away by the crowd the bible says while it was morning he got up immediately and went to a solitary place to pray and in the morning rising up a great while before day he went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed next verse and simon and they that were with him all who are with you will follow you to where you are going if you are going to the place of prayer you don't tell them go and pray you lead them by going there yourself this is an instruction a principle in church growth if you tell people fast and you don't fast they will not follow you they were following jesus as he was going to pray you must be the pace setter of your convictions otherwise people will not follow you is someone learning now and simon please go back to 36 simon and they that were with him followed after him to go and do what he was doing 37 and when they had found him they said unto him all men seek for thee we can stop here so if you want to see growth and increase you're a pastor you have a prayer group the secret is is more than just producing posters there is a place for publicity but the real ingredients that are required is that the gospel must be preached doctrine must be taught or communicated there must be a rich a rich capture of prayer in that ministry are we together and then you must give allowance for signs and wonders human beings will not come and waste their time around a theoretical god and keep going back to their pain going back to their destruction people want to experience god in his fullness they want after your teaching after your preaching they want to see a demonstration and when i talk of demonstration i'm not just talking of falling up and down i'm talking about radical transformation a collision with supernatural solutions that someone can come and sit in an atmosphere like this and get up and doors begin to open lives begin to change you cannot run away from what works therefore if you are not experiencing growth maybe in ministry the problem may not necessarily be the church it may be the vessel the first part of call is the vessel jesus taught jesus preached listen carefully jesus casted out devils look at how he managed fame his fame went abroad 
and yet he was able to leave that atmosphere of fame and go to pray to build capacity I don't know why God just put this in my heart to say because you see there are many people who think increase is just superstition or just about liking an individual it's more than just liking a good preacher and it's more than being a sincere person you may be a genuine man of God and still suffer as if God did not call you if these ingredients are not captured in your life there is no mystery about church growth if you preach the gospel if you teach the word doctrine being your course content if in the at the point of teaching god still uses you to bring deliverance to the captives healing to the sick and there is a rich prayer life first your own prayer life and then the corporate prayer life of that people believe me that fire will not go down that means every time you see that there is a decline these are the things to examine why should god keep sending more people if they are not being saved there is no justification why god should send people to your church to koinonia or to any other platform if souls are not being saved remember when a fig tree jesus now had a fig tree that attracted him he came there hungry and did not find food what did he do to the fig tree he caused the victory and said fruit should not come out of you again there is no reason why god should bring men to any life if the message of the gospel will not be preached and then if believers will not be established in doctrine established in righteousness to become strong to become matured can i tell you this being a baby christian is dangerous especially in these end times just saying i am saved is not enough an heir as long as he's a child he differed not from a slave that means his experience will still be the experience of one who is out of the kingdom hallelujah we must grow and the only way we grow in this kingdom is through the word of god I commend you to God and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified are we learning and then you must trust God for grace please hear me if you're a man of God here whether in ministry already or God is calling you can I tell you among the many things you pray for is the grace for the supernatural you ignore the supernatural get ready for empty pews end time ministry is a ministry of power power that is replicable again and again it is not just the excellency of speech power to bring changes to people's lives power to bring supernatural solutions power to ward off the arsenals of darkness most people have done well in terms of learning scripture but there is a, a gross deficiency of the authentic power of the Holy Ghost in their lives. Nobody will come and sit down and waste their time and waste their destiny before you if there is no demonstration of the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. Because can I tell you, for everyone seated here listening to me, there are yokes and burdens you cannot begin to imagine the problems that people shelve away just to pay attention to jesus and if you are advocating and marketing a loving and benevolent jesus somewhere in your sermon somewhere in your church service there must be an opportunity for the holy ghost to reveal the love of jesus to the people while he was teaching there was a man possessed of an unclean spirit and there was something powerful about the doctrine he was communicated it was too hot for those spirits they couldn't keep quiet and jesus casted those spirits out when he did all of that they brought more people for him that is the the reward you get for demonstrating the power of god god honors you with more people but with more people will come a need for greater solutions so he went to pray to increase capacity again hallelujah are we learning 
So next time anybody asks you what is the key to church growth, there is no superstition about it. It's not just an issue of location. It's not just an issue of geography. When there is the preaching of the gospel, the teaching of the word, a demonstration of the reality of the life and the power of Jesus, a solid, stable, ever-increasing priesthood ministry of prayer, you have found the ingredients that make for growth. Are we together now? Philippians chapter 4 verse 9. Let's talk on a few things. don't know how many things I'll talk about tonight. But wherever we stop, we'll just pray. By the way, tomorrow, tomorrow's service is a miracle service. I'm sure you are aware of that. Praise the name of the Lord. And please, I want you, as much as God grants grace, let everyone know that God is healing, God is blessing. It starts by five on the dot so that we can work with time. And I understand there is a limit to, you know, the whole transport system so that we work with time. But five on the dot, we're here. And by God's grace, we thank God for the beauty of the, the screens for greater visual clarity. So we'll make sure that everyone is around. Please five on the dot by God's grace. Let's start so that we can have some time to pray and then trust god for a very mighty time hallelujah it says those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me he says do and the god of peace shall be with you those things which ye have learned now this is powerful there are some things that are learned there are some things that are received there are some things that are hard. There are some things that are seen. While the word of God is coming like this, there are different dimensions and operations of the word. Some of the things you will learn them because it is secular knowledge. You can gain that knowledge. But some of them are received as revelation. They cannot be taught. While the preacher is teaching, God is also telling you something. Out of that message will come a word for you the things that are received and there are things that are heard there are things that are seen it says in whichever way they come the most important thing is do let there be action attached to your knowledge do and it says whilst you do it the god that ensures peace will be with you that means it does not matter what you learn it does not matter what you receive it does not matter what you hear it does not matter what you see if there is no doing the doing of faith the doing of obedience there is no guarantee that you will have a manifestation are we learning now this is very important so you are listening tonight some of you are learning some of you are receiving some of you are hearing some of you are seeing the most important thing is that you obtain grace that you do you walk in keeping with these principles that you are learning you are receiving and he assures you that the god of peace shall be with you the god of peace shall be with you the god of peace shall be with you I have been very concerned about the level of spiritual knowledge of the average believer and i thought to bring this down home also to help us seeing and knowing that you're excelling in this kingdom is primarily predicated on the level of spiritual enlightenment that you have listen carefully the bible says that the god of this world has a principal assignment to blind the minds of people so that they are ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth are we together hosea chapter 4 and verse 6 the prophet lamented and said my people speaking by the spirit are destroyed for the lack of knowledge not lack of knowledge of what they want 
but lack of knowledge of what it takes listen carefully most people know what they want but you need to know what it takes to bring forth what you want you want a life of peace you want a life of glory you want a life of beauty you want a life of excellence you want a life of ever increasing manifestation of god's power your needs are not new to you but the bible says my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge knowledge of what knowledge of the requirements what it takes to actualize what you desire and it says because thou has rejected knowledge anything rejected means it was offered you and then for whatever reason you were able to reject it and god will respect your right to choose but there are consequences when you reject knowledge can i tell you this i was talking to the school of ministry students we had a brief session yesterday and i was encouraging them your life will not change just by default your life will not change just because you are a christian in theory it is going to require you having understanding thorough knowledge and understanding of the ways of god thorough knowledge and understanding of the principles of the kingdom then on the strength of the knowledge and the understanding that you have listen carefully you now obtain grace the grace to do the grace to walk in keeping very simple in theory so any area of my life that is not working look up please any area of my life where i am not obtaining results the bible mandates that the first thing i do is to go for knowledge don't take action in ignorance you will only recycle pain in your life action in ignorance only recycles pain action in ignorance only recycles pain the first thing you need to do is to camp with god and get high level spiritual illumination john 1 verse 5 and the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not many of you have heard me give this revelation it is powerful how light works look up please a room that has been dark for 10 years a room that has been dark for two weeks a room that has been dark for one hour a room that has been dark for five minutes if you switch on the light in all the rooms they will answer to light the light at the same frequency the room that has been dark for one year will not say no i, I need time because i've been dark for long no that means that even if you have been in darkness for 10 years the moment light comes the result and the dominion power of light is instant very powerful revelation that you have dwelt in darkness for a very long time and then the light of god's word comes in a moment in a twinkling of an eye you can be sure that this reign of darkness has gone forever whether it is in the area of your spiritual work in the area of finances in the area of your influence kingdom service whatever it is that means if people do not make progress with their life their retrogression more than being traceable to demons is traceable to the dominion power of darkness darkness creates stagnation listen carefully darkness creates stagnation darkness grounds a man at the same position and i've told you that time does not change anything time only reveals it takes access to light isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1 arise shine prophesy to yourself say arise one more time shout it say arise it says arise shine why for your light is come not your light is around it has always been there isn't it amazing that what can lift a man in one moment has always been there but the day it comes to you 
the day it comes to you that is the day you arise and you shine for the glory of the lord is risen upon you now please listen to me there is no overemphasizing the need for believers to pay attention to spiritual illumination it is the only bailout system out of the darkness of this world look up please many of us come from families where no one has been able to rise beyond a certain level is that true many of us have come from families ravaged by all kinds of demonic things yokes causes all sorts of things some of you are not even aware of the full extent of the evil that surrounds your life and the territory there your immunity is the word of god now the challenge with many believers is that the moment they get born again they just start going to church religiously just doing church as we know it religiosity and then they never pay attention to grow and for many reasons i think there are a number of reasons why people don't grow number one they think they are still young the first reason why people do not contend for passion to grow is because someone else is giving a harvest to a seed you are not sowing so because you always receive a harvest whether you are sowing or not it gives you a justification that there is still time lamentation chapter 3 and i think it's verse 27 it said it is good that a man bear his yoke in his youth this is my recommendation that you use time for your advantage many people do not contend for spiritual growth or growth in every area of their life because you see once people are growing up the responsibility of parenthood demands that you are there for your child while he's growing financially and otherwise and chances are that just because there's someone giving you money there's someone paying uh, you can you can make all kinds of mistakes and there are people shouldering it for you you may not have been exposed to see the full effect of not understanding or not having high level spiritual illumination can i tell you this is why many young men become utterly frustrated the moment they are left alone because they have been shielded for many years they don't know which result came from their faith and which one came from the covering on them so for many years the gentleman is not fasting he's not praying he's not studying the word of god he's not serious yet he's increasing financially yet doors are opening for him then the day you are now exposed and you have to stand by your own faith you will find out you are still a baby christian you were only leaning on the shoulder of parents i found out that the first reason people do not want to grow in life is because they have been covered and shielded from seeing the effect that lack of growth brings to their lives is god speaking to someone already yes why should i be faithful in keeping financial principles for instance for my increase and my lifting when i have maybe some pocket money coming when i have some money coming from some loved one whether i pray or not is coming so when we are teaching things about favor when we are teaching things about diligence chances are that that message will not really mean anything to you you just say amen when everybody is saying amen but somebody who knew where he came from hallelujah that person will easily receive can i tell you there is a measure of pain that is a blessing because pain sometimes has a way of creating passion don't be too quick to stop pain in people listen to me not just i'm not just talking of demonic oppression there is a pain factor that can wake people up in life the prodigal son it was pain that woke him up the bible says he came to himself not that the holy ghost spoke to him not that the spirit spoke to him pain can make men come to themselves study your bible no i will study one day and then one day the person who becomes your principal breadwinner now says from today i'm not helping you again 
two weeks of utter frustration by yourself you will look for a forest to pray by yourself you will create all the excuses it is raining it is too hot there is a pen factor that can go and close you somewhere that night without strings without keyboard you will do the prayers and worship by yourself you will pray by yourself most people in our generation have been too pampered to become powerful too pampered to become powerful you are lazy spiritually people give excuses you know the way these people are the way life you are so busy and we continue to receive all kinds of justification discipline yourself and buy books i won't buy books my daddy said he will buy me books you see that kind of thinking so time is going and the things you should have learned with the gift of time given to you time is passing but the corresponding knowledge is not coming please listen to what i'm teaching you tonight it's a very very powerful teaching it is good for a man that he bear his yoke in his youth when there and there are people respectfully speaking there are parents who when they are fasting they tell the children don't fast you are too small but demons don't say the children are too small to possess them a little child of five years old can kill ten people before they deliver him and you ask the child who did you kill he will start mentioning he had that level of skill and yet to fast even if he's six to twelve is a problem what of morning devotion or night devotion whichever one devotion that's the most important thing many people you are laughing many people are not serious with god don't sit down and expect results from an investment you did not make spiritually no sir god is a just god there are people today the only time they open their bible is when they come to church and now that we have electronic platforms like this some don't even open it at all everything do it for me everything do it for me so a sense of responsibility zero spirituality zero everything zero can i tell you the truth there is a requisite level of investment in knowledge you will need to build capacity for the days that come I have been warning people for a very long time jesus said i will have i will walk the works of him that sent me while it is day for the night cometh when no man will walk again you don't have the time all the time no for instance for instance when if you are a young man who came from a family where there is a divide as to spirituality by the time you are on campus and you are in school that is an opportunity to build your life because ordinarily at home they may not allow you to pray that prayer now you keep wasting your time we have a social me um, social social center and all these things hundred level the time is passing god is watching your destiny is also watching 200 level some of your colleagues who may never be allowed to pray do you know there are some of you if you were at home you will never be allowed to go to certain meetings you will not be allowed to carry out certain spiritual exercises god now brought you out of your family using the guise of school so that he can give you five years to build the capacity that your destiny needs but many people continue to waste their time and i tell you the spirit of the waster is alive especially in this our arrogant generation time is going now you are in 400 level for instance the only thing you know is what they taught you in class relationship zero you have not you have not had friends you've not made friends godly friends that can become a ladder for your destiny and the holy spirit keeps warning you people invite you for strategic programs you don't care because in your mind i have an uncle in nmpc or an uncle in a shell he promised me that as soon as i finish i will get a job and then just when you are writing your final year he will relocate to canada woe to him that puts his strength in a man please pay attention the holy spirit is speaking to you again 
There are some of you, God disguised, he brought you to Zaria to come and stay maybe with a family to work or to learn certain things. And you may be wondering, God, but why didn't you take me to Lagos and other places? God is saying, you are only here for three years. Use that three years well. This three years is the answer to the prayer that you've prayed in one prayer and fasting and say, Lord, I want to have a great destiny. In these three years, maximize the time. There are people who encountered God in their spillover year. It was in that frustration they were strolling around like madmen around their various campuses and the Holy Ghost landed upon them. And they now said, Lord, thank you that I have a few more weeks to stretch it out in destiny. Everybody say knowledge. Can I tell you, my first assignment for you tonight is can you list the five people who are currently wasting your time and wasting your destiny right now? I'm not saying write it, list it in your mind. Five things, the five top things that are wasting your time and wasting your destiny and not allowing you to access the kind of knowledge that you need. For some of us, it may be movies and media and social media. For some of us, it may be friends. For some of us, it may be laziness and carelessness. Oh, I don't have money. One day, God led you to a fellowship where they shared free books. Five keys to building your faith. You looked at the person who wrote it and said, look at this guy. There's nothing faith on him. And you drop the book. Instead of you to open up your spirit and learn. Somebody who has four over ten. You who has zero. Who is better? So when I tell you this, our generation is arrogant, I know what I'm saying. People who have no results, but they are the ones who sit down vetting the performance of those who are at least doing something. Someone who is trying and praying for one hour, you whose prayer life is under attack, what gives you the credence to talk about that person's prayer life? Koinonia is quiet. useless friends that waste your time don't allow you to spend time with god why should you feel sorry for saying sorry i cannot see you now i'm spending some time with god in prayer or i'm meditating or i'm just resting can i tell you this you must love your future more than your reputation if you love your reputation more than your future you are not going to get there i assure you it is better to be controversial and advanced than to sit down to try to please everybody and stagnate yourself forever. How about your passion for God? I'm yours, I'm yours. I'm yours forever. I'm yours, I'm yours. I'm yours. My life is yours, it's yours, it's yours forever, it's yours. I looked at the photo of a man that I used to know many years ago. I was, you know, just browsing the internet and he had become an old man today. Tears came out of my eyes, I said, ah time is really passing on i looked at my own picture <laughs> not <laughs> not another pe my own picture joshua selman i couldn't have believed i've grown this much go and look at your picture and then you will never tell yourself i'm young again you will give yourself the pressure if it is knowledge you need to get if it's one week fasting you need to fast better do it now it will not kill you father i need knowledge high level spiritual illumination i came from a family where no one has risen i came from a family where the only scripture we know is john 3 16 i'm ready to upgrade myself that my destiny is calling me and this will be a period god is some of you are in a spiritual probation period right now I don't know if he was here or in Abuja I was teaching. Listen, 
okay i think it was a four square meeting or so if you have two people listen to me let's assume one person is 30 years or 40 years and another gentleman is maybe 19 years or 20 years the guy who is 20 years can afford to make all kinds of mistakes and do whatever he wants to do with his life he can correct his he can listen to a powerful sermon when he's 25 and adjust he's still in his morning stage you who is 35 or 40 it's, that is not even the afternoon is is the later part of afternoon are we together you cannot afford to be pursuing life at the same pace with that person please wake up i'm speaking to you by the spirit the greatest unbecoming of our generation is this fallacy of i am young pray i am young fast i am young go for the word i am young when he spoke to jeremiah jeremiah said i am but a child jeremiah 1 verse 5 he says say not that i am a child conquered that demon of trying to excuse all kinds of things saying there is time is someone learning now i've told you in my world an adult is not 18 years in my world an adult is anybody who has the intuitiveness to understand what i'm saying and has the stamina to be able to bear the consequence of action once you are that person you are an adult whether you believe it or not that's why when we give gifts to children here i tell you the age age one to ten everybody say knowledge you have to identify the time and destiny wasters in your life otherwise you are not going anywhere my precious people please listen to me i'm preaching to you from the depth of my heart if you cannot identify the people and the things that waste your time and waste your destiny there is no advancement for you time wasters do not be afraid of being controversial let them call you mother mary let them call you you are whatever no problem this thing called future everybody will get there it's like it's like in a class nobody writes exam for another person except you are doing malpractice and if they catch you on your way out so while you are preparing for the exam of your destiny don't let someone act as if he's going to write the exam for you by the time you have three four five children and you cannot feed them by the time your spiritual life goes down by the time demons attack your family and you don't have the spiritual stamina to bring deliverance to them nobody will come and do it for you you need to begin to build that stamina now young lady look at me are you building the stamina for your destiny or you are building hair makeup Th those things are not wrong don't get me wrong but if that's all you are building you're about to waste your destiny gentlemen are you building apps and it and all of those things or you are settling down to build capacity a day will come your stamina will be tested no matter who you are listen to what i'm telling you for as long as you are alive on earth you can't pray it away a day will come your stamina will be tested your spiritual stamina your financial stamina your mental stamina it will be on the strength of the knowledge that you have that's what will give you stability i'm tired of the status quo there's gotta be more than this there's gotta be more gotta be more there's gotta be more than this for desperate people do desperate things and we press in there's gotta be more gotta be more there's gotta be more than this everybody say knowledge my people are destroyed in luke chapter 19 41 and 42 one of the major reasons jesus cried and wept over a city why did he weep over it his lamentation was based on verse 42 he said if thou hast known at least in this thy day 
the things which belong to your peace the things which belong to your spiritual excellence the things which belong to your financial advancement he says but now they are hid from your eyes can i tell you something about the deception of knowledge just because you are around an information does not mean you are receiving it many people were around jesus i've taught you this year you can choose what to do when you are around the truth others can make money from the truth judas others can run away from the truth but others can allow themselves to be transformed by the truth the choice is yours to know what to do with the truth knowledge i remain a student in the school of knowledge i like to know what i do not know because i don't have i don't have the time i'm telling you if you are not conscious of the fact that time is going in your life you will not grow today in the name of public figure or the name of whatever it is i've almost lost a, a very major sense of my my personal life and privacy all in the name of supposed public figure if you see me stand by the junction to peacefully buy corn now you will lay me and kneel down there and say apostle i've been trying to see you see that but there was a time i could go alone without disturbance whatever i did with that time is what will speak now young lady remember once upon a time you didn't have children now you have two or three children you can't pray for five minutes they don't care they will bang your door and say open that door as you are praying they will tear the bible they will smash your phone motherhood has come in god warned you and said use this opportunity now and build capacity for some of you let me speak to you prophetically you are like elijah wake up and eat the journey is far wake up and eat eat on behalf of your family wake up and eat eat on behalf of your destiny man of god in the making hear me i'm speaking to you by the spirit wake up and eat if you wake up in the night you will not die wake up and eat the journey is far you will go in the strength of what you have eaten elijah did not know how far he was going to go he ate a little and went back to sleep the angel tapped him for his own good he said wake up eat again some of you may need to go back to your old notes faith 101 start learning it again just because it's foundational does not mean it is mediocre you need to revisit those things again do you know uh, please if you can listen to my message maximizing personal retreats is a very powerful message don't wait until there is a corporate time of spiritual emphasis for your spiritual emphasis there are times you can take a day or two days or a week all you are doing is revisiting your old notes those were the things god told you before you became emoji those were the principles that you learned how faith works principles of prayer how to withstand every wiles of the enemy how to engage the word of god some of you even today you don't even speak the word of god again because it's for children and it has become to your detriment i am blessed i'm increasing i'm prosperous you love and that is kindergarten christianity go back and begin to deal with these things again is god speaking to us can i tell you the average believer if you have been around this ministry or around this city for at least five years you have no excuse for ignorance because by the privilege of god's grace there has been a level a high level of spiritual illumination do you know and i'm saying this sincerely most people listen to the messages that i used to teach years ago in koinonia and they send me text messages and they say this is what has changed my life and sometimes i nod my head i say oh dear this is what i taught my precious people six years ago seven years ago some people listen to it they just dumped it away but someone is now finding it and is becoming gold do you know why refer to what i said earlier pain can wake you 
and make something you trivialize become serious when god is teaching you about finance the the economic system of the kingdom you can throw it away and say it doesn't matter all i need to do is to learn how to pray and fast and finance things will magically come into my life the day you suffer in a way that looks like god does not exist like the prodigal son you come to yourself you will go back and fish out any book where god has spoken to you up and you sit down and learn you can see your elder siblings and insult them and say their lives are not moving forward shame on them until the day what appeared to them appears to you and say now that you have reached 35 i'm here to introduce myself that i'm the one who scattered your father I'm the one who destroyed everybody in your family and now that happy birthday first and then he will now let you know that's when you will now go back and go and listen to the mystery of exemption the teaching the mystery of deliverance i don't know how many years ago that message was preached here till today till tomorrow that teaching continues to liberate nations what many people trivialized doesn't matter until you sleep one day and you almost cannot wake up again because something presses the living daylight out of you and makes sure you will not wake up that day you now wake up and say ah so there is something called oppression some of you may never know the advantage of favor when we teach about favor you laugh because all your roommates are from koinonia and you think that's how it will be then the first job they give you you are the only christian serious christian in the midst of wolves you say in jesus name they say let that not come out of your mouth again and then you say okay now you will understand the scripture that says when a man's ways pleases the lord he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him can i tell you sincerely there are many people who do not benefit from certain teachings because there is a level of innocence they have not been exposed to the reality of life so you will not understand some of the things that god said in scripture here but i'm praying for you that you don't have to wait until darkness comes upon you do not make the mistake of the five foolish virgins they were all virgins but the mistake of the five foolish ones was they did not carry extra oil when the bridegroom delayed their oil finished there were people who would buy it they had money to buy it they did not buy it he said go to them that sell and buy now god is giving you a chance you have not gotten to any dark days where you will need this now please don't feel bad there are people who would never have believed that their loved ones would go to be with the lord at this time nobody prays for anybody to die nobody prays for anyone to go but there are families who it was a shock all of a sudden daddy gone mommy gone now they are exposed alone it is the residue of what you know and you have that will preserve you in the days that come i went around graceland today just briefly just to see what happened and i just as i stood there and i just looked at everything that happened I just said my god i pray that the people who were victims of this do they have sufficient illumination to be able to build them time and chance happened to them all but it is what you know that preserves you don't wait until the day that a doctor says it looks like there's something pain that you thought it was just a spray they say it looks like something is growing there let's test first and then they say something you don't like that's the day you go and start learning on healing and health that's too late you don't learn when there is trouble no you archive you build a, a solid spiritual fortification is god speaking to you today there are people who never paid attention to spiritual things when we were teaching about fruitfulness all wise during miracle service we are preaching and prophesying and saying in jesus name be fruitful lay your hands on your womb say i will never be bad and you see me just laughing and laughing at others they don't know it's a demonic spirit it's a waster 10 years down the line 
you find out that because God gave you an opportunity to receive, you wasted it. Now, something that you would have received easily, you have to travel and go miles and distances to go and look for a man of God before he now prays for you. The worst one right now is the issue of finances. Can I be honest with you? Hmm. The times that we live in right now, the level of financial, um, um, what's the word now? Financial tsunami. We said this thing years ago, that this storm was coming. The immunity is not just to do business. The immunity is to learn the ways of the kingdom. We kept pounding it. And in a way, we acted like fools. We took our time to teach. I taught financial dominion. I taught the wealthy place. I taught, you know, extraordinary fruitfulness. Different things, success systems. All to equip us for these days. Many people did not pay attention to it. Again, I am young syndrome. And one day I will face it. One day I will face it. Can I tell you the truth? The adult today was the child yesterday. The teenager today, I returned to Zaria and I saw some of my wonderful children. I wanted to run away. What in the world is going on? Some of them are taller than their parents now. Welcome to the reality called life. One day you will stand at the mirror and almost want to run away and say you are not the one. But life will say you are the one. Ready or not. Prepared or not. I don't want to live my life in misery and pain because of negligence to opportunities and the truth of God's word. They had the word just like we did, but the word did not profit them. It is possible for the word to not profit you. If you do not contend, use this season and settle down and go for specific knowledge high level spiritual illumination in the various areas of your life where you find out that there is darkness how do you know the areas you need light by observing the reign of darkness if you find out that for this year there has been issues of darkness in your health it looks like you have been every other month you are sick don't feel bad don't feel condemned but go back and, and you see, the internet has, has helped us and created a template. Healing scriptures. There are people who have labored and gone through these things for you already. He keepeth his bones so that none is broken. Confess that scripture. Because of the kind of drivers we have in this world now. Confess that scripture. A thousand shall fall by my side, ten thousand by my right side, none shall hurt me. With my eyes shall I see and behold the reward of the wicked. You declare it, the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous. In the name of Jesus, the fullness of my days I fulfill. No devil anywhere will come and use enchantment to cut my life. No, I have no covenant with death. Don't wait until the day you are quarter to go. You stand and build spiritual fortification. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I be afraid of? Don't wait until the day you hear that there is terrorism around. And that they kidnap this, they kidnap that. Then you now start scamping around and you are watching. No, no. Build yourself. Build yourself. There is nowhere you will run to that you will really find safety. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. That is a real strong tower. The righteous run it to it and they are safe. Hallelujah. Are we together? Question. If you have a bad dream, look up please believers. I hope those outside are following. Say hallelujah. If you wake up right now to a bad dream, let's assume you go to bed and you see yourself inside a coffin ladies and gentlemen what spiritual approach have you learned to deal with that situation what are you going to do when you wake up god forbid you are joking 
I know it's funny what I'm saying, but listen, the reality of the times that we're living in now require that you understand the specifics connected to the, the, the results that God says will be produced in your life. If you get up today, God forbid, and you find out that you probably did not get the kind of job you are looking for, show me the scripture and show me the revelation you have to protect you and immune you from poverty and a life of penury and pain. Show it to me. If you get married, God forbid, and all of a sudden you find out that your wife is unable to take in, show me what scripture you know that you have learned that you can engage. If you be, get into an office and someone vows and says, look, my grandfather is a herbalist. My father is a herbalist. Me, myself, they just did my own induction. And we are in this office together. I will destroy you. And the person means it. Show, don't just say it will not happen. Show me. Many people have made blind boasts and suffered casualties. Ladies and gentlemen, give me the basis of your confidence that you will thrive in Nigeria. In the midst of all the evil, the sentiment and the wickedness that plagues our land. Parents, what gives you the guarantee that your children will not be armed robbers? The cane you are hanging in your house? Do you know, I now know why many people get angry in the afternoon stage of their lives and they just fold the file over everything Jesus you know why most of these are parents lovingly speaking just turn away from anything god now because haven't sat in church for many years haven't participated in fasting programs prayer programs they've fallen under the anointing they went attended crusades by the time they now look at their lives 45 50 55 it is almost the same destiny as the person who started destroying his life as a teenager and they now say what then was the value of all the things that i went through that is what i want to stop in your life and it will not happen just by a good intention it happens by the word and without him was not anything made that was made young man you believe you have the call of god upon your life oh i'm going to go to the nations tell me how one of my uncle in canada said that uh, just when i graduate there's one church they've kept a space for me oh how foolish what makes you believe that you will rise and become a global voice speaking the purposes of god have you read deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1 and 2 do you believe it that you shall be exalted above the nations of the earth and this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you do you believe it knowledge it's time for us to take away all of the flimsy excuses that we continue to give we need high level knowledge high level spiritual knowledge on the specific areas of our lives and destinies so that we do not leave it to chance have you found the keys that make for a robust spiritual life if yes can you list them for me what do i need to do to remain spiritual and on fire hey, go to church be tightened pray no you've not answered the question see this is what spiritual maturity is about if you don't have answers to these questions you it cannot be said that you are matured our welfare department i like to use examples of cooking god has blessed our welfare department with incredible people chefs and you know people who really cook very well and every time i have the privilege of eating their food i am amazed at the level of intention and mastery and artistry that goes into what they are doing and they remind me of how inadequate i am as far as that 
providing that kind of result is concerned but do you know if i mean the reason why i may not be able to cook like them is because i'm not serious about it period do you agree with me the day i mean business and i now say i want to cook like them all of the arsenals that can help me achieve that is already there it will now be me pursuing it with intention and fire do you know the miracle about life people can evolve to superior versions of themselves at the instance of their determination you can start january as a prayerless person you can start as a wordless person but you can make up your mind for some of you tonight can be a time that you make up your mind and say by december 31st there are some things that must have happened in my life my spiritual fire the manifestation of favor i prayed for favor for one month i studied about favor for one month because i didn't want a situation where i become frustrated constrained maybe because of finances and not be able to do what god asked me to do i found out that favor was part of the ingredients required especially for the kind of ministry god was committing to me and i humbled myself to learn because i didn't know anything about it and my goodness when i found it i knew i found it if you are not finding it's because you did not sow the seed of seeking it is only those who seek that find are we together tonight i have brought a word from the depth of my spirit for some of us the way we are moving about our life believe me i do not mean to be a prophet of doom but failure and defeat is almost imminent if you do not change from the path you are taking now you are compromising on you are trivializing the need for knowledge and i've helped to identify one of the major reasons i am young the deception of our generation there is still time i can learn any day i'm too busy uh -uh. i was watching one old koinonia i don't know how the koinonia video came up and someone sent it and i looked at myself i wanted to scream i saw some of the faces here as matured as we thought we were you look at that photo and you want to laugh you say my goodness look at this 10 years from now we'll look at this today what we are doing and still laugh at it again when i came down from the vehicle walking here i was almost going to stand and tears would just come out of my eyes and say my god the time you are playing with now you may not have it again yes you have to go back get your bible shut down on this excessive loss for movies uh, social media useless things that are not profitable for your destiny and open up scripture you can decide to use the remaining october november december this october now your project can be your spiritual growth to cover for my spiritual um my spiritual stuntedness i will obtain grace to be fasting two times a week it may not be so forever but for now you put yourself in that program and you tell yourself i must pray minimum two or three hours every day it's a discipline by the time you begin to grow you are get, you are trying to recover to, to gain time once every week now that maybe for those if they give a little room there's some holiday or whatever it is you maximize that moment ladies and gentlemen this is what we did every opportunity god gave was not a waste it was diligently invested in the last one week how many of you have bought books almost people don't even buy books again whether e-versions or whatever it is no people are not learning there are i will not be surprised if there are believers seated here right now who don't even have bibles you ask them they say i was on my way going somewhere and my bag fell down and every other thing that you lost you bought it back except the bible it just tells you you did not place priority on it i found your word and i did eat it 
it was a joy and a rejoicing to my soul and without him was not anything made that was made some of you here you were more on fire for god while you're on campus than you are now somewhere even fellowship maybe presidents leaders and today everything gone the lord is speaking to you tonight it is time to take your spiritual life and every other aspect of your life serious this is my simple message so we'll not just come and do a miracle service no i just felt to emphasize this please hear me please hear me prayer groups ministries connected here churches go back and emphasize to your members emphasize the need to sit down and use these moments now do not let the fire on your altar go down do not allow gluttony to destroy the grace to fast and pray it's too early for that kind of thing do not allow yourself to get to a point where you are carried away and can i tell you for some of you who have begun to have open doors ministration here and there be careful there is a temptation that happens to people when they begin to go forward it is the temptation of complacency be careful the moment they invite you for one ministration oh preach here preach in this fellowship preach there chances are that the devil can tell you you have arrived why then do you need to pray again learn from jesus after a powerful crusade while it was morning he resorted to a solitary place and there prayed pray for the next level pray for the next level of grace don't compare yourself with people around and say i am better than this one i pray more than this i study more than this i have rem the bible said they comparing themselves with themselves are not wise i want to see koinonia here produce results and that's by the word it is my greatest desire to see everyone i was speaking to my precious people the school of ministry students yesterday and i was telling them do not let anybody look down on you maybe i should use that to wrap up my brief session with you this night do not let anybody ladies and gentlemen please look at me god used my life and god used zaria to teach us and show us that if you take god seriously right from where you are he can take you to the nations are you hearing what i'm saying now this is a word of encouragement for someone don't let no devil lie to you and say there is no ceiling in your house you are staying in one house you are drinking well water so what it is not what happens around you it is the capacity that you are building within your spirit man run away from living a fake life and settle with destiny you may take gary but take it with honor you may have one shirt one trouser no problem take it with honor keep sharpening yourself and tomorrow the nations will stand and call you blessed all of those who have the call of god here seated and outside listening to me let me speak to you do not let anybody despise your grace are you hearing what i'm saying also don't be proud let me balance it because many younger ministers who are rising this cancer of pride repent from it quickly before it tears you like a wild animal oh i can prophesy i called her name i said jane she said yes sit down and, and learn scripture before the devil uses that thing to destroy you oh i was ordained a pastor now i'm a pastor or i'm a prophet or i'm an apostle sit down and learn don't let anybody despise you but also beware when god begins to expose you you can get into the temptation of arrival mentality big man you no longer can kneel before god the way he was before he found you now you are big when you stand god why will i kneel it's not the trouser i wore yesterday that i'm wearing again and god says nonsense let me show you what has happened to people who behave like you most young people don't listen to instructions they don't do anything when the god begins to use them and begins to bless them this pride just comes in no resist it be the young man that wins learn from those who have made these mistakes don't condemn anybody but learn and tell yourself i will get it right 
I will use the scars and the pain of those who have gone ahead of me. And where they have made mistakes, they have been honest enough to show me their scars. I will jump and make it right and get it right. Is God speaking to someone here? Don't just come and sit down in Koinonia just when Joshua Selman is around. It's hypocrisy. You have to open up your heart to Jesus the rabbi who uses any vessel he so pleases to teach you. The day your word can come, it may not come through Joshua Selman. And if you are too big to listen to any other person, then down you go until you join many who have chosen to learn the hard way. Is God speaking to us now? We must commit ourselves in truth and take God seriously. And you must be careful. There are well-meaning, sincere people who would destroy you by giving you an advice. Take it easy. Not at this age. Not at this age. There is a level of aggression you give life. When one door closes, you force another one to open. You don't sit down and hope that things work for you. Is God speaking to us tonight? I, I think I, I see what I'm giving tonight as just instructions. It's like an admonishment. It's not really a, a session. It's me coming to pour my heart to tell you God is giving many of you another chance again. Because the way you are going about your destiny, you are already messing up. And if you continue in that trajectory, you are going to land in trouble. And God is already calling you to order. To say, get your life back. Get your life back. Get your life back. Get your life back. Get your prayer life back. Get your knowledge bank back again. Go and meet your God Jordan. Buy books. The money that you get, buy books and settle down. Get a flash. Let the media department give you these teachings. Go and settle down. They have arranged it for you already. Spiritual life, success, finances, destiny. Go and camp with it. God, why am I here? I'm tired of escorting people around, not knowing where I'm going. Time is going. And whilst you stay in the middle of the night, the voice of his majesty comes. He says, right, I want to show you the blueprint of your destiny now. Everybody who found destiny and found purpose, they did not get it crossing their legs and hoping that God speaks to them. It takes desire. It takes hunger. While others are sleeping, you are awake. Speak, oh God. There are destinies upon my shoulder. Hallelujah. And you are here. In fact, I think this is this is the best place to do an altar call now. Before sit down, sit down. Because in this kingdom, you strike when the iron is hot. Listen, there are some of you here. While you you are hearing me speak now, inside and outside, the Lord Jesus is telling you it's time to take him seriously. You may have been around church, you don't care, you don't send anything, so you say. Can I tell you, a day will come no matter who you are, as Pharaoh, as Herod, days will come when you will not be in control of your situation. It is time to run to Jesus and mean business with him and say lord i come with every sense of contriteness and brokenness it is time to make it right with you and there are others who are saying i just need a rededication and a renewal i think before i continue our time is gone if you belong to that category overflow one and this the main auditorium overflow two and, and overflow three and all the other overflows you can go out to the front of your screen but if you are here right now please leave your seat and run come and stand here if you are in this place now seated don't sit down and be waiting and waiting for someone to come god is calling you get up and run come to jesus that this is the beginning of my life i need to correct this and get things right right now leave your seat and come let's celebrate them as they come please take it serious this is not just the issue of coming before the altar just for a blind altar call this is this is your destiny this is the destiny of your children's children come come don't allow anybody stop you make your way and come those outside the overflows make sure you are moving to your screen overflow three all the overflows run to jesus 
Apostle, I want to come, but I am ashamed. Please stand up and come. This is for your life. This is for your destiny. If you are coming, please run. Run like there's fire on the mountain and come and stand before Jesus. And all of us who are here, please begin to pray. Don't just look at me. Let's pray. Tonight, is, is a, it looks like a chastisement, but the Lord is bringing it out of a heart of love to help us. Before we even pray for those who are here, everyone, please pray for yourself. As you are seated right now, cry before God. It's time to move forward. It's time to make definite progress in my life and destiny. I will never be the same. Touch your grace. My life is changed. I will never be the same. Touch your grace. My life is changed. I, 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 For yourself, we'll soon pray for those who came out. But cry to God for the sake of your destiny. Lord, enough is enough. It's time for my destiny to go forward. It's time to break through the limitations of culture, break through the limitations of witnessing, break through the limitations of all the barriers that stand before me. I am ready to go for knowledge. I am ready to contend for high level spiritual illumination. Hallelujah. Let me make the altar call and then we'll spend five minutes to pray. We have to pray. We have to pray. I salute every one of you who is standing here. All those standing at the overflow, may the Lord bless you. Please lift your right hand if you are here in front. And those following from your screen. And you who is watching in your home or wherever, your home, your office, you are listening. I'd like you to open up your heart. Pray this prayer. You need Jesus. Now is the moment. Today is the day. Please lift your hand, those of you in front, high above your head. I want you to say this passionately. Say after me. Say, Lord Jesus. Tonight, I have heard your word. I hand over my destiny to you. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification i receive forgiveness of sin i receive eternal life into my spirit i receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and i declare that i am a child of god i cut away from everything that takes me back i go forward ever and backward never in the name of jesus now just a moment let me pray for these dear people father thank you so much for our beloved brethren brothers and sisters who have become part of the fold by their confession lord jesus let this be the beginning of a new season for them in the name of jesus i declare that the power of sin satan hell and the grave let it be broken from your life forever any wrong association in your life that will not let you serve God, I cut you away from them. Let tonight be the beginning of a new season for you. In Jesus' name I pray. Hold on. Please everyone hold on in Jesus' name. Now, 
all of you who came out those who are at the overflow and those who are here in the main auditorium very quickly i'd like you to follow our counselors our officials just for a few minutes they'll have your details and you'll rush and come back and join us as we pray please wave your hands you can follow either of the aisles here or here let's celebrate them as they go those outside koinonia is this the best you can do please celebrate them as they go please politely follow the ushers as they lead you just follow them they will have your details very quickly and then you will return follow them they'll get your details and you'll return hallelujah the bible says seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses it says let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us and that we run with perseverance the race that is set before us looking unto jesus who is the author and the finisher of our faith the bible says who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross and even despised the shame are you ready to pray our time is gone but in the next five minutes you are alone with your destiny i want you to cry to the god of heaven and ask him lord visit me give me access to knowledge access to knowledge high level spiritual illumination for the sake of my destiny someone is praying destiny serious when i was a child i spoke like a child i acted like a child i understood like a child he says now that i am a man i lay aside childish things are you praying are you praying? Lift your voice and pray.
tonight Thy kingdom come Thy will be done Hello King Mago Thy kingdom come In my life That's my prayer Hello King Mago Thy kingdom come Thy will be done Hello listen to me. You are going to command everything around your destiny that must change. Declare by the power of the word. It says, and without him was not anything made that was made. Call every dimension of your life that has refused to advance and place the word of God upon it. Declare by the power of the Holy Spirit. I am making advancement. Go ahead and pray. Spiritually, financially, relationally, in the name of Jesus Christ. You are going to pray. Listen to me. The grace of God represents his empowerment upon the life of an individual. It takes the grace of God to be able to do all these things that you seek to do. You are going to cry. It is always at the shout of grace, grace. You are going to cry the grace to get your prayer life back on fire. The grace to stop the cheetah. The grace that tears away spiritual shit from me. I like you to lift your voice and receive Lift your voice and obtain Lift your voice and obtain Last prayer point. First Timothy chapter 4 and verse 15. It said, Meditate on these things. Give yourself wholly to them. 
meditate on these things give yourself wholly to them that thy profiting may appear unto all immerse yourself in it no plan b it is the word of god no option meditate on these things give yourself wholly to them it says your profit with your profiting will appear unto all you are going to turn this scripture into a prayer the grace to plunge yourself into the subject of knowledge spiritual knowledge and i like you to declare that your prophecy will appear unto all lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray meditate on this thing give yourself holy to them that thy prophecy may appear In the name of Jesus, please listen to me. Please listen. Beginning from tonight, I want you to go back with a determination that you are going to take the word of God seriously. Everyone under the sound of my voice, you should get a good USB port. The media can help you. This thing is free get quality teachings go and camp with your destiny you should have an archive of teachings you can get bible on mp3 just play it and you can even sleep and your spirit man is still hearing it while you are sleeping this is the only way it works my dear people obtain grace God gave you a phone it has an alarm clock put your alarm clock 3 30 4 30 5 30 the moment it rings the moment you want to feel tired just remember the generation you are sent to say wake up for us wake up for us wake up for us if not for yourself wake up for us and you obtain grace bow your knees and your heart before god in prayer and start your day with fire continue declaring over your destiny can i tell you this you may not have money you may not have influence but one thing you have is this treasure that cannot be taken away from you lock yourself be a people of prayer be a people of the word culture the things you say don't go around speaking as if you are not born again cursing yourself with wrong words that is how it is for all of us no no i've taught you don't be afraid and ashamed of being controversial you wake up in the morning worship is playing this is the day the lord has made i rejoice and i am glad in it i declare upon this day in the name of jesus you will bring to me the riches and the blessings that came from heaven i decree and declare my life is a blessing today i decree and declare the lands have fallen for me in pleasant places i have a goodly heritage my steps are ordered by the lord you are declaring you stretch some time in the spirit you are praying and you are building capacity in the spirit lay your hands upon the book where you write the things that relate to your destiny lord i may not know how it will come to pass but in the name of jesus all the men you have positioned in my destiny at their strategic timings they will appear without missing a second lord i don't know where i'm going to be whether in lagos whether in london whether in abuja whether in zaria you are the one who knows where i'm going but i declare over my destiny my destiny i'm not the only one looking for you you look for me too two of us must meet somewhere i 
can't be the one looking for you alone also look for me we will meet at the point of prophecy don't get too big to engage the truth of god's word don't pray alone i wish i had time i would have shown you the balance or the imbalance of having a rich prayer life without having a strong prayer bank this is one of the things the devil is using to destroy our generation i believe in prayer you know that but many people use the prayer index as the only index to measure spiritual health so the moment you can pray for five hours standing you think you are matured go and read mark chapter 4 matthew chapter 4 and you will see there that jesus went to pray for 40 days and 40 nights with fasting and when he was done praying and fasting you would think satan would never come to him again because he has prayed satan came immediately after the prayer the only other thing that spoke was it is written when satan came and tempted jesus jesus did not say you are stupid is it that you've not seen me pray he said it is written the prayer was for him it is written is the one that is for satan can i teach you this don't get into that fallacy of exalting your prayer life above and beyond your word life no it's not prayer that created the heavens and the earth is the word now you must embrace the prayer ministry but you must also be students of scripture many pentecostal charismatics are absolutely spiritually ignorant but when it has to do with prayer give them a mic people will pray for hours but no results in their lives because the word content goes down and because we live in a generation that has marketed prayer even above the word people just feel the moment i can pray and i can stretch whether i have understanding or not and you find out those people after five ten years in their utter frustration you will never even believe that they love the lord jesus prayed and fasted but he was full of that word content it would take the union of an equally robust ministry of the word and ministry of prayer go and buy your bible if god can help you to get the text annotated reference bible get it and settle down and don't just read anything you want you open in the morning and it's deuteronomy 9 you just read three verses you will not grow that way that is a child's way of growing if you need to use materials to help you grow that's fine you may want to settle down and say this week i'm studying on faith or better still you can use whatever message is taught to be your study for that week so if for instance we teach on faith that becomes now you have a dual advantage whatever you learn here on friday there is still another fire from sunday abuja koinonia is not for abuja people abuja koinonia is for the koinonia family you should connect and plunge to it with all your heart and listen okay so you are learning on spiritual growth now you go back and use it as a study you're a family man you can decide to use it for your study that week with your family so that whilst the word of god comes you now extend you will see other things the preacher was saying that you did not see you can't remain small that way i'm helping you to fight a life of frustration so that after many years you would not stand and they'll say do you know koinonia you say yes ah bah, we were there check the photos you see my face where are the results to show godliness zero excellence in life zero influence zero fulfillment zero growth zero impact zero and you frustrate yourself to an early grave god is giving you another opportunity tonight he's brought us here again this convergence intended to shape in us go for knowledge go for knowledge in addition to prayer in addition to fasting in addition to kingdom service go for knowledge high level spiritual knowledge and every time you study and you know meditate upon it give yourself holy to it then obtain the grace to obey that's the key deuteronomy chapter 18 and verse 28 and verse 1 
it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord to do and observe all that i command you this day that you shall be exalted above all the nations of the earth and this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you then he begins to list them joshua 1 verse 8 the formula for success this book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth but thou shalt meditate therein day and night in other words consistently that thou mayest observe to do observe to do observe to do not just observe to speak not just observe to learn observe to do all that is written therein he says then not before not during then shall thou make your way prosperous and thou shalt have good success it says now that ye know these things happy are you if you do them father we give you praise for tonight thank you for challenging our hearts you do this because you love us you do this as a token of your commitment to our lives and our destinies lord we remain determined by the spirit we remain intentional even by the spirit to see to it that we live the fullness of our destinies based on the standard you have set for us i have brought your words to your people tonight charging their hearts and charging us all together to go for knowledge and to place premium on spiritual information lord i pray that everyone who is a hearer of this that the truth you have heard will not judge you tomorrow in the name of jesus christ that the truths that you have heard tonight will not stand against your destiny tomorrow in the name of jesus before we go can we speak in one minute over the miracle service tomorrow just declare wherever you are let's sow that seed of prayer that there will be such a manifestation of the power and the grace of god let the sick be healed let yokes be taken away let burdens be removed that god himself will transform lives afresh again Pray for everyone who is coming those traveling from far and near that god will grant them very marvelous visitations by the spirit for in jesus name i god sent me to not only teach and to preach but to use the power of the prophetic for the rising of people there are many people who do not know the power of the prophetic that is the assignment of the anointing to empower men i'm going to speak over your life and you'll be surprised to see the things that start happening they are not empty words they are words that are backed up with the anointing of the holy spirit in the name of jesus christ koinonia all who are connecting connected and are following in the name of jesus i decree and declare from this night i declare begin to step into a strange order of abundance i release you into a strange and superior order of wealth a strange order of financial blessings in the name of jesus christ i don't care what it has been like from the family you came from the economic situation you might be facing now, whether in debt, whether suffering all kinds of financially related issues, in the name of Jesus, arise and shine. In the name of Jesus, arise and shine. Arise and shine financially. In the mighty name of Jesus. I declare over every ministry going through financial pain and tension, Every family going, I'm sensing a strong anointing. I'm praying upon you. Every ministry, every organization, every business, I decree and declare beginning from now, may these spiritual forces start working for you. By reason of these forces activated, I declare over your job, may it begin to produce maximally. I declare over your business endeavor may it begin to produce maximally I declare over your investments may they produce maximally and I declare over the men 
that have been sent by God to stand with you and stand by you, I declare enjoy their ministry from tonight. You hear me? By reason of this teaching tonight, every spirit of poverty and lack and failure, every cause of stagnation, parakatosh, balakosh, balata, I declare they lose their hold over your destiny now. They lose their hold over your destiny now. Hear me? I pray for every pastor and every church connecting in the name of Jesus. Even in this supposed global recession, you will not beg. You will not lack. You will not be in want. In the name of Jesus Christ. Help them please. Every ministry here that loves God and yet you are going through all kinds of financial tension. That projects do not seem, projects have been halted. Whether structural projects, transformative projects, halted because of the absence of financial resources. I declare, as these forces come into play, step into a new season of supplies. And for every family here that has suffered poverty and lack and financial you know failure in the name of Jesus because you came here tonight may my God begin with you and wipe the tears of your family members I said may my God begin with you and wipe the tears of your family members let me pray one last time I just feel led in my spirit to pray for widows widowers orphans all those who their physical support system seem to have gone away from them maybe the breadwinner of the family has passed on or maybe there's some kind of issue in the family and right now it looks like those that are around are incapacitated in the name of jesus i declare that as these forces begin to work themselves let poverty be driven far from your life far from your family in the name of Jesus Christ. And everyone who has mismanaged financial resources to your detriment, you've lost money, you've had all kinds of things, you've been downsized because you still have access to these forces. I decree and declare the same way the hair of Samson grew back. I speak to your finances, it must grow back. I speak to your finances, it must grow back. Wave your hands and give Jesus praise. Lord, how they are they increased that trouble me? Many are they that rise up against me. Verse 2. Many there be which say of my soul, there is no help for you in God. Verse 3. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory, and the lifter up of my head. Are you ready to pray? Say in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that nothing keeps my head down. In this season, I am lifted supernaturally. Lift your voice and begin to pray. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory, the lifter up of my head. in the name of Jesus. 
In the name of Jesus. Acts chapter 12. Please give it to us quickly. Acts chapter 12. From verse 4. The Bible says that Peter was kept in prison. And the Bible says they kept him in prison. Intending that after Easter, they would bring him out so that the people would kill him. Verse 5. Peter therefore was kept in prison. But prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. What happened? And when Herod would have brought him forth the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains and the keepers before the door that kept the prison. Verse 7. The Bible says, And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and light shined in the prison, and they smote Peter on the side, and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And the chains fell off from his hand. Verse 8. And the angel said unto him, Guard thyself, and bind up thy sandals. And so he did. And he said unto him, Cast thy garment before thee, and follow me. Verse 9. The Bible says, And he went out and followed him, and wist not that it was true which was done by the angel. But he saw as though he was in a vision. 10. Hmm. And when they were past the second, the first gate, there were three gates. The first gate brought him out of the prison. The second gate was midway. And the Bible says they came onto the iron gate that led to the city. Listen to me. This is the gate that stops visibility. There is a gate that stops the visibility of men. It says the gate leads to the city. Your business can be there, but there is an iron gate. Listen. And the Bible says that the gate opened on its own accord. When that gate opens, the next thing you see is the city. It's the gate that controls influence. Are you ready to pray? In the name of Jesus, every gate standing my way of influence and visibility, I declare be broken right now. Lift your voice and pray. He has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in thunder. He has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in thunder. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Listen to me. We are going to pray against delay. It was the delay of the bridegroom that made the oil of others to finish. If the bridegroom came early, all ten of them will see him. They all had oil, but because the bridegroom delayed, the oil of others finished and they missed out. You are going to pray. Lord, bring speed to my destiny. Bring speed to my life. Lift your voice and pray. Speed to my life. Speed to my destiny. Speed to my life. Speed to my destiny. Speed to my business. Speed to my career. Someone is praying. Pray, pray, outside, pray, online, pray, make the peace in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. 
in the name of Jesus. We are still praying over speed. Look at me. Listen. The unit of destiny is time. God can bring you help speedily. Are we together now? Yes. We are going to pray. The Bible says, And the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah. And Elijah ran on barefoot and overtook the chariots of Ahab down to Israel. We are going to pray. Lord, bring speed to my life. Bring speed to my life. Lift your voice and begin to prophesy. Speed, speed, speed. Someone prophesy. Someone declare. Speed to my destiny. Speed to my destiny. Speed to my destiny. Speed to my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalm 125, verse 3. Psalm 125, verse 3, please. The Bible says, The rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous. Why? Lest the righteous put their hands in iniquity. The rod of the wicked. You are going to command every finger of darkness and evil over your life, your family, your children. You are going to command it to give way. Are you ready? Lift your voice and pray. The rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the love of the righteous. Hallelujah. 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 Job chapter 5, please. Job chapter 5 and verse 19. We are praying. Please take this prayer serious. Job chapter 5 and verse 19. Are you ready to read? Want to read with me? He shall deliver thee in six troubles. Yea, in seven shall no evil touch you. Number one. Next verse, please. In famine. He shall redeem thee from death and in war from the power of the sword. Next verse. Thou shalt be hid from the scourging tongues of men. Neither shalt thou be afraid of destruction when it cometh. At destruction and famine, thou shalt laugh. Neither shalt thou be afraid of the beast of the earth. Why? Listen. It says, For thou shalt be in covenant with the stones of the field. That means nobody can use any element of creation to make enchantments against me. You use sand, you, I, I have a covenant with the elements of creation that they will not fight me because I was given dominion over them. Say in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, no enchantment, no divination against my life and my destiny shall try. Lift your voice and pray. I am in covenant. I am in covenant. I am in covenant with the stone. I am in covenant. I am in covenant with the stone. I am in covenant with the stone. I am in covenant with the stone. Hallelujah. 
the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Second Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 16. Second Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 16. Please read with me. Are you ready? One to read. Now the Lord of peace himself give you peace. How long? Always. By all means. If it means clearing the troublemakers out of the way, by all means. If it means making a way, by all means. Lift your voice and say, Lord, by all means, give me peace. 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 By all means, Hallelujah. Isaiah 61. Isaiah 61. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of prison to them that are bound. There are people physically, you see them moving. But in the realm of the spirit, the Bible says that they are bound. Next verse. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. To comfort all that mourn in Zion. Verse 3. It says to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called the trees or the oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. Verse 4. I receive it for myself. It says, and they shall build the old waste. They shall raise up the former desolations and shall repair the waste cities and desolations of many generations. Verse 5. And strangers... This is where we are getting to. You don't need to know who will help you. Strangers. And strangers shall stand and feel. Listen, listen, listen. Strangers shall stand and feed your flock. It says, and the sons of aliens or foreigners shall be your plowmen. This was what happened to a man called Mephibosheth. The Bible says, and David said, is there any man in the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? And they called a man called Ziba who had 15 sons. The Bible says he sent him to Lodeba. He said there is a crippled man called Mephibosheth. Go and fetch the man, the king said. When he came, he said, although you are crippled, even Mephibosheth said, am I a dog that the king will be sending for me? He said the children of Ziba would plow the land for him. He said, but as for you, Mephibosheth, you will eat with me at my table here forever. Keep that scripture there. Listen, this scripture is a deliverance scripture. Stop thinking the miracle will come through the person you know. It's none of your business how God will bring you the breakthrough. Stop troubling your uncle, your auntie. Every time you are saying, God, visit me, your mind is going to a particular person. That real estate man. Leave God to decide who, like a movie director. Let him decide who will come with the blessing. Are you ready to pray? Make decrees in this season. Strangers are feeding my flock. Strangers are feeding my flock. The sons of Elia are coming to bless me. Hell, prepare blessings rising from everywhere. 
Hallelujah. Two prayer points and we are done. Are you ready to pray? We are going to pray for Nigeria. How many of you know that we owe a responsibility to pray for this nation? You see the happenings around this nation? The church should not be silent. It's not about going around to make all kinds of unguarded statements. Our assignment is to pray. Pray like believers with intelligence. He said, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper who love you. We are going to pray. We cannot fold our arms and allow the devil to continue to destroy people. You heard the testimony of our dear auntie here. The precious daughter just came out of the, her school. And these wicked, evil people entered a car. And that's how they carried her. Killed other innocent people. Whoever digs a pit for you, I stand by my God and I declare they must enter that pit. Hallelujah. Now listen. Haman was plotting the annihilation of the Jews. And he was clearly cooperating with Vashti. And God needed to remove Vashti. And when God brought Esther, Esther forgot her assignment. And she was enjoying the palace. And Mordecai sent a warning. That warning is for all of us. Every time you hear trouble somewhere, don't say it's still far. Don't make the mistake of Esther. Mordecai said, do not think when they are done with us from afar, you will be spared. The moment you hear that there is trouble anywhere, you owe a responsibility to stay the power of hell. Don't just say, I am secured. Esther knew that if she kept quiet, one day they would discover she were a Jew and they would kill her. And she took the risk. I'm going to meet the king. Even without his invitation. If I perish, I perish. One of the things I'm praying and trusting that God will do to the body of Christ. Is to help us to rise to that point of maturity. Where we are able to take the corporate burden of the body. Even if personally there is nothing wrong with us. Are we together? When you hear that there is an accident. You don't just say, oh, the members of my church were protected. It is a cry for everybody. Are we together now? You must be able to hide your individualism so that the corporate good of the body will speak. So just because nothing happened to your business during the pandemic, just because you are okay, just because you have security forces around your house, does not mean you should negate the fact that our nation needs help. As responsible believers, part of the ministry of priesthood is to stand and midwife deliverance. And say, no, Lord, it cannot happen, not in our lifetime. This kind of evil that plagued the nations, we must stand as priests. Are we together? Hmm. For a very long time, we have been largely very selfish. Once trouble does not come near you, you read the news and say, oh, that's fine. It is them. Once it is not your child that is kidnapped, no problem. That's not the time to pray morning and evening. That's the time to pray anyhow and anytime. Because you are in a season. Your anchor will be your prayer. Hallelujah. Day and night, you are praying. Lord, I don't know what is happening to my life, but I'm praying. Zakataba, kataba, ladaba. You have your prayer time in the morning. You have your prayer time in the evening. But every time is prayer time. Every time is prayer time. An evil report. Your wife just lost her child. What are you doing? I am praying. Why? I'm in a season. Is any man afflicted? James chapter 5 and verse 13. Let him pray. Let him pray pray not let him discuss not let him grumble around not let him call god names and say i will backslide let him pray psalm 34 please 
from verse 4 to 7 and then the last part and we will pray psalm 34 i sought the lord and he heard me and delivered me from what all my fears next verse we are reading to four to seven they looked unto him and were lightened and their faces were not ashamed six the poor man cried and the lord heard him and saved him out of how many all his troubles last verse the angel of the lord encampeth around them that fear him and delivereth them prayer is a powerful weapon in all seasons but especially this season lord what is happening around my life my wife just got attacked my son just got attacked my job just got attacked i am not understanding what is happening i set myself like daniel onto prayer god grants you grace you can add with fasting add with fasting this spiritual laziness of eating anyhow anytime many believers now fast as a ceremony three days fasting you carry it on your head as if you as if it's, it's 12 years fasting if you love food more than your destiny life will cheat you again and again food is okay oh, but please let me tell you mighty ones you must learn to show food that your spirit man has grown above it there are many of you here you cannot remember i may be wrong i'm not saying you should do it please i'm not saying you should do it but as far as i'm concerned there are spiritual levels that if you get to a week should never pass that you did not fast you are joking you are joking not with what you are doing to hell you are joking seven days ah no himarama <laughs> Imarama Imarama To the king who sits on the throne Imarama To the king Listen, let me tell you this I will continue to teach you this secret real victory real victory in prayer is gotten while men sleep real victory is not gotten shouting around just making noise real men of power contact power when men sleep may god give you the grace to rise above sleep i'm praying from the may god give you the grace to not allow sleep cheat you that god can wake you up in the night no light off the light you are praying don't allow distractions you are praying the next thing you see one of your trousers and it's enough to distract off the light you can use your phone light. You are in the night alone. And watch what happens. You are nobody seeing what you are doing. But there is a register. Every day you are signing. It is the day you get to the stage to preach. That's when God will not disappoint you. don't come on stage and talk nonsense lion of the tribe of judah rose of sharon lily of the valley rose of this and that and that god is not a scammer he's not a magician no track record in the secret place you will flatter yourself to nothing in it in the open please learn to pray in the night 
learn to pray in the night learn to pray in the night receive grace to dedicate night times and pray god didn't give you a house just to keep things turn everywhere to a prayer altar turn your toilet to a prayer altar turn your living room to a prayer altar when everyone has gone off the television don't pray watching a film even if it's a christian movie you are not praying shut it down lord this is me and you here i don't know what is happening to my life a time will come you feel like just leaning get up and say satan you're a liar i'm going far a time will come your tongues begin to change what you are saying it will never be what you started with you have you, you have entered a level in the spirit tongues are languages and there are levels of power contact groanings that cannot be uttered you get to a point in the spirit where you begin to pray there are times that only one word one phrase will come out of your mouth for minutes pray it you are receiving power is not something you do in a group so that people will see you and think you're a prayer warrior don't joke with your destiny like that don't joke with your destiny like that the bible says to enter and shut the door behind you shut the door behind you and pray to your father who is in secret you don't need to have a prayer point you don't need to have a prayer point just stay there and begin to pray Shekas kaparakatos, embrekete keleka takatos, shikos kamanakata. And while you are praying, your flesh is weak, but your spirit is willing. can i tell you this there is a level of fire you bring on any attack in your life it must give way it must give way fire is an emblem of the spirit is one of the emblems of revival is one of the emblems that show that the spirit is in a place fire does not only refine fire is for judgment there are times you need to stay like a priest upon the watch my brother and my sister if you pray from your heart some things will shift you will wake up in the morning and know i shifted this through prayer there are attacks that only prayer can challenge pray for me pray for me is wonderful but you must become the priest of your destiny can someone just blast in tongues for just one or two minutes Salamakata. Senakandas Kamahasabash. Rakata Pakato Sopokoto Sheketelekata. Emprata Seneketo Shanikata. Sasete Shanahas Kabaratos. Reketeketekete Kabarakatos. Unto him that answers prayer shall all flesh come. Lord, I'm in a season of my life. I cannot afford to be lazy. I'm in a season of my life. I cannot allow my prayer life go down. It's too risky. Not for this season. Not for this season. This is the wrongest time to be prayerless. This is the wrongest time to be prayerless. Oh, take away slumber from my eyes. Take away slumber, oh God. There are scores to settle in the realm of the spirit. 
there are things to shift in the realm of the spirit there are things to align in the realm of the spirit i need to legislate spiritual realities while men slept while men slept the enemy came and saw tears Pray. Pray. Outside, pray. Through the king, who sits upon the rival. Through the king, who sits upon the rival. Shela bakata rekotosia imarama eh imarama eh imarama to the king who sits on the throne imarama. To the king who sits on the throne. Eshenabalala. Ele, 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 ele. Ela barata katosha brada katela katosh. Ekata braka toska ne kata brasha na kata. Kauze se ne katosha la toske mahasa. Woe to them who are ease in Zion. Woe to them who are ease in Zion. To the king who sits upon the white horse. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are praying. Psalm 125. Prayer gives you stamina to pass through seasons. Jesus prayed, otherwise, you would have given up. He said, Peter, Satan desired to sift you like wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. And when you are converted, use the same strategy to strengthen, strengthen. Pray, I say, strengthener. They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but abided forever. Next verse. As the mountains are around Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people from henceforth even forever. Next verse. For the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous lest the righteous put his hands in iniquity. Next verse. Do good, O Lord, unto those that be good and to them that are upright in their hearts. We are reading till the last verse. As for such as turn aside in their crooked ways, the Lord shall lead them forth with the workers of iniquity. But peace upon Joshua Selman. Prayer gives you stability. In the next two, three minutes, you are going to pray and say, Lord, let this prayer stabilize me. I shouldn't be shaking over everything. I should be able to laugh at certain storms and say, Jesus is Lord. Lift your voice and pray. Stability, power, stamina. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is the strength of my life.
in the name of Jesus shout it say in the name of Jesus tonight I stand on behalf of myself and my family and I declare that every altar that is speaking against my destiny I tear it down tonight lift your voice and pray Separate to God, so to us. I tear it down. All that of delay, all that of barrenness, all that of failure. Rata to go to me, let it be. Let me let it go, so to me. yourselves to two find find a partner and hold a hand be serious please if the person by your side is not serious leave him alone was doing serious business tonight find a partner and hold a hand say after me in the name of jesus say it again in the name of jesus Every legal, every legal access I have given, I have given for, these for these altars to speak against me yes. knowingly yes. and unknowingly yes. tonight yes. I invoke the blood 
let the blood speak lift your voice and begin to pray every legal access every legal access every legal access i have given any altar of darkness even the lawful captives shall be delivered even the lawful captives shall be delivered even the lawful captives shall be delivered Hallelujah. Hold the hands of someone else. Look for another partner. Hold the hands of someone else. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Say it again in the name of Jesus. Altars of poverty. Altars of delay. Altars of failure. I speak to you. In the name of Jesus, I tear you down. Release my destiny. Release my destiny. Altars of poverty. Altars of delay. Altars of stagnation. I speak against you. I speak against you. I cost you by the God of heaven. By the God of heaven. Hallelujah. We are really praying tonight. I'm seeing blood dripping on people. God is bringing so many miracles in people. We are still praying, please. We are still praying. Shalapakaya. We are still praying. Skatabariasa. I see altars on fire. We are still praying. We are making real contact with the realm of the spirit. Hallelujah. 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 Say in the name of Jesus. Altars that are territorial in nature. Fighting my destiny. Because of where I'm coming from, I prophesy tonight your hold is broken over my life. Lift your voice and pray. Altars associated with territories, associated with territories, I come against you by the God of heaven. I come against you. Pray, pray. I come against you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please help those under the anointing. Hallelujah. Listen, there are some of you, your prayers were answered since many years. 
but it looks like it has not manifested because every time it's reaching you an altar lifts up we're going to call it back are you ready to pray self time in the name of jesus every delayed blessing that should have happened in my life and was delayed because of these altars tonight by prophecy i call you back to my life lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray and watch the god of wonders on for the god of heaven and watch restoration happen in your destiny restore relationships restore finances restore mandates restore ministries Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are going to call the name of your family members. Listen, I don't care how many, call it. Listen, you are going to call them one by one and say, I stand as an altar and I bring you out of this dungeon. Lift your voice and pray. Call them. Call them. Call them. Mention them by name. Call them. I bring you out of this wasteful living. Call them. Shake the man out of my confidence. And take the second to shoot. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus. Be serious. Say it again in the name of Jesus. I speak to the east. I speak to the west. I speak to the north. I speak to the south. Everywhere my favor is in the name of Jesus, I command it to my life now. Lift your voice and pray. You don't have to travel, call it everywhere it is. Hallelujah. I want you to pray. Listen. I want you to pray 
and talk to God. Tell him, Lord, I'm part of this apostolic family. The altar you have erected here must speak for me. I want my life to show it from today. Lift your voice and pray. Pray with understanding and watch what happens to you. Pray with understanding. Pray with understanding. Pray with understanding. Lord, I inform the altar that you have with your servant. Pray with understanding. Pray with understanding. I declare it. hallelujah many of you may not realize what is happening to you please i don't want you to idolize this teaching no it's not about religiosity it's about proper understanding and application so it's not just coming to lie down here that, no 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 the altar is a revelation we are going to pray right now and activate back our prayer lives listen because many of us here the only time you pray is when you are together with people satan started attacking you he gave himself a five-year plan to attack your prayer life he will never attack it at once he can give himself a five-year plan and be destroying you say in the name of jesus i decree and declare that the spirit of prayer and supplication the grace to pray I receive it right now lift your voice and begin to pray fire fresh fire on my altar fresh grace to pray fresh grace to fast fresh grace to intercede for warfare, I command every dead prayer life around my life. Come back to life. Come back to life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One last prayer point and I will pray for you. There are many of us, the Spirit of God started revealing things to you because you were meeting with Him every day. But something happened, no more visitation of the secret place and that portal closed over your life. No access to illumination. You used to be, you used to have projects that you and God are on. You can literally say we are on a faith project. But now there's nothing like that. Your life has become stale and barren. Some of you is when you started ministry. This, this so-called thing called ministry. That's what destroyed you. We are going to pray a prayer of restoration. And the fire will fall upon you. I'd like you to pray. Say in the name of Jesus. Say it again in the name of Jesus. Say Holy Spirit. I ask that you manifest yourself once again in my life holy spirit i cry for intimacy afresh with you lift your voice and begin to pray intimacy spirit of the living god do not be far from me again pray pray let it not be that you are just a stranger we were closer than this and something happened Restore that intimacy. Restore that sweet fellowship that I once had with you. Fellowship that nothing in this world could be compared. 
Hallelujah. Please lift your hands. I tell you, there will be there will be testimonies upon testimonies. I pray for you now. I'm praying for you. In the name that is above all names. Everyone hearing me and standing here, whether inside or outside, you have prayed. If there is any altar as I speak now that is speaking against your life, at the count of three, I command those altars to catch fire right now. Please get ready. The power of God will come on people. One, two, three. I command those altars now. Be broken. Be broken. Be broken. Be broken. I command those altars be broken. Be broken. Listen. Lift your hands. I'm challenging altars of failure. Listen. Just I'm praying for you. Don't pray. Just listen to me. Because I'm seeing people here. Failure. It has nothing to do with academics. It makes you fail in everything. I stretch my hands. May that fire anyone here who is a victim, that altar is speaking. I stand by the rod of a higher priesthood and I judge those altars now. I judge those altars now. I judge those altars now. I judge those altars now by fire. I judge those altars now. There are altars that cause men to see things and never handle it. You see a job, they tell you it's yours. Quarter to reception, everything changes. I don't know who belongs to that category, but in the name of Jesus, inside and outside, following online, anyone who has been a victim of total failure and disappointment right now in the name of Jesus that fire comes upon you in the name of Jesus that fire comes upon you in the name of Jesus I command total deliverance help them, help them please total deliverance in the name of Jesus Christ put down your hands ladies keep your hands lifted I will tell you why I am praying for you there are many ladies let me tell you many people don't know why things don't work especially for ladies it's not because you are ladies and it's not because you are bad it's because many ladies are spiritually ignorant of what they represent in the realm of the spirit a lady is not just another human being who is not a man no it's more than that a lady is the chiefest point of entrance even among men that's why she has a womb the only lady a lady is a gate in the realm of the spirit it's not just a human being keep your hands lifted that's why demons look for them that's why spirits look for them that's why altars speak against them it may not be caused by you but i'm praying for you keep your hands lifted you may not understand what is happening lord jesus i'm praying now that any one of our sisters here whose family and destiny is under siege I'm declaring anyone who made a covenant with the earth for your destiny anyone who passed through fire to make a covenant with your destiny in the name that is above all names I decree and declare upon every lady now be free in the name of Jesus be free in the name of Jesus from those yokes those yokes that cause fibroid those yokes that cause fibroid those yokes that cause lungs around your body those lungs those bodiness I cause it by the God of heaven I cause it by the God of heaven Hallelujah.
hallelujah i'm seeing 11 ladies the lord is opening my eyes listen now i'm seeing rings on all their 10 fingers and this is a very serious demonic case and the lord wants to set them free now you will not know it is not something you know one of you used to see it physically you see rings on your hands in the name of jesus 11 people ladies especially i'm praying now some are inside some are outside doesn't matter where you are the lord is asking me to stretch my hands lord i pray whoever came into this meeting whether online offline and belongs to that category in the name of jesus as i'm praying now i command i'm praying now the fire will fall on certain people 11 in all i see lord let it be right now i i break that marriage i break that spiritual marriage i break that spiritual marriage my god my god my god my god i break that spiritual marriage there's one of them you should have married but this is what stops everybody that comes around you i command it broken right now 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 hallelujah our time is gone the lord is asking me to minister to someone here somebody comes to you in the night physically i'm not talking of vision physically you feel somebody lying down around your bed sometimes sleeping with you you are feeling it this is not guesswork this is something you know is happening wherever that person is right now in jesus name i stretch my hands there is no escape in the name of jesus whether inside or outside you are in this category now i command judgment judgment on any strange spirit judgment on any stranger judgment on any stranger in the name of jesus christ hallelujah praise the lord I don't know but we're rounding up please just just be patient with me i'm hearing in my spirit yoruba people yoruba people there is there is something a deliverance that god is bringing now to yoruba people you know how god acts as i'm speaking now everyone associated with that territory i place the word of god now in the name of jesus let that sword of deliverance i command that double-edged sword to locate everyone from the southwestern part now who is in need of territorial deliverance i command it now inside and outside in the name of jesus no escape no escape for any power of darkness yeah. no, no, no. Yeah. Na 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 Every mark of this favor that is on anyone's life here you watch what happens to your life from this meeting anyone carrying any mark of this favor where men should bless you something about you becomes an irritation i command that mark to be erased from your life now ah, i command that mark to be erased from your life now I command that mark to be erased from your life now. I command that mark to be erased from your life now. I command that mark to be erased from your life now. I'm watching what is happening from the spirit realm, not the physical realm. When you see me keep praying, it's because God is doing something. I command that mark to be erased from your life now. I say it again, I command that mysterious mark to be erased from your life right now.
anyone here who has any member of your family that has refused to give birth they have tried and tried and the devil would just not let them have a child either she will not take in completely or she would take in and then mysteriously lose the child or the man will not be able to get her pregnant i don't care what situation but please even if you are not the one standing for them i'm praying distance is no barrier i stretch my hands now and i decree by the altar of prayer we authorize angelic assistance to those people right now we authorize angelic assistance right now hear me it was an angel that came to assist mary to get pregnant he showed up and said i was sent your own is to just agree and she said be it unto me and she got pregnant i declare and declare that any manifestation and encounter that they need to go through to have their child i command it to happen now in the name of jesus let me pray finally for your finances i believe in god's people empowered there is no triumph when everything around your life is not working i want to speak because some of you are titus some of you are sowers some of you bless honor god's house but simply because of certain systems that manifestation can happen as laziness that manifestation can happen as disfavor everywhere in the name of jesus i decree and declare nobody here is too young to prosper don't listen to that nonsense nobody here i'm not talking of business i'm not talking of a job i'm talking of a system in the spirit where god will lift you in a way that will make you afraid i decree and declare now as i'm praying for you i'm also praying for families because there are families that need help as a matter of emergency i pray that the demon sitting on the financial destiny of anyone here sitting on the financial destiny of any family i clear it out of the way right now i clear it out of the way right now i clear it out of the way right now i clear it out of the way right now in the name of jesus christ listen listen i've shared with you my encounter i've seen that spirit that they call mammon i've seen it i've shared it here some years ago when i was praying and all of a sudden my ceiling disappeared and all of a sudden i saw a giant creature like him as tall as a mango tree standing looking like um like 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 a dinosaur a sea creature with a tail and the tail was another living thing on its own it could detach from that creature and move and the eyes were as big as a human head two red fierce eyes and he was looking at me and he said so you think you can bring god's people into blessings and that was the end of the encounter that was it was that day i knew that wealth is spiritual it's not about what you do it's about what is backing you you can do everything to a bow there must be a spirit assisting you i call for the ministry of the holy spirit over your finances and i command extraordinary results from today i command strange results from today i command strange favors from today i command strange results from today strange encounters with destiny help us in the name of jesus christ i want you to wave your hands to jesus name of Jesus I decree and declare right now every devil of darkness that has plagued anyone watching by television watching by the internet from our Zaria family our global family all the overflows down to this auditorium in the name of Jesus Christ and by the power that raised Christ from the dead I command that spirit to give way now I decree and declare every sickness heart conditions be healed now yeah. cancer be healed now 
HIV, be healed now. Kidney conditions, lung conditions, be healed now. Blood related conditions, be healed now. Eye conditions, be healed now. Ear conditions, be healed now. Everyone here who has been bound by any spirit, I lose you now. I lose your family now. I lose every member of your family now. Anyone here and those watching who has been appointed unto death, in the name of Jesus Christ we declare, the fullness of your days you fulfill. And anyone here who is particularly in ministry serving the purposes of the kingdom from tonight I forbid you from being barren as you communicate the gospel in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ with great power you will bear witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ genotypes every negative genotype be changed right now in Jesus name barrenness be healed now hepatitis be healed now pile be healed now peptic ulcer be healed now bone related conditions be healed now Those who are watching from any hospital or any point where you have a patient, let the power of God on this resurrection day move through the airwaves and touch that person right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now let me pray for you. For all of you who are here from today, I stand in the name of Jesus and I empower your hands. I release you as proof producers. I release you as miracle workers. I release you as signs and wonders. In ministry, in business, in career. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, from today, you will no longer wait until you come for koinonia. Become an extension of these possibilities. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, let me challenge you. When you go back home, go and meet those who are sick and take a step of faith and lay your hands on them. Don't say, I cannot do it. Lay your hands. If your loved ones tell you, just remember, I have been raised up with Christ. Just remember, the Spirit of God lives in me. That the resurrected king has resurrected everything in me. I am in every way supernatural. When someone tells you I am going through something. Don't just say meet apostle. Don't just say come for koinonia. Beyond that. Take a step of faith. You are an ambassador. A validator. A witness. Carry this mentality today. By the power that raised Christ from the dead. Hear me. Everything that has tied you that came from your physical paternity, limitations that came from your biological father, biological mother, or your physical territory, I stand by the honor and the privilege of the apostolic and the prophetic. I break you from it now. Help them, please. I break you from it now. I break you from it now. I break you from it now. Every spirit that makes easy things difficult. You saw this with your father. You saw this with your mother. You saw this with your siblings. 
sincerely you have not been able to break through in the name of Jesus I come by the rod of a higher priesthood and I declare in the name of Jesus I push you to the next season of destiny help that man please in the name of Jesus Christ hear me everything that has covered your glory so that you are covered nothing about you can be seen Makatosh Kadia Embrekete Seketa by the power that raised Christ from the dead I tear that veil right now hear me where your physical father cost you I stand by priesthood to bless you anyone by your physical descent who said it will not be well with you I stand by the privilege of the apostolic call I reverse that statement 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 anyone who said it will not be well with you in the name of Jesus by the privilege of the apostolic and the prophetic I veto that statement and I cancel it please pay attention don't be distracted the spirit that insists that you must remain poor and beggarly in spite of your hard work in spite of educational qualification or you rise up and then you go down some of you see good things but you never lay hold of it in the name of Jesus and by the power of the prophetic I decree and declare between now and the next three months step into prepared blessings 90 days if I be a servant of God I stand by this apostolic mantle in the next three months step into prepared blessings jobs you did not apply for houses you did not build I speak this by the God who called me hear me every inherited battle they fought your father to his grave they fought your mother to his grave now they will not give you peace I help them please in the name of Jesus now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace always and by all means always and by all means inherited financial battles inherited family battles inherited career battles they come to an end now my God I wish God could open your eyes to see what is happening in this place I'm hearing the month of August that there are people between now and August hear me between now and August I stand by Bakatos Katia. Help the help her, please, so she doesn't injure herself. What could not be done throughout 2020, throughout 2021, and even till now, in the name of Jesus, I declare between now and August, step into it, step into it, step up, Bakatos, step into it. Let me prophesy recovery. You have lost money. You have lost friends. You have lost opportunities. You have lost relationships. You mishandled favorable opportunities and it slipped your hand. Is there hope for a tree even if it be cut short? The Bible says at the scent of water, I want to speak over your life. In the name of Jesus, I have been commanded to bless Therefore, I decree and declare everything that has left your life 
and it's not by divine orchestration I call it back now finances be restored relationships be restored spiritual fire be restored in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus now hear me every parent here physical parent now who is struggling with your child in one area it looks like the devil wants to wage war over your family and some of you have been depressed asking Lord is this how I'm going to die no responsible child to rise up some of you even the child the devil is fighting to make sure you don't even have the child in the name of Jesus I'm speaking to our global family first and then to the body of Christ no one connected to this grace will have a cause to regret over their children therefore by this prophetic word we release ministering spirits to homes to schools everywhere your child is in the name of Jesus may they come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ may they be transformed may they become responsible children in the name of Jesus Christ please wave your hands to Jesus and give him all the praise Amen Amen We've been commanded to bless it cannot be reversed Amen Amen One more time let me encourage every parent if God can grant you grace I know it is not easy but if God can grant you grace use this week and speak over your children men you are the priest over your home while your wife and children are sleeping get up in the night praying in tongues and walking around the house laying hands on them tell them don't worry I'm praying for you you just keep sleeping and take authority over the spiritual climate of your family stand like the priest that you are and say satan thus far have you come i have drawn a line over this family you have no business over my wife my children my husband and so on and so forth in the name of jesus christ for someone your season of shame and reproach has come to an end finally how do you know the controlling powers over territories look at me you study the controlling powers over territories by looking at the prevalent patterns that are within that territory you can know the spirits that control territories and please hear me if you're a minister of the gospel hear this and learn this so that when god sent you to a territory you don't just go and get a building or build and start you have to understand what you are confronting there are territories where you don't find old people there. You get to a certain age range, there is a spirit that cuts you off. There are territories where you don't find children. You find very old people, but they renew their lives with children. There are territories where it is the women that feed the men. Once you are within that territory, as a woman, you are the man, and the man is the woman. Born again, tongue talking but you find out that the men are limited the house is paid for by the woman don't feel bad i'm not i'm not trying to look down on you but it ought not to be so that is not god's order are we together now there are families where the parents are always greater than the children you can give birth to eight children the highest of them will become something you are not proud of saying 
no matter how hard working have you seen people travel to america after 10 20 years they return back like arm robbers they look like the spirit of the city there are cities you enter and you can remember everything from when you were a child nothing changed regardless and in that city they will tell you the best professor came out from that city in the best the it people people come out from that city to bless the world and yet the city does not change there are spirits that keep it yes sir how about spirits of poverty you hear that someone was doing well and just came to a city and he starts going down until he looks like the city You want to become an intercessor? Yes. This also applies to families. There are families where things don't work. Please don't. I hope you understand what I'm teaching you now. Yes. Father was educated and serious. Mother was educated and serious. All the children graduates. Grandchildren graduates and yet nobody can have a decent job the most successful person the longest person who worked there worked only three years go and read your bible now i hope you understand what i'm teaching you now i'm not trying to get you emotional if i mention a case that relates to yours i hope you understand that i'm just teaching generally do we understand now there are families, for instance, where the greatest people who represent the strength of that family always die. The moment someone gets a job with NMPC and he says, glory be to God, he dies. So you find a territory with weak people. All the people that have the strength to bring deliverance, there is a spirit that comes to cut them short. You are not an intercessor if you do not understand the burden of the territory. What are you praying over? you don't just listen an intercessor does not say god give people jobs oh god give people children that's a child's prayer you come to the root of the problem the controlling powers many years ago you've heard it in my teachings many years ago i went to preach somewhere in northern nigeria it was a crusade a can crusade i think or, or something of that sort and through god is my witness I saw several something was happening to the women now I'm not a medical doctor but every time they gave birth they became deaf and dumb immediately not one not two not eight not ten I said I, well, I'm not a doctor but at least I have I did biology enough to know that this is what is the relationship between giving birth and becoming deaf and dumb once you see a prevalent pattern it is not sickness it is a spirit are we together there are family members where children of 12 years have high blood pressure what is the child thinking about you really think that's a disease no 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 even medical science tells us sometimes they trace certain sicknesses and they'll say does your father have it does your mother have it in the name of jesus let me speak over someone any pattern that will not allow your family represent the purposes of God I call upon the God of my covenant this night it lives your life forever please sit down I have seen patterns of poverty over families there are territories where the preachers never break through anointed they love god sincerely some of the the holiest godliest men and yet the territory does not open after 10 years 40 members it declines to 30 during thanksgiving it goes to 80 and you see the people saying god did you send me if only they understood that there are veils and there are gates over territories listen to what i'm telling you there are controlling powers over territories there are controlling powers over regions there are controlling powers over families don't you think the devil will just fold his arms and watch you and your children just go like that 
there is a pharaoh that will fight your exodus it takes spiritual intelligence to define your possibilities patterns of bad luck patterns of ill health patterns of widespread barrenness mother barren gave birth only after 10 years Father, um, brothers barren sister barren is a demonic thing there are patterns where things that are started never finish have you seen those kinds of things you will see a house they will tell you they started building this house in 1987 until now what is in a house that cannot be built you will hear that the person who had money and came to build it died there have you seen those things don't be afraid of what i'm teaching you is the truth you stand upon a territory jesus looked over jerusalem and began to cry why was he crying he saw that there was a spirit that casted blindness on the people oh jerusalem jerusalem he said if thou had known even in this thy time the things that pertain unto your peace but they are hidden from you the widow at Nain, there is a there was a pattern that kills all the men in her life her husband died her only child was about to die and the intercessor came and said no we have to change something here God is raising many of you right now because there there are age-long some of them centuries old problems in your area and your grandfathers tried to do the best help them please they tried to do the best that they could do my god i sense such an anointing such an anointing such an anointing just help those under the anointing blow 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 like a mighty wind spirit of victory cover us with your wings will you blow 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 like a mighty wind Blow like a mighty wind, spirit of victory, cover us with your wings. Blow every sadness, blow, blow, blow like a mighty wind, spirit of victory, cover us with your wings. Hear me, there are territories that have patterns where those who work for things never enjoy it have you seen that pattern you labor there are people who have raised others there are people in nigeria almost every great name they participated in their rising and yet there is nothing for you it's a spirit it's a pattern they sit over territories Skate bakatos sande patalakatos embrekete katos koti barakata skada bata katos kete kata embrekete katos koto bakata kebas kebas ketalis kenya embrekete katos kati balakata. Shadakata bakata katos, emprete ke parakatos kati kata, ke prende skete lakatos kati ada, kaparis kati ya. Just pray in the spirit in one minute. Sanakata bakata skoto prende kata, kileks ke ni matas skoto prende kati ya. I sought for a man who would stand in the gap that I would not destroy them. hallelujah let me finish because we're going to pray tonight worship him get ready you will sing that my song for me again ah! 
my spirit is fired up listen you have to say enough is enough if not for your sake for your children on board i've gone through the pain already let innocent people not go through this again i've gone through the poverty i went through the pain of idolatry i went through the pain of polygamy i went through the pain of delay go through it for their sake that is the character of an intercessor Shakatabakatos, the brente ketes koto baskadia, embreketa, rekete koto skoto ketea, rebas koto shanakata miyakata. Someone pray. You are engaging the spirit for the sake of those connected to you. By reason of this grace, I speak prophetically over you that everything that represents the shame and the reproach connected to poverty, I declare that it dies over your life now. Every family here that has never experienced genuine prosperity is always from poverty to poverty. You saw those before you you saw your parents some of you right now and you are about transferring the same to your children in the name of jesus may this anointing intercept that progression intercept that progression in the name of jesus christ the bible says and jabez was more honorable than his brethren it was not always so every failed business here every dead or dying business i decree and declare may help us show up and lift you back may help us show up and lift you back in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus please believe this prophecy between now and december 2023 i prophesy upon you come out of that debt come out of that financial situation come out of that financial situation in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ father let the power to prosper the engracing that can rest on men and women and program them for extraordinary success i declare by the privilege of this apostolic and prophetic mantle receive it right now receive it right now receive it right now be delivered from every financial captivity hear me what your father could not do what your mother could not do for some of you what has never been done before you i empower you by this anointing go and do it extraordinary results in business extraordinary results in ministry in the name of jesus christ listen many of you will come and stand here and begin to testify of strange financial doors in the name of Jesus Christ and by this anointing everybody mandated to help you especially in this month in this month of April leave May leave June we are talking April I don't know where they are but I can call them by prophecy in the name of Jesus Christ the one who gave power to men I declare this week that is coming I stand by this mantle I call for strange helpers strange helpers strange lifters in the name of Jesus Christ that by reason of this that you have heard some of you by God you will step into prepared blessings you will be sitting down someone will call you and give you a car call you and give you a house I am telling you call you and give you a job he has trained you so his hands will not be restrained in blessing you there are some of you who are in ministry God will give people instructions and say they should come and hold your hands and see to it that you never go down again 
every family struggling financially whether to pay school fees to pay rent to complete building projects or maybe to fund projects that are ongoing in the name of jesus this week may ebenezer the helper of men may he arise and surprise you i've studied the subject of prayer a bit i can tell you and my assignment when i study things is to compress them to an expression that is very useful and applicable to the general body of believers and i found out maybe more but in my experience and i believe it is consistent from scripture and with scripture that there are four major assignments of prayer in the life of the believer i want you to write it and please never forget it no matter how many times you've written it write it down prayer according to scripture has four major assignments in the life of the believer number one the first assignment of prayer in the life of the believer is for growth and transformation in order of priority this is the highest assignment of prayer in a believer's life unfortunately most people have not tapped into this possibility that you gain mastery by evolving to superior levels of yourself even in the place of prayer luke chapter 9 and verse 29 the bible says and as he prayed the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment was white and glistering say prayer you can grow and you can be transformed in the place of prayer i show you a believer who does not engage in prayer consistently forget about mastery you cannot gain mastery in this kingdom if you ignore prayer and if you do not understand the assignment of prayer to your life growth and transformation jude jude 1 and verse 20 the bible says but ye beloved building up yourselves on your most holy faith praying in the holy ghost prayer builds the believer prayer can turn a weak you into a strong you prayer can turn a very timid canal you into a spiritual version of yourself men ought always to pray and not to faint number two i just want to touch it quickly so that we'll move to the other one making requests and obtaining promises this is the second assignment of prayer from scripture for making requests and obtaining promises every time you want to make requests and you want to obtain promises the platform for making this happen is prayer philippians chapter 4 from verse 6 it says be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known unto god making requests and obtaining promises number three very quickly the third assignment of prayer in your life is for spiritual legislation what is spiritual legislation decrees creating possibilities in the place of prayer decrees creating possibilities job 22 and verse 28 thou shalt also decree a thing and it shall be established unto thee and the light shall shine upon your ways it, you shall decree a thing it happens in the place of prayer numbers 14 28 numbers 14 28 say unto them as truly as i live saith the lord as ye have spoken in mine ears so will i do unto you not just as as much as you desire if you speak in my ears i will do it just like you have said it making decrees obtaining promises then spiritual legislation and then number four warfare and intercession the last dimension and jurisdiction of prayer in the life of the believer is for warfare and intercession ezekiel 22 from verse 29 to 31 very quickly ezekiel 22 the people of the land have used oppression and exercised robbery and have vexed the poor and the needy yea they have oppressed the stranger wrongfully 30 
and I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it. He said, but I found none. As a result, 31. He says, therefore, I have poured out my indignation upon them. I have consumed them with the fire of my wrath. Their own way I have recompensed on their head, saith the Lord. These are the four dimensions of prayer. I've done this teaching. I'm, I'm, I'm reminding you for this series that if you want to gain mastery in this kingdom, you must understand prayer. You must understand prayer. Men ought always to pray and not to faint. And that at any point you pray, you are doing one or more or all of these four things. Engaging in that which makes for your spiritual development obtaining promises is like cashing a check in the realm of the spirit in the place of prayer number three making decrees and establishing realities in your life number four engaging the ministry of warfare and intercession at any point you go to pray these are the things that are captured in the prayer life of a believer unfortunately please look up many believers do not pray not for transformation not as a platform to obtain requests and make petitions not even to make decrees over their lives maybe they do a bit of it in church and largely most believers do not engage in the ministry of warfare and intercession no wonder the life of many believers remain defeated in spite of the fact that they are zealous for God. They love God with all their hearts, but they continue to find out that nothing in their lives is a capture of the grace, the wisdom, the power of God. You must tonight make up your mind that for to honor my desire to strive and to rise to the point of mastery, I must engage the ministry of prayer as a lifestyle. As a lifestyle. Prayer as a lifestyle. Not a strategy for disaster management. Prayer as a lifestyle. For most people, conditions have to provoke you to pray. A negative report and you quickly come to pray. And Satan knowing that when he wants to attack you, he will not make the thing look so bad because it will call for emergency and you go and pray. So he will allow gradually, gradually until your prayer life goes cold and he will attack you in one day and you will be surprised. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. And also the Lord gave Job. Who gave him? Where did he get it from? A man can get a thing from God. He said, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had. How did that happen? I will tell you how it happened. God did not leave us in the dark. He didn't fall from heaven. Next verse. Then came unto him all his brethren. That was the first sign. When favor is upon your life, strange men start coming never trivialize the appearance of men the bible says he that told they they dejected him everybody left him but now they started returning and the bible says and all his sisters and all they that had been his acquaintance before before the ministry of men brought favor to job something happened and the men left and the favor went with them men are custodians of favor and the bible says and he did eat bread they did eat bread with him in his house and they bemoaned him and comforted him over all the evil that the lord had brought upon him and what happened every man also gave him a piece of money and everyone an earring of gold how many of them every it was like a roll call you were my friend before and you left me where are you bring your money favor i like you to pray and say lord every destiny helper that has left my life before they must appear with their blessings lift your voice and cry 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 everyone the acquaintances that left him before they left him before 
Shekete kete Rekoto koto baba Rapari kete In the name of Jesus We call help us We call help us them forth. Call them forth. Call them forth. Call them forth. Hallelujah. 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 I like us to pray. The Bible says all that happened to Job when he prayed for his friends. Praise the Lord. Pair yourselves into two. I like you to hold the hand of somebody. We are going to provoke a divine mystery. He prayed for his friend. Please, I'd like you to pray. Whether you are holding your friend, your brother, your classmate, leave the issue of relationship down. I'd like you to prophesy and say, I restore by the power mandated upon my life. I call forth favor upon your life. Pray. Oh, you have an anointing. Pray. Pray. Release miracles. In the life, stand upon your priestly position. Pray. Oh, I'm mandated to bless you. My brother, I prophesy to you. My sister, I end your misfortune. I end your misfortune. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost, a mantle is upon me. And I speak to you. I speak to you. Favor. 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 Upon you. Favor. Upon you. It must speak. It must speak. I give it a voice. Favor.
before I speak upon your life hallelujah before I speak upon your life I want to pray for you please everybody pray I want you to stand if you can take off your shoes and stand upon the ground the earth is a universal point of contact everything alive makes contact with the earth everything alive every destiny helper you meet is at this point touching this ground just like you and we're going to pray the, pro the prophet said as for the earth out of it comes bread there is a mystery of the earth i like you to pray and say as i walk upon this ground wherever my helper is i call you by prophecy come into my life go ahead and pray 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 please we are not playing wherever they are i use the earth as a token i use the earth as a token of prophecy i use the earth as a token Oh earth, hear the word of the Lord. I speak to you. Locate my helper. Locate my helper. Financial helpers. Ministry helpers. Business helpers. Oh earth, I make a contact with you. Pray. Kabaroto supregede, ingrapa toko roko supregede, sparianda kareto skobash, rapato supregede, rakoto skoprende gede bosh, tera rabo sona na maria rarare. hallelujah hallelujah please remain we are still praying give us job chapter 5 i want to show you a mystery job 5 22 and 23 our earth is surrounded by mysteries those who understand this will know how to reign in life job 5 22 and 23 please media are you there And destruction and famine at destruction and famine thou shall laugh i will tell you why listen neither shall thou be afraid of the beast of the earth verse 23 for thou shalt be in covenant with the stones of the field listen he said and the beast of the field shall be at peace with you there is a mystery here he says i will put you in covenant with this earth and instruct that everywhere the earth sees you it must make everything on it favor you i show you a mystery listen listen to what i'm teaching you it says you will be in league you know what it means to be in league covenant everything upon it when it sees you it tells the animals and every hostility be at peace this man is in covenant with us i'd like you to pray and say oh earth share the word of the lord I have a covenant of peace. Every business upon the ground, every helper upon the ground, be at peace with me. Be at peace with my destiny. Pray. Pray. You shall be at peace in league with the stones of the field. Money will not run away from you. Money was made from the earth. It has a spirit pray there is a covenant of my destiny and the earth i speak 
to you by the authority of the Lord Jesus. For thou shalt be in league with the stones of the field. Thou shalt be in covenant with the stones of the field. Thou shalt be in covenant. I speak to you. Speak to the earth. Speak to it. It has an ear. I speak to you. Every resource within you, around you, upon you, answer to me. Every resource within you, around you, answer to my destiny. Everywhere you see me, answer to me in the wilderness, in the plain, on land. Every hostility that happens upon the earth shall not be my portion. No accident, no terrorism, no lack. I'm in league with the stones of the field. No longer will resources run away from me. They come to me in abundance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. There are five elements that become conduits for the expression of the supernatural. Five elements. By the way, don't you think that what we have done or what we are doing is some sort of demonic thing? No. Hosea chapter 12 said, I have spoken to you by the prophet. I have used similitudes. I have used tokens representations to communicate my intent i have used tokens similitudes to speak to you they understood this mystery that was why every time god did, did a thing they would raise an altar and be at peace with the earth and raise an altar and say this altar even when we leave this city make sure you speak for us we were supposed to kill certain people, but we spared them. And so we raised an altar there and we ate bread there so that any man that dare touches us, the altar will speak. My altar is calling you, oh God. My altar is calling you, oh God. My secret place is calling you take my praise oh God take my praise hallelujah when the Lord was showing me this mystery I've shared it with you there was a year this is not something you just do foolishly I started trekking from the roundabout of Chike Republic to aviation. The Lord made me do so. And I was just walking on the ground. I'm praying in tongues like a fool. I didn't know I was entering a covenant. Every principality in this city knows. I told you there is a spirit in this city that makes things old. The lifespan of impact in this city is three years. After three years, there is a force that draws your life back to nonsense. There are great men that have written, risen from this city, but they do not know the art of war in the spirit. And when I walked upon that, I was tired, I was hungry, but I was speaking. The Bible says, everywhere the sole of your feet, not the desire of your heart, everywhere the sole of your feet treads upon. What did he say? He said, I give you. That means you define the limit of your territory. I'd like you to pray. And say, I'm standing upon the earth. The same way the ground is not upon me. Hardship, return to where you belong. You are under my feet. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. I'm standing upon the earth. Hardship cannot be upon me. I'm standing upon the earth. It's a sign of dominion. It's a sign of power. It's a sign of sovereign control. I command situations. I command circumstances. Come back under 
under my feet come back under my feet come back under my feet everything above me mocking God in my life mocking God in my destiny mocking God in my life mocking God in my destiny you come under my feet you come under my feet you come under my feet Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was sharing with the school of ministry students this morning a very humorous experience that happened to me. Somebody called me at the beginning of this fast and he said, Apostle, the Lord instructed me. I'm a professional tailor and the Lord instructed me that from today I shall handle all your clothes and begin to sew your clothes for you. I want to come and collect your measurement and all i need to do is to sew your clothes the bible says strangers shall feed your flock if you don't don't you think it's happening just because we're men of god this ministry we have seen strange i, I will not even begin to give you the testimony because it will make some of you angry the finger of god the strange manifestation of the favor and the wisdom there is such a thing called the mantle of favor. A man can have it. There is such a thing called the mantle of favor. There are unbelievers. They are not born again. But they are some of the biggest financiers of some of the ministries that you see around. The biggest financiers. And they will say, God said this. I was sharing with somebody of a lady. He started with one, but there are three of them. They, are, they believe their assignment in my life is to send me 5,000 Naira recharge card every month as a covenant. Hallelujah. There are people who do me transfers to my account every month of their life as a covenant between them and God. God is my witness. I don't know some of them. I don't even know how they got my account. Some will tell me I had a dream. Some will say, I did this. Brothers and sisters, if you think you must know somebody to bless you, you are joking. Get set to die poor. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Mm. Wisdom. Strategies. The Bible says, and Uzziah. It says, Uzziah became strong because he was marvelously helped of the Lord. We are going to pray and say, Lord, help me. Listen, when God helps a man, your story must change. I like be humble and say, Lord, I've done my best. Help me. Lift your voice and pray. Uzziah prospered because he was marvelously helped. I pray. Lord, help me. You yourself be my helper. Pray. 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 Soka paratu shotos. lekota. Are we praying, please? Help me. Ebenezer, the helper of Zion. Ebenezer. He said, if the Lord had not been on our side, now may Israel say, hallelujah hallelujah please if you can lift your hands as i speak over your life i want you to believe it there is such a thing as a mantle of favor not the gift of favor the mantle of favor in the name that is above all names the resurrected christ he said worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive for us riches I pray for you. Every cause of misfortune upon your life today, we bury it forever in the name of Jesus. We bury it forever in the name of Jesus. Every signature of hardship, every signature of misfortune in your life in this year, Kapote Kerika, 
in the name of Jesus, I bring it to an end. I bring it to an end. The Bible says, Haggai, the one who dressed the virgins of the king, gave Esther a certain kind of ointment and she kept rubbing it for one year. When she stood before the king, he desired her. I pray for you. By this mantle, let any man who sees you desire to bless you. Desire to help you. Desire to bless you. Hallelujah. I pray for everything dying in your hand. The Bible says they are taking for a prey and none say it restore. I stand upon this anointing in the name of Jesus. Like Jesus called Lazarus from the grave. Every misfortune, every dying business, every dying career, every dying idea. Jack back to life this night in the name of Jesus. Jack back to life. Please help that brother. Help that brother. Jack back to life in the name of Jesus. Jack back to life in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I pray for you. That grace that makes men accomplish so much in such a short time. In the name of the resurrected Christ, I'm praying for you beginning from today. Let that favor cause speed in your life. Let that favor bring speed to your life. Speed to your life. Speed to your life. Speed to your life. To your life. Listen, from today, I'd like you to walk conscious of the fact that the mantle of favor is upon me. As you move around, know it. Don't, don't just be emotional this night. I walk all the time knowing that there is favor upon my life. I expect people to bless me anywhere. Anywhere. At the airport, bus station, anywhere. I expect it. Because it's not about the people. It's about what is on me. Lay your hands on your head. Say, Father. Today. I receive this mantle, receive this mantle of, favor. of favor. Mantle of favor. Mantle of favor. I, command I command you. Begin to speak. Begin to speak. speak to the north. Speak to the, north. Speak, to the south. speak to the south. Speak to the east. Speak to the, ah, speak to the west. Speak to the In the name of Jesus. I command you attract to my life people attract to my life opportunities attract to my life resources in the name of Jesus lift your hands I'm praying for you my God like a cloak let it come upon your people that mantle of favor some of you beginning from this night as you leave is like a mark upon you you will find people favoring you everywhere and anyone who is connected to this grace those online businesses let me pray specifically for businesses i pray for businesses in the name of jesus every business every investment any financial platform hear the word of the lord we superimpose your weakness by the favor of the lord in the name of jesus i speak to every job in this place every career that has refused to move forward we force it to move forward we force it to move forward anything that must enter your hand between today and friday we prophesy it must enter your hand it must enter your hand i decree and declare over your life by the spirit of the living god the kind of help you have not seen from january till now in the name of jesus the christ of god i declare it upon your life 
help in business help in career help in your spiritual life help in your finances in the name of Jesus Psalm 79 verse 11 the Bible says that God would preserve those who have been appointed to die there are human beings who have been appointed to die they are walking on earth whereas they had finished when you read the book of Esther you will see that they use divination to choose the date where they will fight and annihilate the Jews in the name of Jesus for everyone and every family here appointed to death that whilst you are walking on earth in the realm of the spirit it has been concluded that on this day you will die I decree and declare death passes over you death passes over your loved ones we rebuke the spirit of death oh grave where is your victory oh death where is your sting be banished from God's people in the name of Jesus I speak to you that the fullness of your days you will fulfill in the name of Jesus ah. when the Lord turn again the captivity of Zion I want to speak to someone truly there is a grace that turns people's things around Sing it as a prophecy is happening in your life. In the name of Jesus every situation that has become an object of mockery in your life I stand by the God of heaven and I declare between now and the end of this month in the name of Jesus who I am in the name of Jesus that situation is turned for your good now And the king sent for Joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon let me call forth your destiny help us wherever they are in this city men and women ordained and anointed to hold your hands I stand by the rod of a higher priesthood I prophesy to the north the south the east and the west wherever the helpers of your destiny are I command them to appear in the name of Jesus We will shout hallelujah, we will shout praise the Lord, we will dance, uh. we will shout say ready for the next prophetic word the Bible says and then the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and he ran on barefoot and overtook the chariot of 
Ahab down to Jezreel. I want to release the grace for speed. Speed is a reality. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare. Inside, outside, all of the overflows and those following online from today step into a supernatural dimension of results speed for you speed in ministry speed in business in the name of Jesus Christ mm. Esther chapter 2 and verse 15 the B part says and Esther obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her verse 17 and the king loved esther more than all the virgins and the bible says that he took her to be queen instead of vashti i decree and declare whoever is sitting on what belongs to you i stand by the god of heaven i push them out of the way and i declare you are enthroned push them out of the way and declare you are enthroned Push them out of the way and declare you are enthroned. If all you have is money, you are not favored. So Father, I pray from the depth of my spirit. For as many who will have the discernment may this grace for favor that by the election of grace you have placed upon this life in the name of jesus who is the son of the living god may that grace listen to me i know what i'm i listen i'm praying this from my heart you have the humility to receive it will change your life i declare according to exodus chapter 3 and verse 21 and i will give these people favor in the sight of the egyptians and it shall come to pass that as ye go ye shall not go empty i stand by the god of my covenant and i declare from today may the grace for favor rest on your life help them please may the grace for favor rest upon your life take that grace Take that grace. Take that grace. In the name of Jesus Christ. Help that woman please. May the grace for access and visibility. The grace that can open gates. Gates of nations. Gates of the hearts of kings. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every territory that has rejected you rejected your ministry rejected your value your business by this oil a father gates be open by this oil a father doors be open in politics be open in business be open in ministry be open hear me anybody that fights you goes down instantly and anyone who says over their dead body for you to rise may their prayer be answered i pray for you in the name of jesus whatever has refused to walk in your life by the word of god the sent word we command and we compel it to begin to walk oh may your help us begin to speak about you at the gates the gates of your destiny the kings of tyre and sidon we call them to sing your praises they will speak about the wonder of god upon your life in the name of jesus christ hallelujah we're wrapping up the pandemic has brought a lot of financial hardship on people and families steve crown come you have stood before god and you have humbled yourself here i stand by the apostolic if it is god that has sent me 
I stretch my hands and I declare, I shift you, step into a new level of visibility. You are not bowing down to a man. I speak to you by the God of heaven who anoints men. He is the one who set in the church apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers. In the name of Jesus, you and your ministry, everywhere across this city and across this nation, may strange doors be opened for you. Strange visibility for you. In the name of Jesus Christ, may my God honor you in public. The honor that God has placed upon my life and upon this ministry. In the name of Jesus, I take of that honor and I bless it upon your life. God bless you, sir. The Lord increase you. The Lord honor you. Everyone in ministry here, I stand in faith with Pastor Shola, God's prophet, Pastor Emos Fenwa, Pastor Nathaniel Bassi. There are few people that have had access to Baba Deboye like him. And many of you saw recently, uh, God gave me the honor and the privilege to have access to this our father of faith listen to me we didn't invent this grace we are also recipients of it from the abundance of that which God has released you see let me tell you this what God gives I say it again God did not send us this is not church thing my ministry thing those days of childishness are over this is a grace for the body if the body is not corporately edified even if we are excelling we are failed are we together now this issue of ministry my church mentality we must fold it away and look at the corporate good of the body if koinonia is excelling and the church in abuja is going down we are all failing together this is beyond koinonia administratively you pay attention to the work god has given you but your burden must extend beyond the shores of your own church to the body of christ this is how we win hallelujah who is set come you are the set from joss Come and stand here. Your life is about to change. Please stand up. What are you doing abroad? Uh, I was schooling, but I, I remained there. I just came in for, for some jobs. Okay, what do you so do? I'm, I'm, I'm an audio engineer, but I work with a security company. I want to pray for you. Yeah, thank you. There is something that wants to fight your glory. This is what I'm saying. Don't be embarrassed. I want to pray for you. Ah. This thing started from St. John's, Joss. I want to pray for you. Because the Lord is going to lift you. There is a dimension that you would have attained right now. But for some reason, things just went down. But I want to pray for you. Who is this? Wife? God bless you. Come and stand near your husband. The Lord is giving you a new song. I'm prophesying to you in the open. Two of you. I release grace now. In the name of Jesus. May this fire and may this anointing bring you again to the place of visibility. Mr. Seth. Yes, sir. There is an oil you have neglected. Go back to it. It's an oil of worship. Yes, sir. There is a ministry God has given you. Don't fail in it. Go back. Part of your prosperity is tied to that. Wife, look at me. I speak to you by the Spirit of God. It's God that brought you to the life of this man. You are a powerful force together. And I'm standing in the open and I'm speaking to you. In the name of Jesus, between now and the next four months, look at me. There are songs that are going to come out of you again. You watch and see what these songs will do in the nation. I bless you. In the name of Jesus, God bless you. Please return back to your seat. I pray again for you, everyone. By the power of the Holy Spirit, 
everything you have as a product, a document, whatever it is that came as a point of contact. In Jesus' name, we declare life upon it. For those trusting God for jobs, between now and the next one month, I call upon my God who is also your God. Return with strange testimonies. Acts chapter 16. I'm showing you the first level of deliverance. Casting out the demons. The spirit influences. Verse 16. Acts 16 verse 16. It came to pass as we went to prayer. A certain damsel. With a spirit of divination met us which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying 17 the bible says and the same followed paul and us and cried saying these are men these men are the servants of the most high were they lying please talk to me were they lying which show us the way to salvation what is more accurate than what this girl said? 18. The Bible says, This she did many days. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the spirit, not the girl, the spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus, come out of her. And he came out the same hour. He came out the same hour. Note that manifestations when casting out demons is usual and biblical. That means it does not mean there has to be manifestations when you cast out demon spirits. But that if and when it happens, it is not unusual. Like you see all the time here. It does not necessarily mean that the people are possessed. Now you know that there are different levels. When you are ministering, when you are casting out devils or ministering deliverance as we know. Both the unbeliever who is possessed and the spirit who is demonized, they will manifest the same way. And so you can mistake it to mean that they are possessed. Possessed, but Christians cannot be possessed by demon spirits. Are we together now? The second level of deliverance, very quickly, is what I call deliverance through transformation. This is the level that is probably most neglected by many believers. They do not know that this is a second level of deliverance. Please write, deliverance through transformation. And that by the word of God deliverance through transformation the second level of deliverance in mark chapter 5 the story of the madman in gadara mark chapter 5 we'll read verse 15 remember before now jesus had casted that legion of the legion of devils out of the man and then you know the story got to town and people rushed and came here's what the bible says happened they came to jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion what did they see him do sitting and clothed in his right mind so in as much as the demon had been casted out you would think that's all but the man was sitting and listening to jesus and now his mind was becoming right the demon can leave but your mind can be wrong are we together now the second level of deliverance seeks to bring that transformation to your mind write this down please deliverance through transformation involves a reorientation of your spiritual understanding please write that down deliverance through transformation involves a reorientation of your spiritual understanding now that the spirit influence has been cast out in the name of jesus you need a reorientation to change your thinking and your perception because i taught you that strongholds are negative mindsets or belief systems that have been fortified by the presence of demon spirits to keep the victim perpetually in that state deliverance through transformation seeks to bring a reorientation of your spiritual understanding write this down deliverance through transformation involves 
opening the believer to the nature and the character of God then the principles of the kingdom so number one a reorientation of your spiritual understanding opening you up to the nature and the character of God and then the principles of the kingdom write this down please transformation closes the door of ignorance and empowers the believer to rise above the influence of demons I'll take it again transformation closes the door of ignorance transformation closes the door of ignorance and empowers the believer to rise above the influence of demons how true transformation closes the door of ignorance and empowers the believer to rise above the influence of demons if a door is not open demons cannot come and ignorance is one of the doors or access points the assignment of transformation is that when the demon goes out then transformation now closes that door otherwise the demon will say I will return back to my house it can find it swept it can find it clean but still opened are we learning finally transformation tears down negative thought patterns transformation tears down negative thought patterns that hitherto had been doorways for demons transformation tears down negative thought patterns or mindsets you may call them transformation tears down negative thought patterns that hitherto had been doorways for demons listen listen carefully write this down and listen let me take you one more time transformation tears down negative thought patterns that hitherto had been doorways for demons now please pay attention demons don't just find comfort arbitrarily they depend on the wrong mental construct of the victim to keep remaining comfortable in that victim are we together so what demon spirits do is that before they attack an individual they bring together wrong information that construct your mindset negatively and when they find that negative construction the demon spirits come and fortify that thought pattern so that you will not change from thinking that way now it becomes a free way for them because provided you have a negative thought pattern no matter how many times they cast out demons they will go with joy because they know the door is open that's a very powerful revelation because people faint when they are tired a man can be defeated and still stubbornly try to lay claims that's what satan does but there is a system that provides weariness to the point that he will even flee it's a system of resistance the bible says resist the devil you need to know what that resisting is that there is something a man can do to the devil and you watch him he watches you and goes resist the devil and he will flee is, is God speaking to someone tonight because we need to come out of this conference full of faith and convictions some of you need to run and go back home and say this is it I, I wrote my prayer points and edited some out of unbelief I'm adding them back I'm adding them back and I'm reducing the time for their manifestation because something about the knowledge of God has entered your spirit look at what happened to people in the bible every time they had dimensions of encounters with god it changed their perspective ah look at david for god's sake look at david look at david standing before goliath how can a little teenager watch very strong veterans military veterans and this young boy comes to serve food and hears a beast roaring six fingers and six toes and david laughs he says god i know something about you that can throw this man and then he went to saul he told his brothers the brothers said return home before we beat the living daylight out of you and then he met saul saul only asked a question 
what tribe and what family are you coming from and then he allowed him gave him spares and he said no 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 i wasn't trained with this formula the god i know does not need all of these things david is standing before goliath remember you are intelligent when david stands before goliath you expect him to shake and david is david is just imagining his testimony he was so sure he said what will be my reward first they said one you will marry the king's daughter i mean what a joy who doesn't want that kind of stress taking off you the stress of call text will you marry me automatically in one sweep please sit down number two your family will be exempted from tax number three you will be rewarded david said let's go and he stood before goliath goliath felt insulted he said i know i will kill you but am i a dog israel is this your best you you can't even respect me and david said you keep watching you come to me with your bows and your spears but i come to you in a name i come to you in a name let me tell you there was a revelation that david knew james 2 26 that anybody without a spirit backing it is dead david knew that that a body is only alive based on the spirit that backs it the size of the body does not matter when a body without a spirit stands before you is as good as dead and david looked and said there is nothing back in this man let's stand i can go this is cheap victory and then he told him he said mister let me even tell you how i'm going to kill you number one you see this link is going to hit your head then you'll be on the ground and then i will use your own sword cut off your head and then i will lift it up and goliath said i see i can imagine god in heaven say who is this who is this young boy putting pressure on my integrity listen i believe i believe now the bible does not say but i believe no matter what direction that stone touched goliath he still would have died it wasn't about the accuracy of the forehead any part of him goliath was already dead hallelujah and goliath falls to the ground and that becomes great victory your destiny is at the mercy of a dimension of God you know. That's why it matters which man of God introduces God to you. And it matters what he tells you about God. For many of us, we have come from a background, well-meaning backgrounds, but we have um, erroneously been taught certain things about God. I know that God is love. He doesn't just have it. He is love. That dimension is a powerful dimension. Because that is, that is the basis of true freedom. So it gives you the opportunity to replace perfection with sincerity. That in the dealings of God with men, when he says men should be perfect, it does not mean flawless. He means mature in understanding. The love of God is a system that grants you access to enjoy liberty working with him. It's not, it's not a basis for licentiousness, but it takes away, it takes away the mentality of an angry boss waiting for you to default. The love of God what do you know about god and who taught you what you know about god and what is the result in the life of that teacher there is something you can learn about god there is something you can learn about god man of god Hi. that will supply such a dimension of the anointing let me tell you this i do not believe there is any mortal man on earth that can take my life it's true now you, you don't have to believe it i'm just sharing with you sorry if i sound arrogant it's true you need to know the things that have happened in my life to know why i'm saying what i'm saying mm -mm. the same way 
you see donald trump just walking without security you try to shoot him and see what happens use anything whether a gun or a missile the military people are not standing there with guns but you use your initiative to quickly shoot him and that's when you will know that all you see is not all there is number two i i believe god loves me and i truly believe i i i hope i'm right but forgive me i believe that god loves me unfairly unfairly there not because he is unfair but the extent is as if he doesn't love any other person like that it's true look at my life so when your enemies are angry have a heart for them don't hate them understand with them who will not be angry looking at such a life like this you see that revelation sponsors love you too should be in their position and know it's not easy to see a man that god blesses anyhow anything about your life blesses you what kind of a life is that because i have learned that he's a god that can make all things work together for the good of them that love him and those who are the called according to his purpose are you getting what i'm sharing with you tonight please learn these things i'm doing something to your mind you will walk out of this meeting with confidence knowing that i know something about god when a guy looks at you and you say you are not fine enough you say lord thank you for taking such an irresponsible boy out of my life i, I cannot imagine living with someone with such a deconstructed revelation about me no not that you go back and look at yourself in the mirror and say is it really true ah, ah, you mean i'm like this no god who did not hide his jealousy for you his love do you know what it means for someone to be in the position of god to come down and say i love you you say lord i don't love you say i will wait what is more ego stinging than that i will wait for you till you come to me then some guy somewhere comes to make your life miserable in the name of love no sir i believe as a man of god that when god empowers you nobody can bring you down yes sir yes sir yes sir so when you have this mindset you expect to be accepted everywhere everywhere when you hear them say they want to choose 10 people you start smiling and pray for the remaining nine it's, it's not pride it's not pride it's not pride it's true listen it is important who constructs your belief system it matters how it is constructed it matters what about god you are taught please listen carefully many of us come from many backgrounds just like me and there are many propositions about god that may be sociologically right listen carefully it may even be from a well-meaning leader pastor whatever it is and now that god has brought you to a very flourishing assembly like this you must allow yourself to be reoriented that god gives you another perspective of himself you will never be able to walk in the anointing if there are some things about god you don't know i do not believe that any man can meet me and actually make contact with me and his life be remains the same it's impossible i don't believe it i have indoctrinated myself by the spirit to know i am a blessing are we together now yes sir carry that mentality and let somebody sow a seed into your life and watch what happens to him 
even you you will be surprised and say you mean i'm disanointed what did you say happened you will now sow a seed to your own self to receive that testimony there's a lot of weakness in the body a lot of weakness spiritual weakness mental weakness as a result of something about god that we have been told If God decides to kill everybody on earth, I'll be the last to die. I know that. Are we together? The anointing, listen. The anointing does not just function vaguely. It depends on these kinds of revelation. Whatsoever he doeth prospers because there is a force god backs him Hi. carry this mindset as a minister and let me see who closes the door of ministry where will it come from where will it come from you produce an album and it does not get everywhere what stopped it there is a positive entitlement mentality you need to carry to take your portion in this life i don't walk in life as if i'm at the mercy of anybody no sir no sir no sir don't sit down wishing to be someone else no because there is something you know about god god has spoken great things man of god know this god know this god stand on the pulpit and let that god back you and you watch the wonder that happens in your church in one month not two one month one month apostle i don't know where my school fees will come from as it is right now i i don't even know i agree with you i'm not inhuman I agree with you but let me tell you something where did the raven come from that fed elijah is it not in your bible please let's look at this is either we are lying or this thing is true it may take time i know but if it is god bar listen some of you are seated here now you don't even know it's like an immersion happening to you you may not know what is smearing on you you will step out of this place and see things begin to change in your life and then you know listen 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 let me tell you how god makes men blessings he makes men blessings by anointing them you are not a blessing if you are not anointed it's true So someone's life is about to be destroyed and you just pass the person. You brought an atmosphere that prolongs his life. He does not even know that's what happened to him. You brought life and ministered to the person. Not formally. You carried an atmosphere that cancelled what would have destroyed him and his family. And he just knows that someone came to buy a bottle of water in this shop. I don't know who. From the time he dropped his hundred naira customers have come because you brought your atmosphere this is what i believe this is what i believe i know there is a god that sits in heaven i know that god can arise and judge the works of darkness i know that i know that when god decides to lift me let me tell you there are enough men to use if you refuse you will find another one i know this everywhere i travel i walk as if my estate is there i expect something to come from that city hicc listen let me tell you if you carry this mentality february will not finish before you start crying for joy and say what is what is happening what is this you will come and meet your pastor and say sir i don't know what happened ah.
I come from the north and humanly speaking, there is a lot of disadvantage where we come from. You know, I didn't have the privilege of any family to no leverage at all. But when God decides to lift you, I, I said it during the pastor's conference, when God points his jealousy at you, you will marvel and wonder at what your life becomes. And you see, when people begin to make all those noise, you know that this is the doing of God. And like an usher, you can say, God, you are the one who deserves all the glory and all the honor. Someone needs to know something about God tonight. Somebody needs to know, like Sinatra will say that he's a way maker. Listen, listen, listen. For you to understand what a way maker is, you have to look at Julius Berger when they are constructing a road. There are times that all you see is just a mountain. And they smile and say, this is where the road will start from. And it, they, they are pointing at a mountain. And they are already describing the dimensions of the road. And then they bring some high-powered gadgets and blow up that mountain and construct roads. So when you say God is a way maker, he looks at your life and say, this mess, this is where the miracle comes out from. Then it will connect to this one. Psalm 34, please. From verse 4 to 7. And then the last part, and we will pray. Psalm 34. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from what? all my fears next verse we are reading to four to seven they looked unto him and were lightened and their faces were not ashamed six the poor man cried and the lord heard him and saved him out of how many all his troubles last verse the angel of the lord encamped around them that fear him and delivered them prayer is a powerful weapon in all seasons but especially this season Lord what is happening around my life my wife just got attacked my son just got attacked my job just got attacked I am not understanding what is happening I set myself like Daniel onto prayer God grants you grace you can add with fasting add with fasting this spiritual laziness of eating anyhow anytime many believers now fast as a ceremony three days fasting you carry it on your head as if you as if it's, it's 12 years fasting if you love food more than your destiny life will cheat you a Again and again food is okay oh but please let me tell you mighty ones you must learn to show food that your spirit man has grown above it there are many of you here you cannot remember I may be wrong I'm not saying you should do it please I'm not saying you should do it but as far as I'm concerned there are spiritual levels that if you get to a week should never pass that you did not fast you are joking you are joking not with what you are doing to hell you are joking seven days ah no Himarama. Himarama. Sits on the throne. Be my Rama to the king. Listen, let me tell you this. I will continue to teach you this secret. Real victory, real victory in prayer is gotten while men sleep. Real victory. It's not gotten shouting around just making noise. 
real men of power contact power when men sleep may god give you the grace to rise above sleep i'm praying from the may god give you the grace to not allow sleep cheat you that god can wake you up in the night no light off the light you are praying don't allow distractions you are praying the next thing you see one of your trousers and it's enough to distract off the light you can use your phone light you are in the night alone and watch what happens you are nobody seeing what you are doing but there is a register every day you are signing it is the day you get to the stage to preach that's when god will not disappoint you You don't come on stage and talk nonsense lion of the tribe of judah rose of sharon lily of the valley rose of this and that and that god is not a scammer he's not a magician no track record in the secret place you will flatter yourself to nothing in it in the open please learn to pray in the night learn to pray in the night learn to pray in the night receive grace to dedicate night times and pray God didn't give you a house just to keep things. Turn everywhere to a prayer altar. Turn your toilet to a prayer altar. Turn your living room to a prayer altar. When everyone has gone off the television, don't pray watching a film. Even if it's a Christian movie, you are not praying. Shut it down. Lord, this is me and you here. I don't know what is happening to my life. A time will come, you feel like just leaning. Get up and say, Satan, you are a liar. I'm going far. A time will come, your tongues begin to change. What you are saying, it will never be what you started with. You, are, you, you have entered a level in the spirit. Tongues are languages and there are levels of power contact groanings that cannot be uttered you get to a point in the spirit where you begin to pray there are times that only one word one phrase will come out of your mouth for minutes pray it you are receiving power is not something you do in a group so that people will see you and think you're a prayer warrior don't choke with your destiny like that don't choke with your destiny like that the bible says to enter and shut the door behind you shut the door behind you and pray to your father who is in secret you don't need to have a prayer point you don't need to have a prayer point just stay there and begin to pray Shekas kaparakatos, embrekete keleka takatos, shikos kamanakata. And while you are praying, your flesh is weak, but your spirit is willing. Can I tell you this? There is a level of fire you bring on any attack in your life. It must give way. It must give way. Fire is an emblem of the spirit. It's one of the emblems of revival. It's one of the emblems that show that the spirit is in a place. Fire does not only refine. Fire is for judgment. There are times you need to stay like a priest upon the watch my brother and my sister if you pray from your heart some things will shift you will wake up in the morning and know i shifted this through prayer there are attacks that only prayer can challenge 
pray for me pray for me is wonderful but you must become the priest of your destiny can someone just blast in tongues for just one or two minutes Salabakata. Shanakandas kama hasabash Rakata pakato sopo koto sheke telikata Emprata seneketo shanikata Tasete shanahas kabarakos Rekete kete kete skabarakatos Unto him that answers prayer Shall all flesh come Lord I'm in a season of my life I cannot afford to be lazy I'm in a season of my life I cannot allow my prayer life go down. It's too risky. Not for this season. Not for this season. This is the wrongest time to be prayerless. This is the wrongest time to be prayerless. Oh, take away slumber from my eyes. Take away slumber, oh God. There are scores to settle in the realm of the spirit. There are things to shift in the realm of the spirit. There are things to align in the realm of the spirit. I need to legislate spiritual realities. While men slept, while men slept, the enemy came and saw tears. Pray, pray, outside, pray. Who sees upon the rival? Shall I you're the king who sits on the throne. Eshena balala, ele 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 na. Ela barata katosh, abranda katela katosh, ekata braka tosh, kala kata braza na kata. Karuse sene katosh, ala tosh ke mahasa. War to them who are ease in Zion. War to them who are ease in Zion. Who sits upon the white Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're praying. Psalm 125. Prayer gives you stamina to pass through seasons. Jesus prayed, otherwise, you would have given up. He said, Peter, Satan desired to sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. And when you are converted, use the same strategy to strengthen. Strengthen. Pray I say strengthener. They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but abided forever. Next verse. As the mountains are around Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people. 
from henceforth even forever next verse for the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous lest the righteous put his hands in iniquity next verse do good O lord unto those that be good and to them that are upright in their hearts we are reading till the last verse as for such as turn aside in their crooked ways the lord shall lead them forth with the workers of iniquity but peace upon joshua selman prayer gives you stability in the next two three minutes you are going to pray and say lord let this prayer stabilize me i shouldn't be shaking over everything i should be able to laugh at certain storms and say jesus is lord lift your voice and pray stability power stamina the lord is my light and my salvation the lord is the strength of my life in the name of Jesus shout it say in the name of Jesus tonight I stand on behalf of myself and my family and I declare that every altar that is speaking against my destiny I tear it down tonight lift your voice and pray Separate of God, sort of us. I tear it down. Altars of delay. Altars of barrenness. Altars of failure. Rata to go to the legates. Leverage to sort of a nation. Pray. Pray. 
hallelujah please spare yourselves too true find find a partner and hold a hand be serious please if the person by your side is not serious leave him alone was doing serious business tonight find a partner and hold a hand say after me in the name of jesus say it again in the name of jesus every legal access i have given for these altars to speak against me knowingly and unknowingly tonight i invoke the blood let the blood speak lift your voice and begin to pray every legal access every legal access every legal access i have given any altar of darkness even the lawful captives shall be delivered. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. hallelujah hold the hands of someone else look for another partner hold the hands of someone else say after me in the name of Jesus say it again in the name of Jesus altars of poverty altars of delay altars of failure I speak to you in the name of Jesus I tear you down release my destiny release my destiny altars of poverty altars of delay altars of stagnation I speak against you I speak against you I cause you by the God of heaven by the God of heaven Hallelujah. We are really praying tonight. I'm seeing blood dripping on people. God is bringing so many miracles in people. We are still praying, please. We are still praying. Shalapakaya. We are still praying. Skatabariasa. I see altars on fire. We are still praying. We are making real contact with the realm of the spirit. Hallelujah. 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 Say in the name of Jesus. Altars that are territorial in nature. Fighting my destiny because of where i'm coming from i prophesy tonight your hold is broken over my life lift your voice and pray altars associated with territories associated with territories i come against you by the throne of heaven i come against you pray pray i come against you Shabbat Shalom, 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 Shabbat Shalom,
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please help those under the anointing. Hallelujah. Listen, there are some of you, your prayers were answered since many years. But it looked like it has not manifested because every time it's reaching you, an altar lifts up. We are going to call it back. Are you ready to pray? Self time in the name of Jesus. Every delayed blessing that should have happened in my life and was delayed because of these altars tonight by prophecy I call you back to my life lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray and watch the God of wonders authorize the God of heaven and watch restoration happen in your destiny Restore relationships, restore finances, restore mankinds, restore ministries. Shabra kaba la 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 la, shabra kaba la la la, la kaba la 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are going to call the name of your family members. Listen, I don't care how many, call it. Listen, you are going to call them one by one and say, I stand as an altar and I bring you out of this dungeon. Lift your voice and pray. Call them. Call them. Call them. Mention them by name. Call them. I bring you out of this wasteful living. Call them. Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus. Be serious. Say it again in the name of Jesus. I speak to the east. I speak to the west. I speak to the north. I speak to the south. Everywhere my favor is. In the name of Jesus, I command it to my life now. Lift your voice and pray. You don't have to travel. Call it everywhere it is.
hallelujah i want you to pray listen i want you to pray and talk to god tell him lord i'm part of this apostolic family the altar you have erected here must speak for me i want my life to show it from today lift your voice and pray pray with understanding and watch what happens to you pray with understanding pray with understanding pray with understanding lord i inform the altar that you have with your servant pray with understanding hallelujah many of you may not realize what is happening to you please i don't want you to idolize this teaching no it's not about religiosity it's about proper understanding and application so it's not just coming to lie down here that, no 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 the altar is a revelation we are going to pray right now and activate back our prayer lives listen because many of us here the only time you pray is when you are together with people satan started attacking you he gave himself a five-year plan to attack your prayer life he will never attack it at once he can give himself a five-year plan and be destroying you say in the name of jesus i decree and declare that the spirit of prayer and supplication the grace to pray I receive it right now. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Fire. Fresh fire. On my altar. Fresh grace. To pray. Fresh grace. To fast. Fresh grace. To intercede. I command every dead prayer life around my life. Come back to life. Come back to life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One last prayer point and I will pray for you. There are many of us, the Spirit of God started revealing things to you because you were meeting with Him every day. But something happened, no more visitation of the secret place and that portal closed over your life. No access to illumination. You used to be, you used to have projects that you and God are on. You can literally say we are on a faith project. But now there's nothing like that. Your life has become stale and barren. Some of you is when you started ministry. This, this so-called thing called ministry. That's what destroyed you. We are going to pray a prayer of restoration. And the fire will fall upon you. I'd like you to pray. Say in the name of Jesus. Say it again in the name of Jesus. Say Holy Spirit. I ask that you manifest yourself once again in my life holy spirit i cry for intimacy afresh with you lift your voice and begin to pray intimacy spirit of the living god do not be far from me again pray pray let it not be that you are just a stranger 
we were closer than this and something happened Lift your hands. Jalakosi Akata. I tell you, there will be there will be testimonies upon testimonies. I pray for you now. I'm praying for you. In the name that is above all names. Everyone hearing me and standing here, whether inside or outside, you have prayed. If there is any altar as I speak now that is speaking against your life, at the count of three, I command those altars to catch fire right now. Please get ready, the power of God will come on people. One, two, three. I command those altars now. Be broken. Be broken. I command those altars be broken. Be broken. Listen. Lift your hands. I'm challenging altars of failure. Listen. Just I'm praying for you. Don't pray. Just listen to me. Because I'm seeing people here. Failure. It has nothing to do with academics. It makes you fail in everything. I stretch my hands. May that fire anyone here who is a victim, that altar is speaking. I stand by the road of a higher priesthood and I judge those altars now. 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 now. By fire, I judge those altars now. There are altars that cause men to see things and never handle it. You see a job, they tell you it's yours. Quarter to reception, everything changes. I don't know who belongs to that category, but in the name of Jesus, inside and outside, following online, anyone who has been a victim, of total failure and disappointment right now in the name of Jesus that fire comes upon you in the name of Jesus that fire comes upon you in the name of Jesus I command total deliverance help them help them please total deliverance in the name of Jesus Christ put down your hands ladies keep your hands lifted I will tell you why I'm praying for you there are many ladies let me tell you many people don't know why things don't work especially for ladies it's not because you are ladies and it's not because you are bad it's because many ladies are spiritually ignorant of what they represent in the realm of the spirit a lady is not just another human being who is not a man no it's more than that a lady is the chiefest point of entrance even among men that's why she has a womb the only lady a lady is a gate in the realm of the spirit it's not just a human being keep your hands lifted that's why demons look for them that's why spirits look for them that's why altars speak against them it may not be caused by you but i'm praying for you keep your hands lifted you may not understand what is happening lord jesus i'm praying now that any one of our sisters here whose family and destiny is under siege 
I'm declaring anyone who made a covenant with the earth for your destiny, anyone who passed through fire to make a covenant with your destiny, in the name that is above all names, I decree and declare upon every lady now be free in the name of Jesus. Be free in the name of Jesus from those yokes, those yokes that cause fibroids, those yokes that cause fibroids, those yokes that cause lungs around your body, those lungs, those bodiness. I cut it by the God of heaven. I cut it by the God of heaven. Hallelujah. I'm seeing 11 ladies. The Lord is opening my eyes. Listen now. I'm seeing rings on all their 10 fingers. And this is a very serious demonic case. And the Lord wants to set them free now. You will not know it. It's not something you know. One of you used to see it physically. You see rings on your hands. In the name of Jesus. 11 people. Ladies especially. I'm praying now. Some are inside. Some are outside. Doesn't matter where you are. The Lord is asking me to stretch my hands. Lord, I pray, whoever came into this meeting, whether online or offline, and belongs to that category, in the name of Jesus, as I'm praying now, I command, I'm praying now, the fire will fall on certain people. Eleven in all I see. Lord, let it be right now. I, I break that marriage. I break that spiritual marriage. I break that spiritual marriage, my God, my God, my God, my God. I break that spiritual marriage. There's one of them you should have married. But this is what stops everybody that comes around you. I command it broken right now. 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 Hallelujah. Our time is gone. The Lord is asking me to minister to someone here. Somebody comes to you in the night physically. I'm not talking of vision. Physically. You feel somebody lying down around your bed. Sometimes sleeping with you. You are feeling it. This is not guesswork. This is something you know is happening. Wherever that person is. Right now in Jesus name. I stretch my hands. There is no escape. In the name of Jesus, whether inside or outside, you are in this category now. I command judgment. Judgment on any strange spirit. Judgment on any stranger. Judgment on any stranger. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I don't know, but we're rounding up. Please, just, just be patient with me. I'm hearing in my spirit, Yoruba people. Yoruba people, there is, there is something, a deliverance that God is bringing now to Yoruba people. You know how God acts as I'm speaking now. Everyone associated with that territory, I place the word of God now. In the name of Jesus, let that sword of deliverance, I command that double-edged sword, to locate everyone from the southwestern part now who is in need of territorial deliverance i command it now inside and outside in the name of jesus no escape no escape for any power of darkness yeah. no, no, no. Yeah. Every mark of this favor that is on anyone's life here. You watch what happens to your life from this meeting. 
anyone carrying any mark of disfavor where men should bless you something about you becomes an irritation i command that mark to be erased from your life now I command that mark to be erased from your life now. I command that mark to be erased from your life now. I command that mark to be erased from your life now. I command that mark to be erased from your life now. I'm watching what is happening from the spirit realm, not the physical realm. When you see me keep praying, it's because God is doing something. I command that mark to be erased from your life now. I say it again. I command that mysterious mark to be erased from your life right now. Anyone here who has any member of your family that has refused to give death they have tried and tried and the devil would just not let them have a child either she will not take in completely or she would take in and then mysteriously lose the child or the man will not be able to get her pregnant i don't care what situation but please even if you are not the one standing for them i'm praying distance is no barrier i stretch my hands now and I decree by the altar of prayer we authorize angelic assistance to those people right now we authorize angelic assistance right now hear me it was an angel that came to assist Mary to get pregnant he showed up and said I was sent your own is to just agree and she said be it unto me and she got pregnant I declare and declare that any manifestation and encounter that they need to go through to have their child i command it to happen now in the name of jesus let me pray finally for your finances i believe in god's people empowered there is no triumph when everything around your life is not working i want to speak because some of you are titers some of you are sowers some of you bless honor god's house but simply because of certain systems that manifestation can happen as laziness that manifestation can happen as disfavor everywhere in the name of jesus i decree and declare nobody here is too young to prosper don't listen to that nonsense nobody here i'm not talking of business i'm not talking of a job i'm talking of a system in the spirit where god will lift you in a way that will make you afraid i decree and declare now as i'm praying for you i'm also praying for families because there are families that need help as a matter of emergency i pray that the demon sitting on the financial destiny of anyone here sitting on the financial destiny of any family i clear it out of the way right now i clear it out of the way right now i clear it out of the way right now i clear it out of the way right now in the name of jesus christ listen listen i've shared with you my encounter i've seen that spirit that they call mammon i've seen it i've shared it here some years ago when i was praying and all of a sudden my ceiling disappeared and all of a sudden i saw a giant creature like him as tall as a mango tree standing looking like um like 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 a dinosaur a sea creature with a tail and the tail was another living thing on its own it could detach from that creature and move and the eyes were as big as a human head two red fierce eyes and he was looking at me and he said so you think you can bring god's people into blessings and that was the end of the encounter that was it was that day i knew that wealth is spiritual it's not about what you do it's about what is backing you you can do everything doable 
there must be a spirit assisting you i call for the ministry of the holy spirit over your finances and i command extraordinary results from today i command strange results from today i command strange favors from today i command strange results from today strange encounters with destiny help us in the name of jesus christ i want you to wave your hands to jesus hallelujah wave your hands to jesus and give him thanks in advance for the mighty things that he will be doing in your life we give him thanks and praise because indeed he's a king of glory and he will do mighty things tonight are you still thanking him thank you Jesus I'd like you to declare that you will never go back the way you came can you turn it into prayer let it be from the depth of your heart someone be angry enough and declare father I have celebrated your hand upon many tonight is my turn declare by faith someone pray tonight is my turn in the name of Jesus Father, you have called tonight a miracle service. Let it answer to its name. In the mighty name of Jesus. That all who have come tonight believing in your power will live graciously ministered to. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I decree and declare that none under the sound of my voice will return back in shame. You believe that? Shout a louder amen. How do you know you have received a miracle? How do you know your situation has changed? How do I know that I have received a miracle? Because you see, miracles do not just end just by faith believing. There must be a manifestation to it. Are we together? Yeah. The end of faith is a performance. The Bible says the word became flesh and it dwelt among us. It says, and we beheld. It is not a true miracle if you do not behold. At the end of it, you, you believe before beholding. But at the end of it, you must behold that this is what God has done. Somebody I'd like you to declare that you will not only believe, you will behold. Open your mouth and pray. Lord, I will behold. That healing must be made manifest, I will behold. That change of story, that turnaround, I decree and declare it will not just stop as a reality in the realm of the spirit. It must be made manifest and I must behold. I must behold in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah listen before you sit you see in Ephesians chapter 2 Paul in fact chapter 1 Paul was teaching the believers and he prayed a very serious prayer he prayed that they would comprehend the depth of power that was released when Christ was raised from the dead because the way faith is produced in the believer is through revelation. If you do not have access to revelation, there is no possibility of acquiring faith. Because it comes by hearing. So Paul is saying that you will comprehend the depth of power that was released when Jesus Christ rose from the dead. That means the kind of power that was exerted 
to dislodge death, to dislodge hell, to dislodge the grave. Are we together now? Defying their grip over Jesus and still brought him back to life. In other words, if you comprehend the kinds of forces that were warded off for Jesus to resurrect, you will see how small your situation is in light of the power that was exerted to raise him up. That's why I raised that song. That in truth there is nothing that he cannot do. And you are here tonight. I pray that you did not come tonight with any unbelief. Wondering will God change my story. You know why we take testimonies here before the word comes? Because the testimony of Jesus, the Bible declares, is the spirit of prophecy. That when you listen to people, look at that. I was so blessed by that, that professor, that dear uh, Zimbabwean-American. With a PhD, but just walking in a store, opening boxes. But when the God of heaven, the jealous one, who can arise over men. Now she walks with Jeff Bezos. But if God were to tell her probably that one day you'll be walking with the wealthiest man on earth, it looks the same way God can be telling someone you will walk out of this service tonight and you, you will not even believe that it was the same you who came. I pray that you will not doubt God tonight. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. All right, so let me have your attention. We're here for the miracle service. And I came here with my heart really boiling um, and insisting that for someone who came here taking God seriously, that you would not go back the way you came. In the name of Jesus. And for whole families who have come here asking, will God visit us? Let me answer you in advance. God will not only visit you, he will surprise you. You believe that? Shout a louder amen. amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm sensing that someone is being healed from peptic ulcer. Peptic ulcer. I don't know who that is, but the power of God is coming on someone who has suffered peptic ulcer. This is what I just got that, that impression in my spirit. You have suffered particularly peptic ulcer. This has caused a lot of of discomfort this is someone you know you have it in the name of jesus wherever you are i declare by the power that raised christ from the dead let there be healing for you now Amen. let there be healing for you now Amen. in the name of jesus i'm seeing someone coughing throwing up something i don't know what it is but this is what i'm seeing this is like something demonic in that person's body in the name of Jesus, wherever you are, every planting that is not by my God, I command that demonic planting, whatever it is, let it be uprooted from your body now. You believe that? Shout a louder amen. I want to pray for you. Ah, God is going to visit people today. Honestly. Listen, I want you to believe that as I speak over your life, Believe that you will return with a testimony. Yeah. Hallelujah. You see so many people, there will be a rain of jobs. I want to pray for you. There is an anointing that I want to release upon your life. And you will marvel. You heard the testimony of that woman. If someone is America, this is a PhD woman who is there struggling, opening boxes. And a prophetic word comes, she puts her prayer request, and now she's walking with Jeff Bezos. What is it that God cannot do? In the name of Jesus, let me pray for those in front, but you can stand maybe for your loved one. You can stand for someone you know who loves God with all their heart, but it looks like these doors have not been opened. In the name of Jesus, those of you in front here, I'm going to declare an anointing upon you. A mighty anointing will come upon you and you will return with your testimony. Right now at the count of three, those in front, I, I'm a, I want you to shout the name Jesus. One, two, three, shout Jesus. Take that grace now. Take that anointing. Take that anointing. Take that anointing. Take that anointing. In the name of Jesus, I decree and I declare supernatural jobs I break the circles of stagnation career stagnation I command those circles be broken now be broken now be broken now I release supernatural jobs in the name of Jesus Christ 
hear me for some of you it will not be up to three days from today write it down i'm telling you by the god who sent me my god will surprise you applications that you may have written for years that no one has called you over in the name of jesus we schedule favor on that wise for you in the name of jesus christ Hallelujah. Make sure that whatever business you are involved with is not a business that kills, steals, and destroys. Are we together? Yes. We are not going to waste our time praying for people who are doing demonic things. We, we, it's important that your value that what you are doing is adding value to people and not something that is destroying lives. But I want to release an anointing upon you. You will be surprised. Honestly. Are you ready? Father, you have anointed us for this purpose. There are people here who have cried. There are people right now as I speak, you have gone down like it's not, you are owing to the millions, tens of millions, hundreds of millions. It's not business that will bring you out. It's the prophetic that will bring you out. I move from left to my right in the name of Jesus at the count of three receive a baptism of the grace for excellence one two three take that grace now 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 I release you go and prosper go and excel go and prosper go and excel listen Every business that has died here, hear ye the word of the Lord. Between now and the next three months, I command, come back to life. Come back to life. Come back to life. Anyone here who is in debt, you are owing banks, you are owing financial institutions, you are owing and there is no way you can come out. I call upon Ebenezer, the God who helps men. And I declare unto you, come out of that financial situation. Alas, master, for it was borrowed. And he said, where fell it? I'm speaking to you again. In the name of Jesus. If there are wrong people in your business, I take them out now. And the right people who need to join your chariot, I bring them in prophetically. In the name of Jesus Christ, stretch your hands towards me. Your hand is a symbol of your productivity. I place an anointing on these hands. Go and excel. Go and excel. In the name of Jesus. Please return back to your seat rejoicing. Return back to your seat rejoicing. The power of God is coming on someone, but it is not for you. I'm saying that it's for your brother, but you are only receiving from him. He's not been promoted for nearly 10 years. This is what I'm seeing. He has been working. I don't know where he's working, but there's not been promotion at all. Do you know what it means to be in a place and you're just marking time there? I don't know who that person is, whether you are here in the main auditorium or outside, but in the name of Jesus, you don't have to come out. The son of the living God, I decree and declare that the anointing of the spirit lands upon your life and let there be supernatural pro promotion for your brother. In the name of Jesus Christ. The word is very important because that is the basis for the believer's faith. Your faith is only built on the word, the power of expectation. What is expectation? I wrote here a strong belief that something desired or anticipated will happen. Expectation is a strong belief that something desired or anticipated will happen. That's what we call expectation. That something desired, something anticipated will happen. In Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 24, very quickly... Proverbs 10, 24. The Bible tells us that the desire of the righteous shall be granted. That the desire of the righteous, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, that one of the benefits that comes with being in Christ is access 
to your desires granted. Desires, of course, that are in line with the will of God. In Mark 11 and verse 24, Mark 11, 24, Jesus was teaching on faith and here's what he had to say. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, he says, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them. I like the Amplified Version's rendition of verse 24 because it now brings perspective to it and it says, for this reason I am telling you whatever you ask for in prayer. In fact, one of the Amplified Expressions says that it is consistent to God's will. It says, believe that it is granted unto you and you will get it. This, this expression of Amplified says, most believers, please listen, most believers will not know that expectation is a law. It's not just when you do not have expectation, you can cripple the hand of God from being made manifest in your life. There is the law of expectation and that expectation is very, very powerful. Hallelujah. In 1 John chapter 5, I believe from verse 14 and 15, Apostle John in his epistle said, and this is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, it says he heareth us, 15. And if we know that he hear us, whatever we, whatsoever we ask, it says we know that we have our petitions that we desired of him. So God responds to the expectations of the saints. This is very, very important. The Bible is full of men and women who communicated desperations and expectations in the Bible and returned with testimonies. And the Bible is also full of others who trivialized the whole idea of expectations, even to their detriment. Many believers may wonder why you can be in such a strong apostolic prophetic atmosphere and yet surprisingly walk back with nothing because usually the problem is your expectation let me show you two examples in acts chapter 3 from verse 1 very quick reading acts chapter 3 and verse 1 the bible says peter and john went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer being the ninth hour verse 2 a certain man who was lame from his mother's womb, the Bible says, who was carried, that they laid him daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful. So he would ask alms from the people there. Verse 3, it says, who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, ask an alms. And then the Bible says, verse 4, that Peter fastening his eyes upon him with John said, look on us. Now, verse 5, the Bible says, he gave heed unto them expecting to receive something from them you can give heed to people in sarcasm well let me see if they, i can get one or two things but the bible says he paid rapt attention expecting to receive something from them hallelujah and then you know the end of the story down to verse 11 the bible says at the end of it the man was was healed and it was something that the people wondered when you read verse 11, the Bible says that the people were greatly wondering. It became a sign and a wonder because of expectation. Example number two. I like this one. In Mark chapter 10, I think the, the story begins from verse 46. This is a popular story of blind Bartimaeus. The Bible says that they came to Jericho, reading to 52. And as he went out... Um, of Jericho with his disciples follow closely a great number of people followed them then the Bible says that blind Bartimaeus the son of Timu sat by the highway begging 47 when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth he began to cry out expectation and he said Jesus thou son of David have mercy on me 48 now the Bible says many charge him that you should hold his peace but he cried the more a great deal. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. 49. The Bible says, and Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man saying to him, be of good cheer, rise, he called thee. Now watch a very interesting conversation that transpired. And he casting away his garment. In other words, I know I will never have to need this garment again. And he threw it away. The Bible says he rose and came to Jesus. Now, Jesus answered and said to him, What will thou that I do unto thee? 
that would look like a, a very sarcastic question. What would you think a blind man would be desiring from you? It would be a costly assumption to assume that the man wanted his eyes to be open. Jesus looks at a, at a blind man who had already stretched his energy in shouting. And instead of him to just lay hands on him, he says, what will thou that I should do unto thee? And the man said, the blind man said unto him, Lord, that I may receive my sight. The man at Gate Beautiful was not wanting healing. He wanted money. Is that true? The Bible says he was begging for arms. In other words, the apostles, I don't need to rise. Just give me money to take care of myself. Keep the scripture there, 50 now. The Bible says, verse 52, And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy faith demonstrated to your expectation had made thee whole and the bible says immediately he received his sight and followed jesus in the way i like the end of that story he did not receive his sight and he, then he went back he received his sight and followed jesus jesus told him go your way but he followed the way go you receive your sight and go back but he said no now that I've received the sight, I want to follow the one who gave me the sight. Are we together? So there are many examples where people opened up their hearts to be expectant. Listen, this is a very powerful law. By the grace of God, having ministered to people through the years, I have seen how people trivialize expectations to their detriment. You will be surprised that in such a powerful atmosphere as this, there are people who may just come based on invitation or just based on the ritual of honoring a ministry's program and they sit down, they celebrate, they enjoy, they laugh, they jot down key points and go back receiving nothing because of the absence or the bankruptcy of expectations. Now, let me show you the danger of not having an expectation. Acts chapter 12, please. For sake of time, we'll read verse 1 to 5, then we'll jump to verse 12. This was a story about um, Peter when Peter was bound in prison. It says, now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church too. It says, and he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. Verse 3, it says, and because he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. Verse 4, it says, and when he had apprehended him, Peter now, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Verse 5, watch this. Peter therefore was kept in prison. It says, but prayer was made without season of the church unto God for him. So the church came together and they began to pray. Peter must not die. Lord, rescue Peter. And you would think because of that dissipation of energy, they had expectation. Let's go to verse 12 for the sake of time. When you read from verse 6 to 11, the angel of the Lord comes and then brings Peter out. We've read it many times here. Verse 12, watch this. And when he had considered the thing, the Bible says he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John. That was where the prayer was going on, whose son name was Mark, where they were gathered together praying, reading to 16, 13 now. The Bible says, and Peter knocked at the door of the gate. A damsel came to hearken to him named Rhoda, 14. And when she knew Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness, but ran in. And told how Peter had stood before the gate. Don't forget this was the man they were praying for. Verse 15. And they said to her, thou art mad. But she constantly affirmed that it was even so. And they said it is his angel. Can you imagine that? Verse 16. But Peter continued knocking. And when they had opened the door, they saw him and were astonished. That means while all that prayer was going on. Prayer changed. Peter, you must go out of that prison. They did not even believe. There was no expectation that their prayer request came to their door and knocked. They opened it and closed it back and said, let's keep praying. That's how many believers are. Father, in the name of Jesus, I know you will turn my life around. You will change my story. And yet there is no expectation. You would see these people praying. A prayer group, a prayer chain. Praying in the house of Mary. And yet Peter, delivered by an angel in response to their prayer. He now came to the door. It was not a vision. Peter was knocking. The damsel came, opened the door, shut it for gladness, returned back and told them, stop praying, the answer has come. They said, no, we don't believe it. Just let him keep knocking. 
Now, if Peter went back in anger, they would conclude from that prayer meeting that God does not answer prayers. Could it be that there are people here, whilst you came here and singing, dancing, celebrating, shouting amen, but the truth is that you do not have definite expectations. If the Lord Jesus were to stand on this pulpit right now, this stage, he would ask you the same question he asked blind Bartimeo. What do you want me to do for you? God, I'm tired of my issues. That is not an expectation. That is lamentation. Remember, that's what happened in John chapter 5 to the man at Bethesda. Jesus said, what would I do for you? He started complaining. I have no man. That's not what Jesus asked him. What do you desire? That is the reason why you see we guide people by writing prayer expectations. It's a way of helping to articulate your expectations. Lord, I am trusting you to open a financial door. I am trusting that in the name of Jesus Christ, this and that would happen. Many people do not have expectations. And it's the reason why it looked like God does not reveal his outstretched arm towards them. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6. Paul admonishes us in Hebrews 11 and verse 6. Saying that without faith it is impossible to please him. He says for he that cometh to God. We've dealt with this in this house. The Bible says he must come believing. Number one that God is. Meaning he exists. And then number two that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. In other words you come here whilst you are seated. Celebrating what God is doing already. There must be a definite expectation within your heart. Whether you are following online you are following here on site across all the overflows outside you must make up your mind that i am not just here to waste my time i have expectations and you see an expectation that cannot be articulated is no expectation at all what do you want god to do for you general lifting there's no such thing as that that statement already is both a sign of spiritual ignorance and then the fact that you are not prepared to receive anything are we together now yes So faith, I wrote here, is expectation that is based on God's integrity and ability as revealed by his word. That faith is expectation based on God's integrity and ability as revealed by his word. It's impossible to say you have Bible faith without expectation because faith must be connected to an object, expectation. There must be something definite. Hallelujah. If you're with me, shout amen. amen. Tonight, many of us have come and sadly many are here. And even though you've seen the power of God move already, there are many people who are without expectations. And the Lord put it in my heart as we step into this second session of the miracle service, that without an expectation, sadly, you may return back with no testimony at all. Because expectation is a law. If it is Bible faith, it must be connected to specific things and specific areas where you want God to visit you. I wrote a list of things here that represent many people's desires and expectations. Number one, marital issues. Number two, diseases and sicknesses. The things that plague people that necessitate an expectation. Three, financial situations of all kinds. Number four, demonic oppressions. Five, the need for restoration. Six, direction of all kinds. Breakthroughs. Deliverances from all kinds of yokes. Every time you see a people gathered unto God like this, these usually are the issues that represent their pain, that represent their expectations. And until you are able to articulate it, you look at anything in your life that does not reveal or reflect the glory of God. You now connect. Lord, I trust you and I release my faith that this situation must come to an end. For instance, I mentioned by the Spirit the case of people maybe having financial issues here. You saw the number of people who came. I was very impressed. It is a terrible thing to not know what is wrong with you. It is a terrible thing to not even know what you need. Are we together now? That's why the Holy Spirit guides us when we come. So that you will know when your word comes. And so that you will know when to receive and to manifest your testimonies. Your testimony will not pass you by. 
I wrote finally here that every genuine expectation is expressed in words and action. Please write. Every genuine expectation is expressed in words and actions. Expectations that cannot be expressed in words and in action is not expectation at all. Every genuine expectation is expressed in words. Words there means you must be able to pray it and you must be able to take the necessary steps as required for victory. Every genuine expectation. Now imagine those who were just healed and delivered just like that. Did you know that if their word came as it came and they did not come out, maybe they just sat down and said, well, it's none of my business. You will be surprised that with the power of God moving up and down, it will pass them by because they did not, God will not force his power on you. I hope you know that. I'm saying this because when we begin to pray and we begin to minister deliverance and minister healing and so on and so forth, and then more importantly, your prayer request. No matter how accurate God has granted the grace, we see in part, we prophesy in part. This is why everybody is given the liberty to write your prayer request. Please let me encourage you. Don't get so used to just writing and submitting your prayer request. It is a very powerful tool. It is a way of guiding you by the Spirit to clearly articulate your expectations. There are things you may not have the courage to say here. Imagine how embarrassing it would be if I called you and I said, tell us everything that is your expectation. Some will be personal. There are things that is between you and God alone. That's why we write it and we pray over it here and from here it is burnt. It is nobody's business what you have written. Are we together? That means you should not spare when writing the things you are trusting God for. What things soever ye desire. It says when ye pray. You are a man of God and ministry is not working. No doors opening, souls are not being saved. You write it. Father is supernatural breakthrough in ministry. Write it clearly. I have a son. What is his name? John. John does not seem to be a disciplined gentleman. Write it. Supernatural restoration for John. I'm showing you how to prepare. You write it both in your heart and then on paper so that when we begin to pray as the power of God is coming it is resting upon your expectation and turning it into a testimony you can return back and know that this happened to me and you can return back to testify I wrote this Jesus did this look what my life has become now when Dave was here taking the testimony he said there is before and after but that only happens when there is an expectation is someone learning? Yeah. When I pray preparing for the miracle service or any other service for that matter, I have expectations myself as a man of God, even for the meeting. Some are revealed by the Spirit. Some come as my sincere desire to see God's people blessed. And these expectations are reflected in my, prayer, my prayers as I prepare for the meeting. Lord, bless your people. For instance, two major expectations is healing and financial breakthrough. This has been my major expectation and my prayers for God's people because this is what I have discerned that Satan is using to cripple his body. These two things. One, sicknesses of all kinds extending to demonic attacks. Number two, financial problems. You will be surprised to see how many believers are stranded financially. And let me tell you the truth, for as long as God has anointed us, but I'm not somebody, when I am I'm dealing with issues that help believers to rise, I'm not ashamed of it. When you are blessed and you rise, it is a joy to Jesus, to the purposes of God, and even to me. For as long as you are under this ministry, you will not be poor. Let me tell you the truth. It's true. You will learn the ways of the kingdom. But you will also receive the engracings and the prophetic backing that it takes to rise. Are we together? Healing and finances. These were my major areas. Doesn't mean we'll touch on other areas, but these two areas. That means by the time we begin to minister in this second session, when you hear me speaking and declaring over your finances, shout a loud amen and receive it with all your heart. Don't be like the foolish man who stood at the gate of Samaria. And, and was trying to mock the prophet Elisha that even if God will open the heavens, might this happen? And he said, you will see it, but you will not eat of it. God is changing the stories of men. 
God is surprising people. You see people come and they are testifying here. Healings and even financial miracles. That is not all God can do. He will respond to your expectation. For someone you are here praying, saying, Lord, I cannot have five boys, ten boys, and none of them has risen. As their mother, I'm still feeding them age 40, age 50, age 30. That that demonic oppression must stop. And God comes to you. For someone, maybe there's no peace in your home. You love the Lord, but it's as if there is, there is war always happening in your home. Father, I need peace. You are the prince of peace. Bring peace to my home. And you'll be surprised. While you are here, the husband and wife can be here. And the fire of God just falls upon them. An altar call is made. And you'll see your husband coming to give his life to Christ. And that begins the journey of total transformation. Maybe you're a man of God who loves God, but there's almost zero anointing on your life and your ministry. You struggle on the pulpit and it looks like God did not call you. You can bring that to an end. The anointing is transferable. Graces are transferable. Apostle, I'm here, I love the Lord, but I don't even know what I'm doing on earth. I'm just escorting men around the corridors of their destiny. I need to find my place. Do you have it as an expectation? An expectation is more than a wish. A wish is a careless desire with no consequences, whether it is actualized or not. An expectation comes with dogged faith attached to it. Lord, I'm, I'm committing your integrity on this matter. Archbishop Benson, either host of blessed memory, said if your faith says yes, that God will not say no. Because if it is Bible faith, it will be based on his will. So there is no reason why God should say no. Are we together? Apostle, I'm tired. I've been married 10 years, 15 years, no child. Well, I'm sure that God will open my womb. That kind of, as that, that is a careless, you know, very, very shabby wish. It will not happen that way. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. This is my miracle service. I connect and I declare that in the name of Jesus, by next miracle service, I'm already pregnant. I release my faith. You believe. And while you are saying it, the devil will be mocking you and saying, is that not what you said last miracle service? Has it happened now? You need to learn how to forget about the devil when you are dealing with God. Don't allow him come and interrupt your conversation with God. You are talking to the king of kings, the lord of lords, the creator of the ends of the earth. Don't let Satan come and interrupt your discussion. Father, I know in the name of Jesus that I can complete this house. I've begun this building project as it is now. I may be stranded, but in the name of Jesus, you have told me that this year of open doors, that in Jesus' name, I will dedicate my own house. While he's saying it, here comes the devil. He will whisper all kinds of things and say, just to remind you for the records that you lost your job last month, and just to let you know that right now as it is, they've increased the school fees of your children. Before you know it, you will take your attention from Jesus Christ and you are listening to the devil. And at the end of it, your, your prayer request will make, you, you will just be reduced from the realm of the spirit to the realm of the flesh. How do you know you have come back to the realm of the flesh? What you were once confident upon will look like stupidity. You know you have been reduced back to that realm. Lord, I'm trusting you for supernatural partnership for my ministry. And then eventually you say, ah, but use your sense. Who will come and give you 1 million, 10 million, 100 million? The devil has succeeded in bringing you down. The Bible says, this I say then, walk ye in the spirit. That to be spiritually minded, it says to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Is someone learning now? I want you to come and li listen. You do not know the joy that is in my heart when people come to stand here and testify. Because testimony is the end product of the manifestation of faith. That God's word has finally delivered unto me. And now you are declaring to the nations that he's faithful. You are declaring to the nations that he's dependable. You are my God. That's what happens when you declare. That you are my God. Regardless the limitations, I prevailed by faith. You are my God. Despite the cost in the family, now I have the children. You are my God. Listen to me. Believers, hear me. If you do not believe that God is able to step in for you, then just know that you are wasting your time as you are seated here. Don't make up your mind. Father, I'm not going to be the one just catching people as they fall. I'm not going to be the one watching people as they say amen. And some of you, the lack of expectation even appears physically. 
a word is coming in the name of Jesus and you just stand and you're seeing somebody receive you know just verbalizing this is my word and you just stand watching wow and then when it looks very powerful you just lift one hand and say amen you would never receive like that God is not a fool are we together expectation has an attitude they said look on us and the bible says he looked at them expecting to receive when elisha was going to receive from elijah there was an attitude if you can see me as i'm taking up some of you have come here to access mantles and to access graces don't sit down and, and your ministry is dying whereas there is a plethora of graces you can access and rise to a position where you are of value to the kingdom don't be a man of god as if you are not anointed but it's your expectation. A word can be coming. Oh, the healing anointing is coming. And you and that is really what you need. Let me tell you the truth. If you're a man of God, the sick are not healed through your hands. Oppressed people are not delivered. Lives are not being changed. Can I surprise you? Even if you're a good teacher, especially in Africa, believe me, there will be limitations. Because in ministry, it is the message and the backing that go hand in hand. If what you are communicating is truth, it must be backed up with signs following. And for any genuine ministry, people must hear and see the workings of God. In Acts chapter 8, when you read from verse 5 down to 8, the Bible says, Philip went down to Samaria and he preached Christ unto them. 6 says the people gave heed to the things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles that he did. That means he said Jesus is able to do this. And he demonstrated it. Jesus is able to lift. And he demonstrated it. Jesus is able to wipe away tears. And he demonstrated it. So it is my desire. That you are a man of God. You are a minister of the gospel. Do not just. Yes you may come to receive healing. Or whatever it is for yourself. But among the many things you should not forget to carry. Is the grace that produces that result. Are we together? Whenever I have the privilege of meeting genuinely anointed people, especially fathers of faith, I'm like a sponge. I don't go there saying I'm anointed too. I search, especially spiritually, what are the graces that I need for this level in my life that are not yet at work in my life. And any opportunity God grants me to connect, I connect by faith. I was so touched with the testimony of that redeemed, that precious redeemed pastor. That was already a man of God, a pastor. And that's the problem, especially with most people. You feel I'm a pastor too. We are all men of God. I have taught you. You never receive having a colleague mentality. Mm -mm. He was at the redemption camp according to his story. Already. And God gives him a word and then he takes that risk to empty his account. Now look, a landowner in Lekki, the mainland. And I can tell you that is only child's play compared to what is coming. Results happen by steps of faith and then graces that work. Don't forget this. When the grace for something is on your life, you cannot but produce the results. These are not cunningly devised fables. Once you are seated under this atmosphere, even if you are not sick in your body, even if you are not trusting God for any financial miracle, even if you are not trusting God for any breakthrough, do you know that you can become a living, potent career of certain graces? And I told you that graces are not silent. The career may be silent, but the grace will not be silent. No, graces make noise. When grace, a grace is upon your life, you cannot but manifest. And I'm praying for someone already. In the name of Jesus, every grace that is missing but required in ministry, in business, every grace that is required but not yet at work in your life, may this be the season you will carry it. Yeah. Hallelujah. There are many graces that are available for believers. And, and, and you see, every time, when, when I speak like this, I speak passionately. There is no need to struggle. We have done teachings on the body of Christ here. It is foolishness, I'm telling you, when, when you refuse to open up your heart to receive the graces that are available, especially when you're in abundance of it. It's like somebody crying for Hallelujah. Man of God, fully speaking, he just reached me and we're laughing. He said, Apostle, I heard that when you open up for volunteers for the UK conference, there were about 3,000 people. That, that is enough for a conference on itself. And this will, how do 3,000 people come together in another land? 
Are we together now? In another land, 3,000 people to be volunteers, to be the workforce. Not the people coming for the conference. It is not pride. It's a grace. And you can carry that same grace to your shop. You can carry that same grace to your ministry. Are we together now? Yes. It is my prayer that sooner or later, God will help us to see the value of impartations. Your Christian experience will be barren in many regards. There are many of us here, and, and I, I say this from, from a heart of love. If one person having a crutch, one person alone is healed in your church or your ministry or your prayer group, that one healing alone can bring you tens of partners to come and stand with you and say, we believe in what God is doing. You're not going to be able to do end time ministry, being powerless, bankrupt of graces. You speak over people, they don't shout amen because they know that shouting is wasting their time. There is a track record of you making a lot of noise with no result. Everything mocking God in your life, in the name of Jesus Christ, it dies at this miracle service. <laughs> Hallelujah. No, you should not be ordinary. You lay hands on people. They are even looking at you frowning because they believe that nothing came on their head. And they are right. Since I laid hands on you, what happened to you? Absolutely nothing. In fact, I went down. I was even better before you laid hands. As soon as your hand came on me, I, the remaining part of the breakthrough now went down. Your life must change. Your life must change. Your mind must change. Your mind must change. Your mind must change. Your life must change. How do you know you have access grace? The results. The results. The results. What suddenly happened to your shop? Man of God, where did you go to that God is drawing as many to be saved? I used to know you as an ordinary preacher. While you are preaching, we are sleeping. What came upon you that now you are communicating the word of God with fire and precision, with signs and wonders following? I met a man of God who, I think he was around last week or week before last, and he shared a very touching testimony. He said, Apostle, I used to struggle so much in ministry, I would open my Bible and literally be frustrated on stage. And he said, one time I came, I don't know for which of the services, and I received an impartation. He said, when I went back, it was fire. Now, what surprised him was that most people in the church did not even know that he came here. But to his greatest shock, he said he started seeing his worship team literally reflecting like our people here. He didn't tell them, oh, this is the thing about impartation. The spirit you contact is what begins to work. You contact excellence, you'll be surprised. The most disorganized people in your organization, something starts bringing them together. They do not even know where you went to receive an impartation from. Please believe what I'm telling you. Graces speak. They looked at Peter and said, these are unlearned men, but they discerned that they had been with Jesus. I'm saying this because we'll be rising up shortly and I want your hearts to, if you're sick, trust God to step in for you. But among the many things I'm praying that will happen to us is this area of healing, this area of financial breakthrough, and then impartation. Don't be limited, my brother, my sister. Refuse to be limited. You are a prophet and people are still doubting. Are we together now? We who are not even prophets by office are prophesying more than you. It's not, it's, not, it's not competition. I'm challenging you. You can rise to a level of the prophetic with uncanny mastery. That you speak the counsel of God and nations who stand still because they have learned that you have leaned your ears to the heart of God. And that when you say you heard God, you really heard. How about some of us here who are jumping up and down saying we are kingdom financiers. You've not supported the, the program of God with one naira because the devil has seen that you have a heart for God and he's fighting the resources from coming. It will take more than business ideas, as important as that is. There is a forceful dimension of the prophetic that can push you into your Goshen.
There are many gifted people who the world does not know of. And it ought not to be so. Because you see, the Bible says, Neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel. Listen to me. It is not a manifestation of flesh when you desire sincere visibility for the purpose of the kingdom. Without visibility and influence, the nations cannot know you are there. It's not by trying to market yourself. You are lifted by grace. There is a hand that lifts men and puts them in a position where the nations know that God has lifted you. Now, it gives you the platform to serve the purposes of God. Many of us are frustrating ourselves trying to manipulate ourselves into visibility. It doesn't happen that way. When that grace is on you, you can be in a cave and yet from that cave, God will raise men to look for you. Now, I don't know what your expectation is tonight. But for the next two or three minutes, I'm going to allow you with the Lord Jesus Christ, verbalize your expectation. Please open your mouth and cry to the Lord. That which you desire him to do in this miracle service. Please pray. Shaleke perako sata brada kaska de belados. Shalanta ska brada ke perako tosiata. Someone is verbalizing his expectation. The expectation of the righteous shall not be cut short. Shalata perato ska brande ke perato ska lika prasigetesh. Man of God, what do you desire the Lord to do in this season? Where the wave of his glory, the wave of revival is sweeping from nation to nation. I repeat to you again, we are in the days of his power. We are in the days of his power. We are in the days of apostolic signs and wonders heralding the end time move of Jesus across the nations. Businessman, what do you desire that God does in this season where he's raising men and giving men the wealth of nations to frontier the purposes of the kingdom? One more minute, don't be silent. You're a man of God. I like you to declare. I'm tired of doing ministry without genuine power. Tired of the difficulty experience in calling many to Jesus, drawing many to Jesus. Oh, for they need to come and come in their multitudes. We are in the days of His power. My Bible says the people shall be willing. Few more seconds. Hallelujah. Listen. Maybe one day, when we have the opportunity and we're teaching, I will share with you a bit of my story and how I sought for and pursued some of these graces that God has so graciously made available today. In as much as God has granted me the privilege of encounters with Jesus, I can tell you that there are many graces that are upon my life today that did not just come from that one encounter. Or those encounters there were times in my life when I had to review my life with respect to God's expectation for me 
and I had to search by knowledge, by mentorship, and by revelation the graces that will be required for my efficiency. I am still a seeker of those graces up until today. And I began to intentionally, meticulously search for the graces that are responsible for producing genuine, ever-increasing results. I submit to you again that struggle will never end until grace comes on an individual. Many people, you, you can have a semblance of results, you can jump and keep gyrating. If the results are not there, it is because the grace is not there. It's as simple as that. So I want you, please hear me, do not be distracted because I trust that by God's grace I will be speaking from the depth of my spirit. And for God's sake, I'm praying that somebody will, even if it's for the first time, that you will open up your heart to carry something, something of substance. And it doesn't matter whether you are male or female, doesn't matter whether you are young or old, doesn't matter whether you are sound or on sight, the most important thing is your faith. Make up your mind that ministry will not be barren again. Make up your mind that you will not be around rigma rolling as if God did not call you. Make up your mind. You're not the first to do what you're doing. It is the bankruptcy of the grace needed. And you may say, I have an anointing. Is it for the level you are stepping into? Yesterday's anointing will not command today's results. No, sir. Hallelujah. Can I start with an impartation? It's going to be a very quick walk tonight. Even if we don't have time to get to take testimonies, no problem. Let me start with an impartation. Listen to me. I want to start with impartation for ministers of the gospel. Everybody will receive, but particularly, you are, you are a minister of the gospel. Let your heart be open. I want to release a grace upon you. Ministers of the gospel. It's time to, to this powerlessness in the church. If we do not drive it away by the introduction of genuine graces, the purposes of God and the program of God will suffer. I call upon the God of my covenant and in the name of Jesus I declare for everyone called into ministry, the mantle and the grace needed. Take it now. 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 The grace needed for efficiency. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Hear me. If you are a prophet here, may your eyes and your ears be open. Supernaturally, may a mantle come upon you, male and female. May that grace come upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. The healing anointing. I'm seeing fire coming on the hands of people. I don't know who you are, but drink of that fountain. In the name of Jesus Christ, drink of that fountain. A new wave of the healing anointing. A new wave of the healing anointing. I release it upon you. I, re I release it upon you. Take that grace now. Signs and wonders. I shift you into a ministry of signs and wonders. Potent signs and wonders. In the name of Jesus Christ. That through your hands, the blind will see. Through your hands, the deaf will hear. Through your hands, cripples will walk. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me. Every dimension of the gift of the Spirit that is missing in your life, but required for your destiny. I'm telling you, I'm seeing like candles. I'm seeing candles in the spirit and fire is coming on those candles. This is what I'm seeing. It looks like Acts chapter two and verse one. That Pentecost fire, let it come upon you now. That Pentecost fire, let it come upon you now. Pentecost fire with proof in your spiritual life. I'm still praying for everyone, but particularly ministers of the gospel. The spirit of revelation, superior illumination into scripture. I tell you, men and women will teach scripture like never before. The word of God will open up to you. You will communicate doctrine and the mysteries of scripture with precision and exactitude. Receive that grace right now. 
receive that grace, the spirit of revelation in the name of Jesus Christ. Every altar that has been barren of power from any man or woman of God here in the name of Jesus, return back to your various stations with fire. Return back to your various stations with fire. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's do the finance one now. Father, it is your desire for your people to prosper. Even in this season. And many of them have come from situations right now where except you help and show mercy. Certain financial doors may not seem to be opened. But in the name of Jesus, you have orchestrated this service for the mysterious lifting of men. Therefore, the grace component required for your financial exploits, receive it now. Hmm. Hmm. Receive it now. Receive it now. Hear me. There are many of you, by reason of this impartation, a strange order of wisdom is resting on your mind. Superior strategies, superior ideas, in the name of Jesus Christ. And every spirit of lack and poverty that has followed any family here, I don't care for how long it has been. I arrest it now in the name of Jesus. I arrest it now in the name of Jesus. I arrest it now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Please be silent. I want you to bring all the people who will be under the anointing now. Just be silent. You don't say you've prayed. This is the instruction God is giving me. I want to rebuke certain strange spirits that have held on to certain destinies. And usually I will ask you to shout, but the Lord is giving me an instruction to be silent. In the name of Jesus. Father, even as you have instructed, everyone here and every family here, under the influence of wicked spirits, yokes, covenants, aha, uh -huh, in the name of Jesus Christ, I'm telling you there's, there's such fire that is moving. In the name of Jesus, let there be deliverance for such people. Supernaturally. Please bring them out. Whether for individuals or families, very quickly, men and women, everything that has tied your progress, I decree and declare right now, be released. Be released. Be released. Please bring them out. My God, fire is falling in this place. Shalada kafaratos kafrande baratos yata. Lata shana manakos. Bring them quickly. Ancestry, yokes of darkness. You may not even know that is the cause. The Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit. Something is leaving you. I'm seeing someone like a chain around your waist. Let it be broken. Let it be broken. Let it be broken. Let it be broken, Let it be broken now. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Let it be broken now. Release their destinies. Release their destinies. Release their destinies. It happened to your father, it happened to your mother, it happened to your siblings. The blood is speaking against it now. The Apakosh Ketepata, the blood is speaking against it now. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You are the king. There is none other. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Please bring them out quickly. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You are the King. There is none other. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Sing yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You are the King. There is none. I'm seeing 
fire upon the feet of people. And the Lord is saying he's opening graves. I don't know what this means. But in the name of Jesus, every family here that has been tied down by witchcraft and ancestry, I stretch my hands. Fire, fire begins to burn everything that is not of God. Bring them out. Let it destroy the works of darkness. Let it destroy the works of darkness. Connected to ancestry. Connected to the spirits of the dead. Be delivered now. I'm still praying. Please be sensitive. This is a very prophetic moment. Sanakos kedila sobesha la cross kevaniata engro toso de balakusia. Every two two years, someone must die in that family. This is what I'm seeing. The Lord is bringing deliverance. Someone must die. Where are those people? The power of God is coming on you now, right now. I break that chain of that pattern. That pattern of death. Break now. Break now. Break now. Break now. Anyone here appointed unto death. That the devil has vowed. That you must die this year. I don't know where you are. But in the name of Jesus. I want to rebuke that influence over your life. And I hope you know that as you are standing here, you can stand in for your loved ones too, wherever they are. Spirit of death, I speak to you. You know my voice. Anyone whose destiny you have hijacked, release them now. Release them now. Release them now. Negative and demonic dreams. Seeing yourself in the past, past schools, writing exams that never finish, all kinds of satanic things, everything that connects you negatively to yesterday, be set free right now. Please help them. Be set free right now. Be set free right now. Be set free right now. Hear me. The Lord is asking me to repeat this same thing again. You go to bed and you see yourself doing things you had done before. Levels you have left. According to scripture, believers don't go backward. We only go forward. Every spirit drawing you back. I break you from their influence now. Let me tell you this. Hear me. I hope you know I used to have those experiences myself before. You've heard my story. As a man of God though. Not just a, an, an ordinary believer. I used to have those experiences where demons would come and press me and all those things. I would shout Jesus, shout Jesus, nothing will happen. That is why when you see me ministering deliverance to people, I do it with passion because I've been a victim of oppression. Again, let me speak to someone. You have prayed, you have fasted, you have tried, and yet nothing has changed. In the name of Jesus, this night, be delivered permanently. Delivered permanently. Be delivered permanently. Be delivered permanently. Be delivered permanently. Be delivered permanently. Hallelujah. Don't be tired. I'm seeing in a vision. This is what I'm seeing. The hands of people tied. How can a man move like this with your hands tied? How can a man move like this and walk with your hands tied? I don't know who that person is, but in the name of Jesus, let fire from heaven. Your hand is a symbol of your productivity. You may even have a job, yet your hands are tied. I don't know whose hand is tied or whose destiny is tied. At the count of three, shout Jesus and your deliverance comes. One, two, three, shout Jesus. Be delivered now. I break those chains. I break them from your hands. I break those chains. I break them from your hands. (laughs) 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me the vision of a door. And I'm seeing many people queuing in front of that door. And according to the vision I'm seeing, trying to force the door to open. And some are even crying. And I'm seeing people dropping, like dying. Yet that door is not opened. I believe that this is a sign of advancement or retrogression that doors and I believe that this line represents families and even generations that have stood there are doors that have limited families that they say nobody can pass through this door you can go abroad you can school like this our dear woman the professor that came to give a testimony let me open that door prophetically I taught you at the beginning of this year that there are three ways doors are open number one is by the use of the right key number two is by knocking the ministry of men but number three by force and power let me use number three because when those doors open they open from their foundations i decree and declare every generational door that has closed parakatos i stand and as an apostle of the lord jesus christ let that door be open now i break that door now i break that door now I break that door now generational doors be open be open be open Ephata, be open be broken in the name of Jesus Christ you will be surprised to see what happens to you as a result of this miracle service hear me you see, when a door is open or broken, the most important thing is that the right of way has been given. You will begin to see mysterious advancement happening to you. In the name of Jesus, for all who are in front here, I declare prophetically that God who has located you, you have come out by the anointing, the spirits that oppress you, I declare the count of three in the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God, they release you once and for all, the Bible says now the Lord is that spirit, one, two, three, go, 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 release them now, out of their lives, never to return again, in the name of Jesus, the son sets them free, and we declare the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, they are free forever, they are free forever. They are free forever. In the name of Jesus. Please hear me. I told you that I have discerned that among the many things that God is doing is bringing health and healing to his people and also bringing financial stability. You see the teachings that I've been bringing. These are not just teachings that are coming carelessly. Because one of the things that the devil has released upon the body of Christ, please hear me, is death through sickness. Mysteriously, people just wake up and you find out that there are diseases you cannot account for. Are we together now? It is our responsibility to be able to discern what heaven is doing. And to be able to communicate God, God's intent for his people. So this prayer for healing, we may not have time for testimonies because our time is gone. You can always register your testimony. But I want to pray with you. Listen, if there is any loved one you know in your life who is sick, please as I'm praying, connect with them. So that they don't die for nothing. And for those who are connecting from any hospital, our teaching hospitals, private hospitals, now is the time. It's incredible how people connect from hospitals and release their faith. Please connect. We're, we're, we're talking now under the influence of the anointing. Lay your hands on your chest. If you have a medical report, bring it out. I'm about to pray. That devil must let you go. Must let your children go. Please place your hand right now. I want to minister the life and the healing power of Jesus. If it's a part of your body you cannot touch, just make contact with your chest. And then we'll pray. Praises to your name, O oh God, for your name is great and greatly to be praised. Place your hand there. I sing praises to your name, O oh God, praises to your name, O oh God. For your name is great 
for you I shout the name of Jesus I want you to thunder a loud amen let the devil and let that sickness know I told you expectation must be expressed in words and in action hallelujah in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ I command every spirit that is back of any infirmity in the name of him who died and rose again I speak as one sent from God may that spirit leave your body now that devil of infirmity leave God's people now from America to Europe to South Africa to Kenya to Zimbabwe to Ghana to Lagos, to Abuja, to Joss, to Kano. Let the healing power of God begin to flow right now. Be healed in the name of Jesus. 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 Name of Jesus. Blood conditions, be healed now. Cancer, die now. HIV, be healed now. Blood conditions of any sort, we declare healing right now. Blind eyes, partial or complete blindness, we command that you open now. Deaf ears, be open now. Anyone here suffering from the issue of blood, I declare be healed right now. Every demonic growth roaming around any part of your body. There is someone, fire is coming on you. There's movement all over your body. You literally feel things moving in your body from your head to your toe. Be set free right now. There's someone you are having a problem with your heart. In the name of Jesus, be healed right now. The Lord is showing me a woman in a vision. It started like having, you know how you have cold, maybe a flu or something, and then you lose your voice. But till now, your voice is not restored. This has, this has become months, you know. Most times, people just take maybe lemon, warm water or something, some... You know, and and then eventually their voices, their, their, the sound returns. But for this woman, your, your your voice refused to return back. So you speak as though you are whispering. It's a demonic thing. I restore your speaking now. In the name of Jesus Christ. There is a woman, you are laying your hands right now. You are in this place. You are laying your hands upon your daughter, your little baby. There's been a mysterious sickness. You don't even know why. She's losing appetite. She's not eating. She's not, not sucking, not doing all of that. In the name of Jesus Christ, let that little baby be healed right now. Now, whether I've mentioned your case or not, in the name of Jesus, be healed now. The Lord is showing me a plot by darkness to take someone's father and mother the same day this is what i'm saying in the name of jesus i don't know who that person is a mysterious sickness just destroying both of them like in this not accident like that just you know in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare we extend their life to its fullest 
you will not lose any of your loved ones again therefore be healed be perfected there's someone you have your own is not heart palpitations I'm not a medical doctor I'm just sharing what the Lord is showing me your heart is not pumping blood properly this is what is wrong with you I may not know the, the medical name of that situation but it makes you dizzy it, it, I mean it's, it's like the, the case that I mentioned earlier here in the name of Jesus I don't know who that person is whatever blockage is around your heart that extends to your veins your arteries whatever is stopping the normal blood flow to supply oxygen to the body in Jesus name we declare supernaturally let there be healing let there be healing there's someone the Lord is showing